teach Bro Sanchez You got the story right And now I see Yeah and love welcome back everybody how we doing peace and love welcome back brothers and sisters as always i like to start off with a microphone check if i can if you can hear my audio loud and clear go ahead and drop a one in the chat room and we will begin if you can hear my audio loud and clear drop a one in the chat Hear me loud and clear, brothers and sisters. Drop a one in the chat room so we can begin. We have a very powerful topic today. I got this glove on for for a reason. Who want it? This ain't just for show. I do have, uh, I don't have fingertips like most of y'all that you can see. I lost the tips of my fingers. So whenever it's cold, it hurts. The nerve endings at the end of this, it stings and it hurts. So there, there, sometimes when they get real cold, I have to cover them up because if I knock them up against stuff or hit my hands and shit yo it, it hurts you know what I'm saying I don't have fingertips like most of y'all so on these two fingers here I ain't ashamed of that it was a crazy injury when I was younger so that's why I'm wearing a glove it's not just for show but can you hear my microphone when I talk at this level cause I don't really want to talk loud I don't want to talk loud so if you can hear me at this level Put a one, please. So, so appreciate that, everybody, and and you see the title. So today's title, all right, Cometicism and Freemasonry. Hold on a second. Hold on, I lost my stream on my end. Wait just one minute, brothers and sisters. Let me open this so I can track along in the chat with the chat room.
There we go. I see y'all. 295. Oh, 319 now. Okay. Cool. So now that we got that out the way, I can track along. Thank you for everyone that hit the like button on your way in. Make sure if you did not that you do so because the likes are not matching the views right now. But as you can see, today's stream is entitled Cometicism and Freemasonry. How Sigma Pi Phi, a.k.a. the Boule, controls the black narrative in black YouTube. And um, everything I'm about to teach you today. You could sum it up as the first world religion to ever exist. What do I mean? Prior to Christianity, prior to Buddhism, prior to any religion, there was one universal religion, and that was Freemasonry. All right. Okay, so that's what we're going to talk about here today. And I, like I said, I can't talk too loud right now because I got something going on at this time. But in a second, I'll be able to get a little louder. So hold on just one minute. Let me get, this, get my phone silenced. Sorry for the interruptions. And so now let me go ahead and pull up some slides so we can show what I'm talking about here. Let me know if you guys can hear the background chatter. Because if you can hear any background noise, I can block it off some kind of way. As long as you can hear me over the background, then we're good. So I might do one more mic check if y'all don't mind. Okay, so let's talk about ancient Egypt. The reason I want to talk about the boule in relation to this is I want to deal with the black narrative. This what I what I call the black narrative came out of a movement that was called a neo paganism movement. Now, during the neo pagan movement, there were first of all, what is the neo pagan movement? The neo pagan uh, movement, neo paganism, is any of several spiritual movements that attempt to revive the ancient polytheistic religions of Europe and the Middle East I'm going to say that again because you need to really listen to what I'm telling you today people the neo-paganism movement started in the late 60s early 70s in America and the neo-paganism movement is any of several spiritual movements that attempt to revive the ancient polytheistic religions of Europe and the Middle East. Europe and the Middle East, these religions came up out of Egypt and Samaria. These religions were given to the Celtic people that started the British colonies of America. The Celtic people up in the Northeast. All right, so the religion that they gave the slaves called Christianity was a different form of this pagan spiritual system but what happened excuse me so listen guys I want you to take notes alright I'm sorry for the background noise. I got some con contract work going on here. So look, if you want to pull up a list of neo-pagan movements, you will see that the comedic movement was one of them. And uh, you know what I'm going to do for you guys? Why am I being so silly? I got the ability to screen share. Let's screen share. All right now. 
just a quick basic Wikipedia search and uh if you wanted to pull up a list of neo pagan movements like I've done here. Here you go. Sorry for the, we getting everything going right now in the background. We about to settle in a minute, but hold on a second. Um, we finna go over some deep stuff. Hit the like button. Hold on a second. I'm letting my dogs out real quick. They letting the dogs out in here. All right, so excuse the background noise now. We got to understand what a neo-pagan movement is. If you don't, you won't understand why today's scholars and, and teachers don't agree with your great-grandfather and great-grandmother's spiritual system. Now, this is what you got to realize. Our great-grandfathers and great-grandmothers might have been Christians and all of that stuff. But if you would have asked them where they come from, they would not say Africa. One thing about my great grandfather, great grandmother, like yours, that you don't remember. And I want to look at you when I say this, because we want to have a bill here today. I, I'm going to take my time. This is important. Our great grandfathers, great grandmothers were indeed indoctrinated with Christianity, but they were not indoctrinated with a false origin story okay so they didn't identify with being the Israelites in the Bible my parents taught that we were the Gentiles however we still had a concept of being the chosen people even though we didn't say Jew as synonymous with chosen which is a mistake many of us make but anyway we got to listen to this most of us were taught that we were Indian or had Indian in our blood. When Columbus came to America, he referred to the people here as Naga Indians. And they were black Asiatic people who were practicing what we call Buddhism today, a form of it in antiquity. Okay? The people that occupied this land can, um, um, can't relate. They relate to the Khmer people of Southeast Asia, one of the most intelligent empires ever on earth. It trumps Kemet in Egypt. This was the only empire on earth that we can prove had running water, irrigation systems, and electricity in the modern way. Yes, we can prove electricity in Egypt as well only by a light bulb on the wall. I'm sure Egyptians had electricity, but Kimmer, Anchor Wat, the city is named after the energy. Anchor, the, the term anchor is the whole concept of how energy is harnessed from the ether. It's a process of anchoring this inner. The word harness and anchor can be used synonymously if something is being harnessed it can also be said to be being anchored if some uh, uh if we're harnessing wh whatever device is responsible for harnessing energy is some sort of anchoring device it's stable and it's there to connect two things in the case of energy we could say positive and negative. That which ties them together and hold them in one spot for the sake of harnessing energy or anchoring this energy is the point of singularity. Keep this in mind. Anchor is directly related to the singularity in between negative and positive, and watt is dealing with what comes out of that, which is wattage or energy. And if you pull up the city of Anchor Wat, what you would notice is that it's built like an electromagnetic torus field. 
Go and watch my documentaries on Anchor Watt. I don't want to be redundant today. Perhaps I will revisit the topic of Anchor Watt to go more into that. But I want to get into the boule and the whole how they're controlling the narrative on YouTube and all of this. But in order for me to do that, I got to go into the spiritual side and deal a little bit about energy. And then we're going to get into social engineering and how narratives are controlled and generated via social engineering. When we say divide and conquer, often we don't understand that the, the intricacy of the science involved in it, which is why I'm doing what I'm doing today. Now, let's go back to what I was saying a minute ago because it's very important. List of neo-pagan movements. This is a nasty bug that bit all of us. It's the most demonic form of social engineering. Yes, what do I mean? An agenda to promote, right? Let, let me go back to the definition here. Remember what a neo-pagan movement is. It's a spiritual movement that's there to revive the polytheistic religions of Europe and the Middle East. Um, Christianity as we know it is monotheistic. You hear me? Um, monotheistic is dealing with the concept of money, which is one currency for a nation, and that one currency is based on the one God of that nation, which is why we say in God we trust on that money. Check. It's monotheistic. It's dealing with money. Okay? So, when... They're trying to do a great reset and change what money is. They will also change the God that governs that that uh, currency. Okay, I hope you understand how deep this is. So right now we see that in the rise of New Ageism in this New World Order, they're changing the monotheistic religions into polytheism. Everything about New Ageism, when you see a popular spiritual system of paying reverence to the trees to add a wind in the form of different gods it's them it's them expanding the single god what we call el into the plural plural deities that we refer to as the elohim and the elohim is just a plural term for el you wouldn't say when El expands himself from a singularity into what we call the elements, okay? We don't call them, in order to refer to El in a plural form, you could only say the elements or the Elohim. These are the limbs of El. When they, when they started to personify their deity as a man, Right, They tried to personify the power of creation as a man. And instead of him, creation don't have arms. It moves things around with the elements. These are the minds of El, plural, or what they call the Elohim. These are the diverse um, paradigms within the one single mind of El, just like within a human. So to, to just rush this forward, there is a polytheistic and monotheistic uh, duality of every religion in the world. It can exist either or, yes. And uh, they switch back and forth and give us the monotheistic or polytheistic form for certain agendas and at this time we're going back to polytheism now check this out for whatever reason mono, a monotheistic expression of these European spiritual systems has been dominant for the past 7,000 years we've had a concept of a one God system hold that thought when I say the term one God system or one president system. It's a certain structure of government, right? And
And that's why I want to pull up this right here. So the word Pharaoh is equivalent to manager, president. All right. Um, preside, one who presides over those who reside. If you're a resident, there's one who preside over the residents called a president. Um, so this president's word uh, governs the actions of the residents. We're talking about one man or one puppet in the case of this form of uh, fiat government. But see, what you got to realize is true power operates in secrecy. So the whole thing about appointing a powerful uh, government official to be the one leader is that they can consolidate that those massive crowds to one guy. Okay. They really have some dude at McDonald's called a manager who's there basically for you to complain to him instead of the owner. If everybody complained to the owner about their burgers and fries, owning McDonald's would be a headache. It wouldn't even be worth all the millions and billions that come with it if your phone never stopped ringing. Imagine that the owner of hundreds of McDonald's got to deal with all the customers. So the point of having government officials is to point those crowds in the direction of, of, of what we call a day of puppet or president. Okay. It hides the true power. So let me say something to you guys. What the black narrative is, is that the Pharaoh, the black narrative is that the Pharaoh was so powerful and all this stuff. But the thing about it is, if the Pharaoh did not do what he uh, sworn to do under oath, he had a brotherhood or, or a cabal of men. We call it a cabinet today. He had powerful men around him who may not been at the forefront like the Pharaoh, but these men would exterminate the Pharaoh and his doggone family if he didn't uh, stick with the code of the brotherhood. This is the part that we're missing out on in the black narrative. They want to paint a picture that you got this Pharaoh who was so powerful and, and you know, all this stuff. So remember that the Pharaoh's power was given to him through oath in a brotherhood and it can be taken away by that same brotherhood. But most Pharaohs served the brotherhood well and proudly and there was no need to kill them or go through all of that. Uh, it, was, it was rare, but it did happen. All right, let's keep that in mind. Now, we're about to get into the whole boule thing in a minute. If you don't understand this, then you, 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 you won't understand what I'm going to get into later. So, remember it says here that the Pharaoh had absolute power and was called the manager, right? Now, listen. Absolute power over what? The restaurant, not the franchise. Check the manager of a McDonald's absolutely has power over that little building and that drive through and them grills and that soda machine and them high school students in there. He has power over that little building, that restaurant. But the manager inside of McDonald's don't have no power over the franchise. Now we want to take note of what I'm saying and realize what power is and how it operates. Now, is being a manager a good position? Hell yeah. And the managers make good money. But the power that they have is only to the restaurant. They ain't got no power over the franchise. That would be the owner. And we all know how this works. Okay, so 
the Pharaoh would be more like the manager, not to say that he wasn't part owner in the franchise too, because that can happen too. I'm painting this picture to show you the structure of government in ancient times so you can see how it relates today so we can start exposing the sellouts and you can see who's who. We got to go into this. So the black narrative surrounding Kemeticism and Freemasonry is to maintain the status quo of government as usual. Yep, I said it. That's what the whole thing is about. Black. If you look around what the black narrative on YouTube is, and we can start calling out names, you know, Roland Martin, me, son. I'm going to spare some of these guys, but you know who they are with the big so-called conscious platforms. They so conscious, but they always lead you back to Democrat or Republican not back to the knowledge of self is always back to the knowledge of pharaoh this and pharaoh that the knowledge of some egyptian deity and then because of that people know more about deities and gods than they know about themselves and we get along uh excuse me we won't curse our gods and deities but we'll curse each other you see what i'm saying some of these guys will get on this thing as Muslims, as comedic folks, and, and turn up with each other with guns and cursing each other out, getting gangster. But they wouldn't talk that way about them pharaohs in Egypt. And they wouldn't talk that way about Yahweh shot or they God, but they'll start cussing you out. But they wouldn't curse out their imaginary friends. And that's a tragedy. And that's because we don't glorify each other we glorify doctrine today and that's a result of something called the neo-pagan movements and that's why I'm, I'm, I'm on this topic so let me tie it all together prior to the neo-pagan movement see a lot of people want to know what happened to the black family structure guess what all the stuff that they giving you for the black narrative about what happened to the black family that's not even 50 percent of the truth it's probably like 25 percent of it the, the the bulk of what broke up the infrastructure of what we call black people is the loss of our origins loss of our nationality and identity and the loss of our true spirituality and you will be surprised how recent this loss was because a lot of people say that um, ever since we were slaves and given the Bible we lost our identity that's true but not all of it you see I'm from the Bible Belt and in the South we know where we originated from I'm not making this up a lot of elders and old folks in, in Alabama and all that in the South will tell you we've always been on this American soil. We're indigenous to this land. We're the Olmec people that they speak of. We didn't come over here on ships from Africa. The out of Africa is just a theory. That's a, that story is a theory. And that came to us in the neo-pagan movement. There was an earlier neo-pagan movement led by Marcus Garvey, who was also a member of the Boulay. He was a Vatican and Jesuit missionary uh, sent to um, revive the ancient polytheistic religions of Europe and the Middle East to black people. And he did a good job of that. What y'all got to realize is that Africa was 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 colonized more than any other continent on earth, more than the people in America. The, when you go to Africa, think looking for your true spirituality, your heart gonna be broke. When you get over there, you're gonna see that all them Africans over there are worshiping white deities. And they've been worshiping they white deities way before you, nigga. This is facts. Remember what the Masons tell y'all, which is true. Christianity started in Africa. So ain't nobody more indoctrinated than African people. We got a false concept of Africa. 
black folks. You think in Africa you're going to find yourself. What you're going to find is the bug that bit you because it bit them first. It's going to break your heart when you get to Africa and find out that them folks will kill you quicker for Jesus than your mama will over here. It's going to break your heart when you get to Africa and find out damn near 30% of the population are African Jews. With the little uh, yarmulkes on their head. It's going to break your heart when you get off that plane in Africa trying to find yourself black man and you realize the 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 the, the uh damage Islam indoctrination did on them way before we had a Islamic movement in America. See this this fake ideology that you have of Africa is your problem, but that's just one of the many tentacles of this octopus that comes from what we call chemitism, which is a subgenre on the whole bunch of movements that we call neo-paganism. And we about to get back into that right now. So check this out. What happened 7,000 years ago was the starting of a new one world religion. And that one world religion was basically a structure of government because that one world religion the format was given to the seven superpowers that run the world today they appear separate but they all work together for one world agenda and that agenda should be more clear now than ever during this pandemic the agenda of the UN and the new world order but anyway this agenda is old and this union is old and this new age religion is old but what they're doing now is going back to a polytheistic form of it and the reason for that is because everyone is going to have to have a form of nationalism in order for the 2020 agenda to be served the 2021 agenda the new world order agenda to be served what do I mean? See, nationalism goes all the way back to these early governments. The, the, the whole concept of believing in man or believing in um, elected officials. Back then, they didn't have words that we have today to like uh, president or, or, or uh, uh, vice president. It, it wasn't a state-based government back in these days with the origins of government the church originated what we call government and the church actually created the the structure of government now let's break the word down government which is to govern the mind but there's a format by which to do that successfully it's a way to do everything the right way and wrong way in life and these evil people who sought to control the minds of the masses said, hey, there's a right way to do that. There's a structure to be successful at indoctrinating a person. They patented that structure and it was it spread around the world among powerful people. Cabals were created and then what we had for the first time on earth was the beginning of class systems and peasant systems and basically rich and poor and what creates wealth back then is the same thing that created the day what creates wealth or power knowledge people knowledge is power so the most wealthiest people are in secret societies that hoard the knowledge just like they hoard the wealth and everyone that's so called in a poor tax bracket also have a low IQ now they blame you for being poor and dumb but basically they're breeding the masses to be that way. They're depriving you of the truth and the knowledge that would free you. And because of that, you can't generate the power that will come from the knowledge in the form of money and economic success. So we find that only a few people in the world seek to gain this kind of wealth based upon their connection to this inner circle of knowledge 
that you would need to access the power. So without the knowledge, you don't get the power. And how they keep you poor and powerless is just keep you ignorant and dumb. That's very simple. We know that, okay? So often what happens is in a religious world like what we're in today, you will blame yourself for being poor and dumb and say, well, some kind of way my family failed me or uh, maybe I need to get a better relationship with Christ. Maybe I need to pray more, read my Bible more, sow more seeds of blessings, more tithing more, and I can get to be where Elon Musk is one day if I tithe enough and pray enough and study enough. People do that and they still die old, broken, poor. What we find is people in these top tax categories don't even pray and have a Christian religion. When the last time you heard Elon Musk talk about God or religion, these folks are atheists. They think they are God. Now, everyone you see with boatloads of money got that same mentality. Just look at your rappers, Jehovah, Jesus. De these niggas think they're God. You know why? The word manager is synonymous with the word God. The, a God ain't nothing, ain't nothing special. The Lord is the one more powerful than any God. Yes, because the God is the manager of a restaurant and the Lord is the owner of the restaurant. The Lord appoint the God. The Lord send the son. The Lord is the father. The God is the son. These rappers are gods. These government officials are, are gods. They all work together. In the occult, they call themselves gods, and they say that we are in the aeon of Horus. Now, check this out. What is the role of the gods on earth to lead you to the father? Now we about to get deep. Because you need to understand the religion of nationalism, believing in the government. Because I don't care how woke folks think they are on YouTube, the black narrative always leads you back to the belief in some white man or some government official, which is a hypocrisy. In other words, you got pro-black movements that believe in white power more than black power. They ball their fists up and scream black power while voting red power, blue power, Democrat, Republican, no matter which one you pick is white power. So I don't care how intelligent some black, all of the black leaders have led us where? We're in 2021 today, and where are we as a people? Wherever we are today, if it ain't where we want to be, we should blame our mother freaking leaders. Every other culture do. Y'all dudes watch football every day and you blame the coach when the team lose because that's the man in charge. We, got, we blame the franchise owners and the coaches more than the players. Even if the player keep messing up, it ain't the player fault. If I lived in that city, I'm going to blame the franchise owner fault because they don't know how to draft good players. You keep getting bums on the team. You got to blame the people in charge. They get paid the big bucks to take the blame. If you leave someone, a babysitter in charge of your kids and your kids burn themselves on the stove, do you blame the child or the babysitter in charge? So here's what I'm trying to share with y'all. Wherever we are as a people right now, we should blame, blame the people who took all the clout for saying I'm a leader and I'm in charge and 
and went down in history as some black leader. And it's okay to respect and idolize them, but it's not okay to say that they did not fail us. As a people, we are failed today. We've been failed, and the blame have to go on somebody. And if we don't put the blame on our leaders, then our leaders know that they could continue to keep on failing us, and we won't blame them. We'll blame ourselves for being misled when we didn't lead ourselves. Here's the thing. If black people gonna blame they self, then at least make your own decisions and don't have leaders then. Everyone have an independent mind. Cause if I'm out here with an independent mind making every action independent of a leader, I'ma blame myself for everything go wrong in my life. But if there's some leader over me guiding my life, telling me what to do and what's right and wrong and what's the rules of our damn organization and shit, and ain't and, and shit is going horrible in my life because of it. I can blame myself for being part of this organization, true. But we got to blame the leader for indoctrinating all of those people and misleading them. Yeah, you got to blame Jim Jones for Jonestown. And then we can blame all of the dumb sheeple for letting themselves be misled by the man. But we got to always blame that, that leader first because the position they're in is powerful. That's kind of a magical position. It's easy to mislead and mislead indoctrinated people. Since birth, the government already indoctrinated us and primed us to be dumbasses who geared to be misled. And when some of our brothers and sisters find out they dumbed us down, they say shit. I can make money by keeping these niggas dumbed down. Why should I change it? Why should I try to be Captain save a and wake them up and save the world like Brother Sanchez? Let me get my money with the government. Fuck it. Let them stay dumb. We can all eat. Then you have the ones that say, damn, when they wake up, they say, I got to wake everybody else up. But for the most part, y'all want to hear the truth. Most of black men are woke than a motherfucker. But they won't let y'all know because they all getting money off keeping you dumbed down. A lot of niggas wake up and they help keep you sleep. And you got a lot of people in, in these secret societies and stuff that know the truth but won't tell it. Because the lie is lucrative. But um, let's go back and tie this into what I mean. You got to understand what, how I, I'm a, I know how you're going to understand it when I do this here. Let's go back here. So let's look at the list of neo-pagan movements. Remember what a neo-pagan movement is? All right. It's a... Look, let's read right here. Neo-pagan encompasses a wide range of religious groups and individuals. These may include old occult groups, those that follow a new age approach, those that try to reconstruct old ethnic religions and followers of the pagan religion of Wicca. So, Kematism is the reconstruction of ancient Egyptian spirituality that came about in the late 60s early 70s by UN agents like Dr. Ben Dr. Uh, you know Henry, John Henry Clark all of these uh, so called African st scholars that came out of the north up there where Prince Hall came out of out of Boston and New York and stuff that's what a Celtic Wiccan spiritual systems uh, thrived in America during the early British colonies. So what you will find is up north, there's a huge movement of hip hop, Egyptian culture. You talk about me, son. Let's get into some of the see what black niggas in New York, Baltimore, Boston, and all them the energy that they're under is a 
black form of Celtic Wiccan spirituality. And I'm about to break all that down to you in a minute. Now look, you got to ask yourself this. Black people in America always had their uh, origins told to the world by the people in the South who got the oldest black blood in America who've always said we have been on this land, indigenous to this land, we the true Indians and the Nakas, niggas, Naga, which the word nigga came from. And by the way, the word nigga is not an insult. That's who we are, we're the niggas. Everybody in the world know us by that title and we won't own it because we offended by what we are. That's called reverse psychology. If you go up to a Mexican and laugh at him and be like, ah, you're a Mexican, you're a Mexican. They will deny what they really are. They will say, no, I'm not a Mexican. I'm an American. I have my passport. I'm an American. I'm no Mexican. And you can laugh at him and tease him and be like, ah, you're a Mexican. Now you calling him what he really is, but you're laughing the energy you're doing it. You're insulting it. That's how they did us. They said, ah, you're a naga, you're a nigga. And we didn't want to be niggas no more. But that's what we really are. The whole world always knew us as the nagas, the serpent people. And all we got to do is reown that and everybody already call us by that Everybody in the world know what the nigga is The black people in America We ain't gotta go and reteach the whole world with a new identity Everybody know when they hear nigga Them the black folks in America I don't care where you at Why don't we own it y'all We already got an international identity And you offended by it That's reverse psychology now, why are you offended by it and why don't we know who we are? Because of the neo-pagan movement that indoctrinated our generation and the one before ours. This was the hip-hop generation. Hip-hop was a neo-pagan religion, y'all. People like Africa Bambada, they were witches, man. Now let me get I'm gonna get to that in a minute, but let me show you something. Remember what a neo-pagan movement is. It's the reconstruction of an old ethnic religion. In our case, black folks in America, it's the reconstruction of chemitism in our time. Because there was no chemitism prior to the hip-hop movement and neo-pagan movement. No one was no damn ho-teppers, man. That shit came with the CIA, social engineers, and black agents. I can name them out. They was all working for the boule. They started this whole chemitism movement that got all black folks lost today. So look, I'm going to give you a list of neo-pagan movements. Let me find my screen share. Right here is a list of neo-pagan movements. Have you located the one that bit you yet? It's right here. 4 slash 12, Kemetic. See that? Kemetism came right out of the neo-pagan uh, movement. And this was controlled by the government. And look, and look where the Ukrainian temple is in Spring Glen, New York. I keep telling you they changed the narrative. They gave black people a Polyon's narrative, a demonic, devilish, foreign version of, of our true spirituality that cursed our true identity in a way that made us be offended by nigga. You know, the crazy thing about it is uh, my great-grandfather, great-grandmother never had an out-of-Africa theory. But the generation after them did and that's a big divide right there that mean if i can dig out if you can dig up our great grandfathers and grandmothers they would be debating the young kids today who think they know everything about this out of africa theory think about it do the young kids today that we gain some sort of new scientific evidence that proved that all black people come from africa even though our forefathers told us we're indigenous to this land. 
they would say yes science proved it but guess what that's where the deception come in who controls science science prove whatever it want to prove for the agenda of the new world order we know that what science prove is never factual and reality based is always agenda based again if you look on this list of neo-pagan movements the comedic movement is one of them a lot of guys that come out of these movements think they know so much about black people and they're so cocky they'll debate what your grandmother told you folks been passing down their uh origin stories orally origin stories orally now the new ageism is to pass it down textually scripturally so if you start talking about where black folks originated from today boule niggas gonna say show me your references what scholars did you study on her what teachers do you know who to what what authorization do you have and i'm like bro I'm telling you what my great grandfather told me where we come from in my family. They're wrong. You should go and read this book by author such and such and check out this man. Fuck all that nigga. You just told me my great grandmother. She wrong and you don't know her. We should be fighting right now. Fuck all this book talk. That's how y'all ought to look at it. Like you don't even know my family, bro. How you gonna tell me where the hell I come from and tell my great grandmother and, and forefathers they wrong about my family origins? And you got folks online asking niggas on YouTube where their family come from because they didn't sit down and talk to their grandmothers and shit when they was alive. And this is where the divide come in, folks. See, because the story of who black people are always came from out of the southern part of this continent until the Harlem Renaissance, which was an early neo-pagan movement. You had uppity Negroes who changed the word nigger, naga, to negro. The word negro come from up out the north it's a northern version up out of it Harlem Renaissance and shit but the word Nicara Negro is also what they name Niagara Falls after in Buffalo but see them remember now the Apollo gave birth to some of the richest black people in America the Apollo Theater and is named after the slave version See this deity that 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 they worship in the occult was called Apollo. We about to get to that in a minute. So if you look at this list, you will see that Kemeticism is neo paganism, and there's no way a nigga can debate me on that. It's Celtic. It's Celtic. It's European and Sumerian. It's Babylonian based is not our true identity and spiritual system is luciferianism and satanism and i'm about to get to that right now so now that we know cometicism is neo-pagan what we're gonna do at this time for the sake of having all of this be digestible and so i can put it in parts that completes the first part of this live presentation i'm gonna take a commercial break and i'm gonna come back with the second part we're gonna work it in parts so people can have it organize in the second part we're going to go into deeper into this occult spirituality and go into sacred geometry exposing the baphomet influence and satanic influence of the boule and how they can and, and the agenda that they are accomplishing is very evil and we're talking about exterminating our people man I'm expose all of that and how you are playing along to that agenda and you're ignorant to it. And um, I'm going to show you how they accomplish all this. We finna get into it right after this commercial break. We'll be right back.
appreciate that, brothers and sisters. And we are back, like I said, for part two. Now that we we see in part one, we got the we got the fact out the way that Kemeticism was birthed out of the Celtic Wiccan neo pagan movements up out the northeast. It was bringing back a lot of those Celtic ideologies in, into America. And the way they brought it to black folks was through hip hop and through uh, the modern science and all of this stuff, which we're going to get into with Billy Carson and all of this stuff. See, you don't understand how a lot of your hip hop artists, a lot of the stuff they was rapping about was what the scientists is trying to indoctrinate us with, with this occult witchcraft religion of space heliocentrism and all that it all tie together um africa bombarda wears horns all the time and he throw up the horns and stuff that's a form of baphomet worship and um the reason i'm bringing him up because he's so-called a father of hip-hop and he represent the energy that hip hop had in its conception, which was very out of Africa. Who told you you came from Africa? That's what you gotta ask. It wasn't your great grandmother and great grandfathers. It was hip hop science and a whole cabal of black men in a some sort of Kabbalistic circle feeding that narrative. And they had the beast machine on their behalf. These people came to rise out of the late 60s, early 70s. You had the rise of the so-called black leaders and the black narrative being sold. But this black concept of black, black, black is black magic is Luciferianism and satanic. Um. I'm finna get into a little bit of the symbolism at this time so we can see, uh, uh, have a deeper meaning of, of what I mean, right? So some, some of your people that lead the uh, forefront of the black narrative in modern times, right? Let's go ahead and just share some random images to show you the language being spoken around above your head where you don't understand though. So he, this brother's called me son. You know it is like a lot of your top influences in, in, in the black YouTube are selling you the comedic identity. And I'm showing you what they're giving us is a pagan spiritual system. Um, one hypo hypocrisy about me son is that he have a campaign to say that He's not for sale and he didn't sell his soul, but yet he's in the bed with all the people that did and birds of a feather flock together. Everybody that sold a soul and rest in peace to Fred, the Godson, we see along with me son and a lot of these folks in power, they, they are so close to death that it should scare y'all. A lot of these guys they put at the forefront they always around somebody that end up dying or sacrifices. You got Dane Dash coming out now promoting Billy Carson's extraterrestrial talking. It's like your rappers and hip hop um hip hoppers have a connection to the black conscious community and we don't pay attention to it. These two things should be separate because these should be two opposing worlds. Our trappers and dope dealers and all them shouldn't be connected with our spiritual advisors unless we were Satanists and the gangsters are really giving us the damn spiritual system of they God, which is the devil, and they really making us all worship money and gangsterism. And if you look at what me son say, what does he say? I'm gangster, but I'm woke. And that's the new age religion. That's Satanism. Being woke is being still. See, you still can know the truth, but not apply it. You still can have mob ties, gang ties, and have one foot in, one foot out. You know what I mean? You don't got to fully commit to the good side with new age religion you can just be a demon who know good but you don't gotta do good
So we see a lot of people in power, man. These folks are so close to death. It's amazing. Like Dame, Dash, and Aaliyah. And for you to say that you are not for sale and won't sell your soul, you around everybody that has. And then, like we said, birds of a feather flock together. We know that the name me son is a cold word for Mason. My son or someone who sent and everyone that they send is there to serve the baphometic, comedic agenda, right? And this right here is called communication. You see how he's standing up there with his hands like that? All of this is satanic. It's, a, it's how they communicate with each other. I'll show you some more people in power doing it so you won't say I'm just picking on them. Hold on. So let's go here. About to show y'all some stuff now. Um, for my slides, here we go. See the way that is not no coincidence that all of these Freemasons and Boule people that's promoting a satanic agenda. They think about what I'm telling y'all. We dealing with gangsters right now. Me son told you he's a gangster. You need to listen and believe him. But they were a very evil gang that's bigger than Crip and Blood. See, the Freemasons, the Luciferians that control the narrative are the most vicious and powerful gang. Now, when you see them throwing up these symbols, they're communicating. Me son ain't doing his hands like that for no other reason than to show what gang he's a part of. Let's not play stupid, guys. All gangsters throw up gang signs. Why don't you watch them when they do it, though? Like, why do you, if a crip throw up crip, you're going to say, man, he a crip. But when the Luciferian throw up satanic signs, man, you coming with conspiracy theories. All of this is Luciferian poses, and he's not done. You think he just want to do this every picture, man? Look at this, the symbolism. And I'm not picking on me, son. But look here. Roland Martin doing the same thing. Look at how they got their hands. That They're communicating, folks. Now these are simple symbols. Everybody know these. That I'm not doing nothing bizarre. I'm trying to keep it simple just so you can see. So when they make the delta, because that's what it's called a delta symbol. That's what this is. It's an inverted triangle. It's the same as this. Okay. That right there, a lot of people you see who part of this same cabal will do that and right now we crawling before we walk we ain't gonna do nothing too big yet just giving y'all showing y'all something see all of these are neo-paganism symbols if you look at the symbol of wicca it's the pentagram we dealing with satanism this is not our true witch spiritual system even though a lot of people try to Make it like that. Now hold on a minute. Gonna show one more. I got pictures of Roland Martin doing the same thing. You see here, man? They speaking when they do this, y'all. Alright, they all on the same team. If you think I'm bullshitting, check out this one. You see on this image, me son got the hand over his heart. You don't think that's satanic, do you? Why? Because y'all don't study symbolism. That's why you over here on Bro Sanchez TV, because I got you back. Don't worry. But I'm going to show it to you right now. You know I got you. And we crawling before we walk. Uh, 
All right, where we at? Thank y'all for coming in. Hit the like, share button, please. See here? See here? I want you to pay attention to two things. The wearing of the all black and the hand crossed over the heart. Let's look at that. You see there how they crossed that hand over the heart? It's Celtic. This is this symbolism from neo-paganism. Where did he learn it from? Where did he learn it from? Shout out to Tahaka. He did a good video on Misun and Tamika Mallory, how they took advantage of the Breonna Taylor situation. Again, people in these occultic positions that benefit from death. Who else benefit from death? Rappers with blood sacrifice. Why are all these influential people always around niggas who die like Nipsey Hussle and Sebi and all of these rappers be around these leaders and motherfuckers just be dying around them and they it's like bro their demeanor don't change a bit they don't really mourn for real fake tears it's like and you actually benefit from the death of a person it's, it's, it's very strange you know what I'm saying like if the person actually came back to life, your eyes would get big and you would be like, I thought you were dead. Instead of, hey, what up, my nigga? Like, you benefit from that person dying so much so that if we found out they were still alive, you would be mad instead of happy. You should look at people like that. You should stop turning your nose up that the blood sacrifice thing is real. It's real, man. And it is a we should respect the dead that are sacrificed, even though they put themselves close to a lot of these demons. I'm not saying me son is 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 guilty of anything. I'm just pointing a lot of stuff out surrounding influential people. And one thing is the symbolism that we ignore that's right in our face, man. You know, with the hand over the heart, it don't get more Freemasonic than that showing you who you took your oath and pledge to, who you working for, the people, every police, every CIA agent, military soldier know about this pose when you working for the machine. No one anti-machine willingly pledges their allegiance in, in that pose and show you their allegiance to the machine. You can't say I'm not for sale, but then show me the gang sign of people who are for sale. You can't have a campaign saying I didn't sell my soul, but you throwing up the same signs of everybody who sold a soul and you around all the people who sold a soul. Birds of a feather flock together. Now, I'm, I shouldn't just be singling out me, son. I'm not trying to do that because he's one of many. So let me give him that, that he's, and I'm not saying he's an agent or not an agent. I'm using him as an example to show the, the examples of what I'm talking about here. He meet the whole criteria of what we would call an agent. People who get to go on Vlad and the Breakfast Club and rub shoulders with the celebs and got the power to sway the news cameras and the, like the Grandmaster J package, you got to always look at them sideways. True revolutionaries are not put out at the forefront and in the spotlight like the people that's leading and taking control of the black narrative today. The people that control the black narrative today are appointed there by the boule and they are working with YouTube. They got the algorithms rigged up just like the sports games and the casinos. And their man is, men is gonna win every time. They got the masses indoctrinated to think that consensus equals truth and they control the numbers. 
This is all part of social engineering, y'all. It, it controls the collective psychology of the people. Let's look at another symbol that came out of the neo-pagan uh, movement. Did you know that the power fist is a satanic symbol? I'm not making this up, guys. I'm not making it up. Go and start researching Luciferian and satanic hand gestures, and you will always see this symbol on the list. Now, what these people will tell you is, yeah, the white man steal all our stuff. That's a lie. Y'all are all part of the same game. It's called a power fist. Now, you can put whatever color in front of it, black power, white power, they all throw it up. But when you put the color in front of it, you help promote the divide and conquer that the social engineer is trying to promote. And they keep you arguing and you never realize you fight for a false identity. You're not black. You're not African. And you willing to die for a false ass narrative. You out here dying to, to fight for something that not you and the, the word that they call you that is you you get offended which is nigga nigga is what the whole world always knew us by for hundred thousands of years we the nagas we the they got a dang on city named out to us in japan it's called nagasaki and when you go there the oldest temples there is the asiatic black man and black woman black buddhas Older than all the Egyptian shit. But folks been calling us niggas ever since we hundreds of thousands of years. But you see, the, the word nigga is older than the word Egyptian. The word naga is older than the word Kemet. Why are you offended by the word nigga, but you want everybody to call you a Egyptian a god nowadays? We used to be offended by the word king. Yeah, our Naga ancestors did not like kings and queens, man. Kings and queens were evil people that tried to take over other folks' land and, and create governments on earth. We didn't have that kind of evil system. But today you want to be the king and queen, which is the oppressor. And you don't want to be the nigga, the naga no more. Reverse psychology, social engineering. Look. This black power fist isn't exclusive to black people. White people throw it up too. Every culture that's plugged into the mainstream divide and conquer narrative throw this fist up to represent their personal uh, ideology. So it's all one team making everybody throw up this same fist for Satan, which is the God of chaos and division. And y'all don't get it. Now I'm about to show you the history of this symbol. Here is a God called Anubis. Now another name for this deity is Set, which is the root word of Satan or Satan. Saturn is the God that divide and conquer. The god Saturn had a ring around his head. And if you look at Anubis right here, you can see the halo. This is what they gave to Christ. Christ is a form of Anubis. The reason I'm showing you this is because the Black Panther is what you're looking at. When the Black Panther throw up the fist, holding the arm at a 90 degree angle and balling it up in a fist, comes from Set or Satan. That's why this is a satanic symbol. You see? Also, let me show you other forms of it. This, this symbol of the handball and in a 90 degree angle, it represents the symbol of the first king, which was called, and he was the king of the spirituality that ruled on earth during that time when the word spirit is ba the spirit is that which rises so when you take the word ba and you mix it with the word king guess what you get ba king or baking which is the present tense of bake 
Why am I saying that? Look here. The symbol of this king was on Baking's baking soda. Baking soda make things rise. And the spirit is that which rises. The baking soda is that which make things rise like kings who rise to power. The symbol of the baking soda is dealing with the god Ammon. And Ammon was a god called Hammon. And Hammon or Ammon, Zeus Ammon, let me show it to you right quick. Wait a minute. When you take the word arm and mix it with the word hammer, you get Ammer, Armor, or Ammon. And the god Ammon or Hammon is the Baphomet or the devil, as you can see. And Jesus is a form of Satan. Yes, Christ. Why though? Why? Because all of these deities are pagan, neo-pagan. Neo means single and pagan means foreign. It's a, a, a single foreign deity. Now, a lot of the foreigners didn't worship a single deity. They had a pantheon and, and, and they had a whole pantheon of deities that they worship so the the owners of these spiritual systems connect with the system polytheistically but the, they give the slave one of their gods so they, the one they gave us was zeus or jesus the devil amen that's the god of the world that they told you in the bible Satan and Jesus can't both be in charge unless they would have to be the same God, right? Right. That's what I'm proving. This is the Lion of Judah, the Lamb of God with his horns. And as a black version of this too, it represents the first king of the first seven kings. One of them was Narmer in Egypt. Narmer was a part of this new world pantheon of neo-pagan deities. Remember, every single deity belongs to a pantheon where that culture has a whole list of deities that it revere, even though you may only know one of the foreigner's deities. Your grandmother fight with you if you told her there was any other gods besides Jesus. But why would they write that in there if the people who had that religion did not have something called a pantheon family? Now we really using critical thinking here. The people who created Christianity gave you a monotheistic religion by singling out one God from their pantheon of gods. They got a whole list of deities and they took one of those deities and made a system around it and that's how you get monotheism. But every single monotheistic God is just one apple picked off a whole tree of apples and they give it to you and you will fight and say, ain't no other apples on that tree. It's just the apple I got. Ain't no other God but Jesus. And they the people in uh, in the Middle East saying the same thing. Ain't no other God but Allah. And they got everybody divided and conquered when all of these gods come from the same Abrahamic tree. All of these are Brahmanian religions based on Brahma. Brahma is another ancient form of Abraham, which is the, you see what I'm saying? Father of Christianity. Now check this out. So I can tie this all in with, with what's going on with chematism and the black narrative today. The true spiritual system of Egypt was a black European version of this same concept of demoralizing women, promoting a man at the forefront and using fear tactics as a form of control and uh, indoctrination and all that we know the whole shit we under the day we ain't gotta beat that horse people try to tell you it was so different in Egypt though that the black, when black people was ruling we didn't do this but when we start researching uh, we find out 
we did it worse to each other. That's how we fell from power. We were corrupted from within, had already created classes and stuff. But now let me show you what I mean about this symbolism. Bending the arm in a 90 degree angle is a form of showing your uh, uh, loyalty to the beast. What you will find with pictures of me, son, is if you look at the hand signs, they're always pointing their fingers in ways that we can sync up with Satanism and the Baphomet. Like, for example, this one here, you will see a lot of people do this. And you may not know what this means, you know. You may think it look cool to just point one finger, you know, or whatever like that. But it's actually um, origins to this stuff. So if you look in the top right corner here at George Washington, who was a Freemason, remember that? George Washington was a Freemason. If you look at the arm bent in a 90 degree angle and he's pointing that one finger that we see there. You bend the arm in a 90 degree angle. Remember, my son is Mason. My son, Mason. You bend the arm in a 90 degree angle and you point the one finger. That's one of the symbols. That's one of, just like we, he didn't make that up, see? Here it is right here. Same symbolism. You will see a lot of five percenters do this one with the two fingers. These are all forms of, and you can go and pull up a whole chart the way we pledge allegiance today, this God was called Ball Hammond. I don't know if y'all can see the bottom of this collage. Let me let me let me edit it real quick. Hold up. There we go. Ball Hammond or Ammon is what I'm telling you about. It, this is the black version of this deity. All of this is different forms of where everybody on earth was worshiping the Baphomet. And what I'm doing today is showing you we're still worshiping that. You know, Masons talk about riding the goat all the time. When you become a Mason, you got to ride the bull, ride the goat. Here is the goat, the sacred bull of heaven, Apis, Apis, which became the word Serapis, which is another form of this deity. In other words, the whole world worshiping the devil, y'all, or the Baphomet goat. And these Freemasons know that. It keeps us divided and it keeps them conquered. And I'm about to show y'all how. So remember, Zeus Ammon is the same God. Ham, it's a title that they give to all of the gods on earth. George Washington was a God, the first president, Freemason. You always see him in Freemasonic garb. You never see him repping no American flag. George Washington didn't get no American flag on his tombstone. He got a square and compass. It shows you who he was serving, the Freemasons, not the American people. And it shows you who a lot of these people here are serving. A lot of these people like GMJ, me son, a lot of these folks had to push to the forefront they not really serving the people that's secretive ser serving the brotherhood. We all know Roland Martin is a uh, A5A member, and A5A is based upon chemitism. You cannot have a black Greek or any fraternal or sorority movement without uh, neo-paganism. All the Greek symbols and all the rituals that they do to join the fraternities and the sororities and stuff come from out of the uh, neo-pagan movement. Prince Hall basically started the first neo-pagan movement that started to give black people in America a comedic identity and take away our Indian identity. In other words, a lot of black people here always said, look, we Indian, we the Seminole, we the uh, mahogany 
colored, copper colored Indians that's always been on this land. But at some point we started saying we Africans. And I'm telling you all of that happened within one generation. And I'm showing you how. But the knowledge, but that kind of indoctrination always been here ever since Prince Hall out of Boston. Now why did Prince Hall and the Boulet come out of Boston? Because Boston is where the Celtic spirituality started at in America. Boston Celtics, the Celtic people, the Celtic um, faith was the same thing of the Kemetic people, the Babylonians, the Sumerians, and all that. That is not the indigenous black people of this land, true identity or spiritual system. All right. Now look here. The early form of Christianity they gave the slaves was a, a form of this same system. But the problem was slaves was worshiping Christ, still saying they Indian. Think about that. Even though your great grandmother and great grandfathers were indoctrinated with the Bible, they still knew that they was indigenous because the Bible had told them the Gentiles doctrine and what they trying to do now is give us the black Judaic doctrine or what we what the Hebrew Israelites got they're telling the black folks now because we starting to wake up to Christianity hey why would you take your oppressor's religion and be a Gentile something beneath yourself just to participate in your oppressor's religion so what the oppressor do is he say well look don't leave my religion you don't have to be a Gentile no more we'll give you a new doctrine where you can be the chosen one now so you have this neo-pagan movement of trying to reestablish these old religions with black folks who was waking up saying I'm not going to be like my great grandmother and great grandfather my great grandfather great grandmother told me that we Indians but yet they Christian and worshiping a white God that's from Jerusalem when we say we're indigenous here the, the next generation saw that hypocrisy and we started leaving the church so in our generation they had to do something they created the hip hop movement we the hip hop generation believe it or not y'all that kept us in the church remember what came out of the hip hop movement was the black man rising his mind up getting off his knees and stop being scared of the white man adopting the gangster mindset but even with that all of your gangsters say what they believe in Christ you got Crips and Bloods up there trapping rappers, getting niggas who said they'll shoot you in the head, but they got a iced out cross around their neck, and they got a iced out Jesus face around their neck. But the niggas telling you they God. What, what it is is, the God that's around a neck is the one of many and all of them are part of a pantheon of gods that work together as a cabal to control the masses. One God can never do it alone. So when you look at the symbol of Freemasons, you will see the Freemason, let me show you. Within Freemasonry, all of the gods can exist together. But outside of Freemasonry, they can't coexist. For the, That keeps them united and us divided. Y'all don't understand the secret? Let me show you something. Let me show you. Here it go. Here's the sim true symbol of Freemasonry. A 
again inside of freemasonry all of the gods can commune that's mount olympus meaning in a freemasonic lodge you can have a christian pastor a muslim priest a moorish sheik all of these different religions can come in that masonic lodge and unite and be a team and rule the world together but when they leave out of that lodge they got to put on a show like they hate each other they got to stage debates and battle each other and that's divide and conquer when we accept one of these faiths all of these are like all of the NFL teams around the one NFL logo now all of them NFL teams can coexist within the organization called the NFL and them working together is what empower the one NFL organization so the NFL logo is the Masonic G in the middle all of the teams is around that all of them belong to the NFL now all of them teams that surround the NFL logo cannot work together when they go out there and start the season and shit and and, 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 and the gladiator games begin my team got the hate your team but all of the players work for all of the teams they're just agents bro free agents who's serving the agenda of the organization NFL so that running back who planned for your city today may be planned for your enemy city tomorrow if the money's right because all agents are for sale so if you in the NFL you don't belong to none of the teams you're a free agent which means you free to belong to any of the teams and the highest bidder you a sellout basically an agent you for sale the highest team get my I'm on that's who I'm a, I'm a sign my soul to same thing with this cabal in the religious world all of these big religious leaders and ministers sign contracts with the broadcasting and publishing companies and they are just free agents whoever cutting the biggest check that's the message they will go out there and serve they ain't loyal to any of the faiths they just loyal to the brotherhood in the middle the square and compass which controls them all so that famous Muslim minister who was famous in the 80s and 90s may be a new, new age AI spiritual leader in the 2000s and folks can say well he changing his mind we gotta change with the times man you know we got no you don't if you got the truth it never changes if it work for you then it'll work for you now only thing change is the lie and the people selling you the lie gotta get you to change when they change so we see we don't got the same systems that our ancestors got because they gotta reinvent the lie for new generations all of the world leaders no matter what faith they belong to belong to the brotherhood and they all work together in the lodge but outside of the lodge they fight against each other just like I'm showing you with the NFL all on work together for the sake of the league but when the season start, we got to uh, go and fight each other. You know, part of it is a is being a performer and a showman and an actor, not just an athlete, because you have to act like you hate your rival, even if you don't. You know, Chicago Bears hate Green Bay Packers. What if you a player who played on both teams, then you love both of them cities. You probably got children in both cities and a baby mama in both cities. 
But when you plan for the Packers, they owner and franchise owner telling you, look, I know you got family in Chicago, but, you know, we plan the Bears today. Don't go out there with all that friendly shit because part of it is being an actor. You you really think that the the, the, the the Packers player hate the Bears player, man. That them folks love Chicago. The Packers player might got a house in Chi Town too. They got to sell you that on TV. Like Democrat Republican. And when they stage in these like all of these leaders that's put before you are uh put there by the boule. Everybody has a group of men at the forefront of their race that's appointing their leaders, and these leaders will then train us on the agenda, and and they will be able to succeed every time because at their disposal they have a team of social engineers and and very strategic planners who know how to mind work. They've been studying us for a while, so let's move on. A lot of people right up under you on black YouTubes giving you the quote unquote what I call black narrative in all of these different aspects of life, where it be dating and etc., are all part of the brotherhood. We mentioned Kevin Samuels, which is one of the guys on the rise today. We know he's uh uh a five a to my understanding. I think he's a a five a like Roland Martin, but. A5A was the b first black fraternity It kind of gave birth to the other ones Or laid the structure for it For it, all the others It's the father fraternity as they call it And A5A is the colors black and gold And it's based upon the principles of ancient Egypt And it's structured just like the cultic uh, uh, royal family had the, the cultic structure of the royal families and the reason it's cultic because it's cultural. It's limited to a uh, family, a particular family's culture. In this case, the royal families of the world develop their own cultural, spiritual systems. And the word cultic is also the word Celtic. All right. Um, the reason the word Celtic or cultic is synonymous with occult and luciferianism and freemasonry and all that good stuff um it's because prior to this new this this type of uh these type of pagan ideologies our ancestors did not have cultic spiritual systems now you may say brother sanchez what do you mean the word cultic just mean cultural yes our ancestors didn't have cultural spiritual systems I know that sound crazy you know what they had natural spiritual systems our ancestors prior to being indoctrinated with cultic cultural traditions had natural truths let me show you the difference on the left side we have something called cultural traditions and you form spiritual systems off of that on the right side you have something called natural spiritual system that's it ain't no traditions why it's nothing to trade the word tradition is trade and adding an addition based upon trading. All traditions were influenced by other cultures. I ought to drop my mic right now. Boom, explosion sound. You're only getting it here with the best. Everything you do traditionally is not who you are. Tradition and truth are not the same thing. Tr traditions are things that we started doing based upon trading with foreigners. We picked up their customs and pagan uh, rituals and habits. And traditions, we kept doing it, but it's not our true stuff. 
when you got natural spirituality, there's nothing traditional about it. Everything about it is natural and spiritual. You ain't doing it because it's traditionally right or it's our custom. You're doing it because it feels natural and, and, and it's, it's right spiritually. It's not right by tradition. It's just right naturally. It's the right thing to do not to hunt and kill a sentient being. But according to tradition, you can sacrifice animals. According to tradition, you can circumcise babies and bite the penis head off. According to Jewish tradition, you can do a lot of sick stuff. Traditions ain't truth. We could talk traditions all day and you would be talking then but demonic Satanism. Let's talk truth. We traded truth for traditions. You want to know the truth? That's the truth. You black people traded truth for traditions and you want to know why your traditions won't set you free. <laughs> oh shit. I thought truth set you free. Niggas is, is, is trying to get set free with traditions. Listen, folks. You keep practicing these same traditions wondering why you ain't free. Because the truth hurt and it cancels out your foolish traditions and customs that was given to you through social engineering. The truth ain't popular, but the traditions are the truth ain't popular, but the cometicism is. The truth ain't popular, but the out of Africa theory is. The truth ain't popular, but Christianity is. Yet it's telling you it's the narrow gate. The broadest path of all the religions. Time about the narrow gate. The truth is the only narrow gate. And you know when you're telling it because your back going to be against the wall. Let me say that again. Niggas telling the truth got their back against the wall because the truth is a narrow path. And the only way you can get down, get through that path is to turn sideways and put your back against the wall and sidestep. So niggas telling the truth always got their back against the wall. They in the narrow lane. Ain't a lot of niggas in this lane, so it's small. And you got to move through it with your back against the wall. Let me show you something, though. Everybody that's telling you black power, white power, Satan power, Jesus power, is keeping you away from self power. The only power that's going to be worth a damn in your life is going to come from you and any power that comes into your life outside of you that power will only control you let me say it again any power that comes into your life from outside of your life is only going to control you show me a power that came to you from the outside that didn't control you let's talk about my life Gangs were powerful in my community And these powerful people in the community Came to y'all at some point If you grew up in the ghetto And played a huge part in controlling your life Some of you just now got out of that life And, and got back control over your life And I ain't just talking about street gangs Hell, churches too Catholic, Lutheran Some of you join them gangs Pentecostal and it plays a huge part in controlling you for years till you wake up. Any power that come to you outside of you is just a power seeking to control you like the government power. Does the government empower you or control you? Thank you. Do your fucking or, uh, religious organization really empower you or does it just control you and indoctrinate you? Any power coming outside of your life until your life will never empower you. It's only going to control you and empower itself off of you. 
So like I said, the only power that's going to come into your life that's going to be worth a damn is going to come from you. So people who are not self-empowered are not in power at all. They're being taken advantage of and ain't nowhere around that. You either empowering yourself or someone is taking your power and ain't no middle lane in that. Let's go back to the symbolism though. Now, a lot of people in the, uh, when I tell you about the Luciferian agenda, I'm talking about everybody's worshiping the devil or the God of chaos and don't know it. Whether it's through r r the religions, organizations that they give us, or when you wake up and say, I don't want to be a part of any religion, then you start getting deeper into the neo-pagan cults, climbing up that ladder. And one of the first neo-pagan cults that the black man come into enlightenment to once he make it out of all these religious cults that they have to uh, keep the sheeple lost. If you ever make it out of any one of them, because some people spend their whole lives in one of these circles, they never make it out. But if you're like me, son, or if you're like Brother Sanchez or any other of these folks who question their way out of all these religions, then you find yourself into something called chematism. And that's when you say, aha, I now have found the truth. And you yet still have not found the truth yet. You're in another hierarchy of deception. Chematism is uh, both from the Egyptian KMT, usually vowel Kemet, the native name of ancient Egypt also sometimes referred to as Netarism or Egyptian Neo-Paganism is a revival of ancient Egyptian religion and related expressions of religion in classical and late antiquity emerging during the 1970s. Why did Kematism emerge during the 1970s, family? Let me show you all this because now we're about to go deep. Watch this. Watch this. Look here now. A comedic is one who follows chematism. Now check this out. This religion emerged, this pagan religion emerged during the 1970s. You see this? What else came out in the 1970s, family? Watch this. You know what? You know what originated in, in the 70s? Hip hop. Hip hop. Hip hop. Why did hip hop come out in the 1970s along with Kemeticism? Guess what, y'all? Your first motherfucking hip hop artists were cultic witches who wore the top hat of witches. And all of them motherfuckers gave you out of Africa in, in, in chemeticism. Watch this. This is what overrode the ancient tradition of your forefathers that said we were Indian and indigenous. Here is Africa Bombada. Look at here. These guys were Satanists. Look at here. You see him with the horns and stuff? See, this was not our spirit. This was the demonic Egyptian people who they, they resurrected a demonic spirituality among black people and everybody under it today. <laughs> now, look, when you see him with the horns on, he's paying reverence to Zeus Ammon. This is the Baphomet, y'all. But we about to get even deeper than this. Stay with me. All right. The whole reverence of Egypt is what I'm talking about. The Pharaoh's religion was satanic. 
It was based upon riches and royalty and wealth of this world. That's what the Bible told you about the devil. Everything the Pharaoh had was golden. But the Bible told you Satan's going to rule the world. Who ruled the world? The kings of Egypt and around all the Sumerians and all these uh, royal families been ruling, hoarding up the wealth. If their religion telling you Satan ruled the world and all the treasures of the world, who is that which grants man those blessings on the earth? Not Jesus, but the devil. The richest Christian pastors don't get their blessings from Christ. They got contracts with the government and media outlets. The poorest churches still ain't on blessings from Christ. Bless their heart. When people like Creflo and T.D. Jakes know where the blessings of this world come from, the controllers of this world. So listen, once you know that, if you want the treasure bad enough, you will worship the ones who, you know. And so that's what I'm saying now. The whole thing about wearing a kangol and Falling up your fist and all that is Satanism. Remember, these guys were all black and they balled up their fists. Where did that imagery come from? This is where it come from, guys. This is a form of Satan or Satan, Satan, Anubis. The 90 degree and the balled up fist is right here. Look at the symbolism. Hold on. This how you this is how you get the Black Panthers with the balled up fist wearing the all black. You think that is dealing with black power and you don't know that it's dealing with black magic. In the future, I'm going to be talking about the YouTube channel called Black Magic 363 and about Billy Carson and all them because they're promoting a huge satanic Luciferian agenda. And I'm going to respectfully show you exactly what we're going into as a people, what they're getting ready, what the boule have, have a mission to sell us the new world or the spiritual system that they're going to need a new ideology among the people to bring forth this new structure they're trying to implement. And you can see now, man, the whole agenda of uh, us going back to nationalism like what they had in Babylon and Egypt is real. People now are relying more on the government structure more than the religions and all of that. You know, they shutting the churches down, people voting more. They had a record breaking them. This was this is the recreation of ancient Egypt right in front of our face or the national, the resurrection of those uh, nation based spiritual systems where you had gods. But back then, see, let me show you some. Back then, when a person went and worshipped this statue, they knew that the statue was a representation of the king because one man can't be in a hundred places at the same time so in the ancient world that's why they made statues for kings in everyone's area um the religion back then was a nationalistic religion meaning people worship the king who was called the God. Remember the church was the government and the God was the image of the king. Today, we worship the old images of those government leaders calling them the gods, which would have been their ancient title or president. All right, you might want to think about what I'm saying and rewatch this or whatever. But, um, So, like I was saying, um, hold on a minute. So, 
So like, like I was, so like I was saying, right? Um, shit. What was I saying? Um. So like, so check this out. Back then, an ancient person would look at this statue, and they wouldn't believe in some spook god above the clouds and all of that. In antiquity, they knew, okay, this is a representation of the king. Out the out the three twenty five A D with Constantine. They, they said all of these statues around the world we're going to sum them up into one single God and that was the beginning of monotheism theism as we know it where they, they basically consolidated all of these conceptions of, of that different king around the world and start giving entire continents the same image so instead of it being statues of particular officials in certain areas, it'll be a statue that didn't necessarily uh, identify with a single individual, but a God per se, per se that represented all of the rulers. I hope I ain't confusing y'all. People in their areas all had statues of the king. And they worshiped the king. But since the king couldn't be in everybody's area at the same time, everybody worshiped the king with a statue. And he would make his rounds to everybody's area. And when the king was in your area, you didn't need the statue because the king was there in the flesh. But when he was away, that's when the statue represented the king. Today, what they're saying is, since presidents can't be everywhere, they're going to have uh, holographic avatars so that they can do rallies in multiple places at once. They've been thinking like that. That's why back in the day, the king just had a statue everywhere. And uh, people can actually go to that statue as if they would the king to worship whenever he... At, as if he was in, 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 in their town or whatever. So, um, basically, uh, I said all that to say, when we talk about the Baphomet, right? The Baphomet is a universal deity that represent male power, period, government structure. Um, and 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 the and the the reason why that's not good for us is because true power isn't given to us through government structure. Uh, true power is taken from us through government structure. Okay, not given to us. Show me someone has ever been empowered by those we call the government. And I'll show you a sellout. Other than that, you just a regular person as a victim to that power. Now, the, the deities with the horns around their head are all Baphomet. So let me say that again. Baphomet is one deity that represents a culmination of every statue of every powerful man that ever ruled the earth. This is the secrets of the occult. So every powerful man present themselves in, in, in Baphomet poles. And the man pairing himself with an animal is showing you basically how the man is ruling in the animal kingdom, which is telling you the devil's kingdom, the animal kingdom. Man don't rule the spiritual realm. Man is at war with the, with the spirits of humanity. And he want to keep your spirit subjected to an animal. In other words, most folks operate on their animal instincts is for, and not their spiritual intuition. 
when they get the whole world operating on animal instincts, you can rule over them because they rule the animal kingdom. And that's when everyone thinking like an animal and you can't control your own damn self, you damn an animal, then you, guess what? Animals need owners to control them because if the animal ain't controlled, guess what? They say it ain't domesticated or civilized. Before man had pet dogs and lions, he had pet humans. Let me say that again. Before man domesticated any bird, he domesticated his brother. Before man was telling a dog to sit and it sat, he told his brother to sit and he sat. Man knew how to command himself before he could command any animal in the field. Man took away his own natural sovereignty from himself and created a peasant class which was more like the people under the stairs. A whole race of people that we can breed like we breed dogs and animals for the sake of telling them to fetch shit and get shit and print shit and fat shit and drive shit and cook shit and clean shit. So now we're talking about the business of harvesting slaves. How do you create a slave? You give birth to a human and you give and you create a paradigm for them that will never allow them to unlock the secrets of their true reality of their self. You give them their identity and you tell them what they are, who they are, where they are. You never let them uh innocently unlock these secrets naturally which will lead them to the truth you you influence them from the moment they come out the womb toward with narratives and in the case of what I'm going over now is the black narrative what I like to call it which is we come from kings and queens we don't we come from humble people who was connected to the earth who despise kings and queens and people that's trying to enslave over other folks. Know thyself. When you think you come from queens and kings, you don't have spiritual systems that unlock the secrets of self. It only leads you back to the glory of some pharaoh. That's why when we look around the world, we don't see things that make us proud of us. We see things that make us dick ride some ancient dude who they said had all the gold and all that. And, and as a result, you do the same shit in modern days where you now only thing you respect is luxury and money. That come from Egypt. You, you glorify the motherfuckers with the money, the chains, and you got a whole spiritual system around that. You know what I'm saying? The glorification of the same fiat currency that enslaved you is the number that was done on us to create slaves. They had to convince the slave that the system that made you a slave is actually the system that can empower you. But the trick is it always can empower you. It never does empower you. Empowerment becomes this pursuit of happiness that you never obtain, but they make you glorify the pursuit of it like a donkey chasing a carrot. Again, if you look at the symbolism of the arm bent in a 90 degree angle, and the fist balled up or not balled up because either way you pledge either way. Um, what it shows you is there's clearly a language being spoken all around us. That's why I made these collages. There's a cabal of people in, in religious garb who are posing as officials and leaders on earth but they really have no true power and jurisdiction over us older than what we give them based upon us believing that the system that they 
built works for us. And even if you think the system work against you, if you have a leader that's saying, go vote in a broken system like my son or most of your leaders that's saying, hey, blacks need to get more involved in politics. They're saying blacks need to get more involved in a system that fails them. Anyone know when you're being oppressed and you're a victim and you 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 um a victim inside of a system that preys on you, getting more involved with that system is the the last thing you want to do. You want to get least involved with it, right? That makes more sense. Now, if you look at the Pope garb at the bottom and his symbolism. This goes all the way back to the Celtic traditions here. This is the God of the Celtic people is what I'm telling you. And they wore green like St. Patrick. And that's this come from out of those people never went anywhere. Those were the pilgrims that came from Britain and colonized the Indians of this land in the Northeast starting from Boston, Boston Celtics. They brought their witchcraft and indoctrination over here, man. Look, the Masons hold their grand festival on a day of St. John, not knowing that therein they're merely signifying the fish god, Oans. All of this is hermeticism, too. And trust me, they do know. They know. All of this is Babylonian, Sumerian spirituality. Remember, Jesus is a fish god. Oans is is also John the Baptist. The, you put a J in front of that is Joanne, which is the female version of John, Joan, which is the male version, Joan or John. But uh, yeah, Joanne's, Oans. But that, that right there was the God that was there before Jesus. Remember, John the Baptist was doing Jesus' work before Jesus. John the Baptist was this fish god named Oans, the god in the water. The only place you can find John the Baptist was in the water. For John the Baptist to baptize you, you had to go to the water. He, it was like he lived in the water. He was a fish god. This was real men on earth that occupied the sacred, sacred rivers in their area and came with this first form of cultic indoctrination paganism we revered our river systems for uh for natural reasons that sinked us to mother nature they took the spiritual systems of us revering those natural rivers that fed our crops and all that and served as cultural highways they took those river systems spiritual systems and and, and paganized them so now we started to baptize folks in those rivers in the name of pagan gods, where at first we would simply go and anoint ourselves in the waters of those rivers and be thankful for those rivers for what they, how they fed our land. Now we don't care nothing about the land or the rivers. We care about the temples and the churches. That's because of what I'm telling you, indoctrination. We will never trade our river for, for a pagan church, but that's what we did. The rivers are polluted and controlled by the government and the churches and temples are fucking clean as hell and controlled by the people. I'd rather swap it off. Give me back the rivers and you can get these useless temples and churches. That's what's the trade off when we started adopting neo paganism. But I'm showing you how far back this go and how it plays into uh, generational wealth, conquest, the taking of territory and all that. Why? Why? Uh, how the religion plays into you losing your land. You will start worshiping gods that tell you to give everything up and serve them. And that's why you give up your land willingly. For the, and when these folks come to your land, they come with their religions. And, when, and guess what happens over time? You have their religion and they have your land. 
the pilgrims came with their Bible and we ended up with the Bible and they ended up with the land. It's a trade off. And that trade off is the root word of tradition. The moment you start to do business with these foreigners, not only are you trading, you know, apples and spices and all that crap, you're trading ideologies and you're trading diseases. You're trading a lot of things, sperm and sex. So you start into marrying, which is all of this stuff is natural for us to um, build these trade systems and work together and create what they call a diverse economy. But when it's controlled, by Freemasons like what I'm showing you here now we don't control that diverse universal worldwide trade system they do and we're slaves in it when people do trade for generations the ideologies and customs that comes as a result of those people uh swapping and inter interacting with each other is called traditions the customs that we start to adopt and incorporate it into our indigenous cultures our original spiritual systems start to mutate the more we deal and adopt the foreigners And over time, your spiritual system look more like the foreigners than your own. That's when you've been completely infiltrated. And at that point, you are hand over your inheritance to fully integrate into that system. So, <clears throat> I hope y'all see how this go. You know, I don't want to beat that horse too much, but the reason I'm showing you this image is because we fully integrated into that neo-pagan system with the beginning of black culture. Christianity and our indoctrination prior to hip hop and the neo pagan movements of the 70s, it incorporated us into a network of, of ideologies that will work against us. Let me, let me say that again. Before hip hop, before the neo pagan movement, we were already indoctrinated with Christianity and a, a, a Islam and etc but we weren't fully um, initiated into these uh, occult neo-pagan spiritual system the full initiation into this neo-pagan Satanism is the fifth degree and that's what we're in now or MAGA in Satanism it's called MAGA that is what you're calling new age spirituality that's what's going on all over the world on every continent everyone music is starting to sound the same and get drilled like even in other languages everyone is becoming a tiktok culture tiktok dealing with chronos the god of time um, which is saturn which is why the pharaoh's headdress have the stripes they're dealing with the rings of the god L, which I showed in the collage. I'll show it again. Uh, where is it? In the bottom left corner, you see the god Saturn and the rings around him. They replaced that with a halo around Jesus. But he show you one eye for the all seeing eye. when you see the horns coming out of, of, of Africa Bombada's head with the five pointed star 
Another thing I wanted to show y'all was this. Uh, this is all a form of Uncle Sam, Papa Lekba, Satan. The word Sam come from the word sham. This is the sham God. The shamrock is related to the four-leaf clover and the Celtic Irish traditions. The top hat that they wore in hip hop being the Kangol and the uh black the black top hat that Run DMC them wore. Okay. The five pointed star reverence that came out of the hip hop culture. All that is in reverence to this deity here. Satin set. Here's another form of him. Remember, this is the Baphomet with the five pointed star on the forehead. I got to keep showing y'all that because I'm about to go somewhere with this now and clear to some of these slides. So hold on a minute. Hit the like and the share button if you haven't, haven't already. Hold on. Let me get my slides together. Here we go right here with the first one. So one of uh, the pharaohs in Egypt that shaped the spiritual system of Kemetism was Aten. Aten did not simply shape the Kemetic spiritual system. He rebirthed it in a new degree. There are five degrees to Satanism. And every time we cross over a degree, we say, man, this things are changing in this new age. And what you will see is a generational split where your grandfathers and grandmothers believed one thing, but the children believe another one. That's a change of a degree in social engineering. None of these prior degrees was the conclusion of the new world order. The fifth degree is, which is where we at now. All of these other degrees was them sending us through a generational training uh, th thousands of years of indoctrination and uh, evolution of this uh, indoctrination system to lead up to a climactic point of what we call new age uh, religion manifested. In other words, money, which is the dollar and any kind of money, no matter where you're at in the world, all your is a belief system if you believe you got to make enough money to be successful and be happy then you are part of new age you're part of a spiritual system that started in egypt that they don't want y'all to know about any system of beliefs is a religion and you were born deep into a huge uh, uh set of beliefs that created a religion you're not fully out of yet until you realize what I'm saying. Because you can give up the Bible and all that stuff, but still believe in government politics. And, and but you can give up government politics, the Bible and all that, and you can still believe in uh, the corporate mentality of if I don't make enough money, I'm not going to get free. Everybody that start waking up in the ghetto as black men end up with the latter mentality. They say, I'm an atheist. I don't believe in no gods. I am the God. But the God that they fooling themselves that like they don't believe in is money. Because there's no atheist that don't believe in some sort of economic strategy or corporatized approach. And rather you believe in a dead man named Jesus, which is a corpse, or rather you believe in the corporate approach, you still got the same Babylon religion. Let me say that again. Whether you believe in a corpse or a corporation, it is the same. It's the same. 
people who don't get it, they think that they got to give their money away and receive more of Jesus to be happy. People who stop believing in Jesus don't stop believing in money and they end up doing the opposite. Saying, I tell you what, if y'all people want to believe in a God, I will show up at the forefront as a God for you. You can believe in me and I'll take all that money because that's what I believe in. So money is the God they trust and God we trust. Money is what they know they get their happiness from and they convince you to turn over your money for your happiness. If, if their religion teaches them to get money for happiness, then they got to give you a religion that teach you to give your money to them for happiness. And that's what we see Creflo Dollar doing and all the pastors and all them doing too. All of them doing the same thing. That's what create the peasants. That's what the Pharaoh told the, the, the poor class. If you, if you let me tax you and you give me your land and all of your money and inheritance, I'll give you happiness in a form of you don't have to worry about governing your own shit. We'll have an entertainment industry. We'll have gladiator games. You don't got to work your land all day. We'll we'll have a, 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 we'll breed the slaves to do that. We'll have it, the work won't be heavy on nobody because y'all are doing it in shifts. Every man load will be lighter with this new thing called government. We bought into the idea. If we let a few people control it, everybody else can chill. And we paid a price for those services called taxation. And the job of those first royal families in power was to convince you that if you gave them control of everything, it'll be to your benefit. And don't that sound like Jesus Christ? Don't all of these gods tell you to turn it over to them? Just turn everything you got over to Christ And you will be worry free And just lean on Christ You know That was the mentality of these first Pharaoh Turn over your land Turn over everything you can We'll govern it all And you can just go play all day And look at the world That's what we got Everybody's slaves who play all day While they plan the fate and future of our children's we don't see the origins of this system that we glorify and it's spiritual it's a religion money is a religion now again what we want to point out people who grew up in new york came up under in in a celtic region the tri-state area is uh concentrated with celtic witches there's more Freemasonic lodges in the Northeast than anywhere else. Uh, the Celtic spiritual system was born out of that area. And the whole mentality of the corporate man and woman comes up out of the Northeast. Babylon was an ancient city with big buildings where everybody worshipped money and and. And, and uh, they paid taxes And it was just like today America is modern Babylon If you would have went back to Babylon Back in the day It would have been just like Egypt Big tall buildings everywhere And people who didn't respect each other Niggas robbing And it's all about a dollar And when you get your hand on that, that money Guess who face was on it The goddamn king's face was on it You see what I'm saying? And they keep rebuilding this system and we think it's something new. The well, only thing new is the degrees of spiritual indoctrination that they're uh, in, uh, uh, programming us with generation by generation. Each generation is more willing to die for this system than the last one. And that should scare you as we go deep into the degrees of Satanism.
So let's look at what why did they give us hip hop? Who gave us hip hop? People who religion is money. Jews funded hip hop. And what happened was a whole way how to dress, how to talk, how to think, and all of that. This was a new spirituality, folks. And they called it black culture. They basically gave you a culture with just within one generation. That's a goddamn shame. And within one generation, niggas became Celtic witches with top hats on. That's the thing about the black Kango family. That's the witch, the modern witch hat. The Adidas symbol is the devil's trident, y'all. That's the devil's trident. And that Cuban link chain, that's the chain worn by Baron Samedi, the man who wore the top hat with the uh, pearl skulls. Let me show you. Papa Lekba. They showed you how to be a devil, man. Look. This was your dress code in hip hop. All black with the top hat. This was a Baphomet costume. We embraced it and guess what he wore? He wore a pearl skull necklace. They just replaced that with the Cuban links. You think these niggas just invented this dress code? No, they fucking studied Wiccan. These niggas are uh, uh, witches from up north the Celtics the Celtic culture listen a lot of these niggas up north get cool with white folks and they get so cool they, they actually can get in with the lodges and they get, become initiated they allow blacks to get in it they started to create a black version of this Celtic witchcraft and they gave it to us in the form of hip hop now the people who created this spiritual system were Babylon it was just like the Babylon and Egyptians the whole thing about this system is the glorification of money remember on your money is in God we trust with the all seeing eye and the pyramid hip hop came along teaching you black power in a form of economic revival in other words, hip hop didn't tell us to achieve power through spirituality and truth or knowledge, which knowledge is power. The trick of hip hop and the neo-pagan movement was money is power. We abandoned the ancient truth, which was knowledge is power. And what happened was we gave birth to generations of slaves and workers and non-thinkers who value money more than ideas. The billionaires and millionaires of the world don't care nothing about no damn money. They care everything about knowledge and truth. And, and money is the byproduct of that. With knowledge, Bill Gates did computers. With truth of how the universe works while giving you the lie so you don't empower yourself with it. Knowledge and truth is the seed of money. A man with knowledge and truth, everywhere he go, he gonna be wealthy. A man without knowledge and truth will have to work everywhere he go to save up money. But the man with knowledge and truth is just gonna come as a result of him giving folks something they lack today which is knowledge and truth because everybody think money is power when knowledge is power money ain't nothing but a job and yes I can't lie your job will empower you as a slave but not as a slave master knowledge on how to create something and build and a uh, a uh, a uh, a uh, a uh, a uh, a organization, an institution, a corporation is different than knowledge on how to get a job and save your money. That's slave knowledge. That's the one who grew up thinking money is power. When you think money is power, you're a, hemp, you're a rat on a wheel chasing the cheese every day. When you know knowledge is power, the money come to you. You don't got to chase it.
you fought out hundred dollar bills. Your tech gurus are not chasing money. Your hustlers and trappers and dope dealers is. Your slaves and rats out there chasing the dollar. Tech gurus and dudes with knowledge ain't chasing the dollar. The dollar's chasing them. Because where knowledge and truth is, economic success will follow. But that's a person who value knowledge and truth above money. They taught the slave to value money. And they actually put the face of the God on the money, like I showed you. Now, remember. Okay, let's take this off real quick. Take that off. We see the symbol of uh, arm and hammer. It's, see, this God that you're looking at is called Set or Satan. And that became the black power fist. But the black ain't got nothing to do with you. It's black dealing with black magic and Satanism. It's black dealing with the Celts that's trying to capitalize off indoctrinating you to worship the devil. When you worship the devil, you idolize money and you glorify money and you abandon truth and knowledge. That's how a slave is created. Now look, this is the god Zeus with the hammer or Thor. When you say panther, you're talking about the god Pan and the god Thor mixed together. When you take the goat god Pan and mix it with the god Thor, what you get is a god doggone pantherish or goat looking creature with a hammer or a staff. Pan and Thor became the Panther. But the Panther. It's the animal they use to symbolize set or setting, Satan. But instead of him having a hammer, they give him the unk too, which represent the same thing. Magnetism, electromagnetism. This is still the devil. They give him a trident too, remember. When you see Run, Run DMC wearing all black with the deep, this is all Satan worship. This is a form of the devil, one of the oldest gods in Africa. Papa Lek by a baron Samedi. A baron is another word for rabbi or Jewish priest. Those barons who wear the top hats, the, the Jews with the, the uh, beards. They got us to glorify those guys by giving us a god that looked like us but personified the barons of capitalism. In other words, they got you worshiping the goddamn monopoly man. And the root, root word of monopoly is mon or money. Remember, all of these were moon gods. The way we divide money is all based on the phases of the moon and how the moon divides itself in phases. When you deal with... 1, 5, 10, 25, 100. You're dealing with the degrees of the moon phases and coins, shekels. 1 cent, 5 cent, 10 cent, 15. These are the degrees basically dealing with the uh, main phases of the moon. Mooney or money breaks down like the moon phases. Money, moon is based on the moon, all these coins were originally silver and silver is the metal linked to the moon. Gold for the sun, silver for the moon. The gods of Mooney or money were originally moon gods like Allah and Zeus and all of them. The moon represent electromagnetism, not the sun. So the hammer and the staff is showing you remnants of this old moon a uh, 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 moon origin of these different barons and deities that we see. When you look at the skulls around the head of the baron, 
It's symbolic of the moon phases. Let me show you some family. No one else gonna show y'all this. Watch this. This is how the Baphomet get his horns, y'all. And this is why the Baphomet is a moon deity at first. Before they got into solar worship. If you look at the waning cre crescent and the waxing crescent, it's the it's the whole old dog symbol like this. That's how you get the horns. That's how money is split up. When you talk about divine things in quarters, you talk in money. Um, you talk in Mooney, money. Um, if you look at the skulls around the hat, is showing you the moon phases. They're called phases because back during this Celtic religion, they actually personified the moon phases as phases. Oh, y'all ain't get that. Let me say it again. The word phases is F-A-C-E-S, phases. The moon's phases are the moon's phases. Let me say that again. The moon phases are our moon's faces. And the God you see that represent this skull is Amun. 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 He wears the two pillars of Freemasonry and which represent those two polarizing phases of the moon being waning and wax. First, these two pillars became, this is the Baphomet horns. It's, it's a form of the Baphomet, the all-seeing eye, and Saturnism. You can see that the rings around the neck is a form of Saturnism. All right? So, let's retract here. You see what we got going here, the same thing. They, what they gave us in hip-hop culture was black magic. It was a modern neo-pagan movement put that a rebirth Satanism for black Americans. We were waking up, and they had to come with the fifth degree, MAGA. This is crazy, man. You want to know why hip hop was birthed from as a brother to rock and roll in its conception? Because rock and roll and hip hop are from the same tree. Remember now, all of this come from a form of blues when you talk rock and roll. It come from gospel music. In other words, there would not be no hip hop or rock without gospel church music. The pastor was the first MC. Remember when the pastor is up there spitting, when he started rhyming, he got music in the background, an organ, drum hitting and shit. That became rap music, man. A MC being accompanied by drums and, 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 and pianos. Hip hop is older than y'all think. Rock and roll is dealing with Christ's resurrection. I bet you you don't know why they call it rock music. Why? Why do they call it 
rock and roll. This was the music of ancient Christian Celtic people. This was the music of their spiritual system. And once they indoctrinated all of these different people with their Celtic spiritual system, we start to take their shit and incorporate it into our music and shit. And that's how you get these different music genres today. But they all got one thing in common. The I don't give a fuck rebellious and glorification of money, women. I don't give a fuck what music genre you in. Even gospel music. Why? Because it's saying about blessings and shit, which is nothing but money, cars, women. They got the whole world idolizing luxury. And the word luxury come from the word luxor, which was the most wealthiest city in Egypt. Showing you the rise of a new spiritual system where people started to worship the system of taxation and money and capitalism. Even if you give up the gods and give up everything, but you become this atheistic black power economic guy, you don't know you're more indoctrinated than you ever been. You think you're more woke, you're even more indoctrinated. Some folks, I wish they would have stayed Christians because they just became uh, evil as atheists and capitalists. So, hip hop gave the rock, why it's called rock and roll is because the rock roll, or there was a group called itself the Rolling Stones. The Rolling Stone is dealing with the resurrection of the Christ, which is the God of their aeon, the monotheistic God that, I, that I'm telling you go by many names, Ammon, Serapis, Baron, Samedi, Lucifer. People don't know Jesus and devil and the devil are one and the same and I can prove it. I can prove it to you right now. Watch this. Give me a minute. I'm finna do something for the Christians right quick. Let me pull up some scriptures. Wait a minute. I don't even got to pull up the scripture. Here it go right here. It's showing you Jesus and Lucifer are the same God. Jesus is called the morning star. So is Satan. Let me show you a picture of Jesus real quick. Let me show you something. Here go a picture of Jesus now. Now watch this. I'm going to show you a picture of Satan that's older than that. No bullshit. Watch this. This is one of the oldest pictures of Lucifer in the Western world. Are y'all seeing this? Look at the sacred geometry. This is Lucifer, the morning star. And check this out, folks. This is Christ, the morning star. Oh, the red background just, just drive it home. Let's use that one. Look at there. Jesus is the devil. And the crown of thorns, the thorns is dealing with electromagnetism, which is Thor. Thor is thorn. The word thorn come from the word Thor. Why? Let me show you something. Here go his crown. 
It go to crown of thorns. Now check this out. Check this out. Here's the science behind the crown of thorns and how it relates to Thor. This is a Taurus field. Taurus, 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 Taurus. The Taurus field represent electromagnetism. They just put, if you notice, it looked like a Thor's hammer. Thor's hammer became their way to personify electromagnetism. Thor and Thoris. And when they started hiding this knowledge, they hid it behind deities. I'm showing you the, the whole black narrative that's being controlled, is being is founded on Pan Africanism and Satanism. I got to go here with y'all when you think you're so smart on YouTube and black power family, you don't know you, you fucking practicing devil worship, black power. That's satanic as hell. Listen, you should listen. The thing about it is this, this symbol represent power, but they told you this guy represent power. They took, this image well this science interpreted it to this image the word thorn is the word thor the two pillars of freemasonry are dealing with the two horns of the baphomet they replace those uh horns with a halo or either thorns Remember that a horn ain't nothing but a thorn. Yeah. The Baphomet thorn, uh, horns are overgrown thorns. You got to think about the wordplay, right? Let's pull up the Baphomet real quick. And let's understand that a horn is a thorn. Think of a woody little thorn stuck in your hand now think of it bigger that thorn is now what a horn we got to show you uh the symbolism now here is where you get the adidas adidas uh, adidas was the logo for hip-hop but what they're not telling you is adidas is very satanic you don't realize that you 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 have a satan's trident going on what you got with the Adidas symbol there? Egyptian pyramid worship, where Satan, uh, this form of Satanism we're under, come from Egypt, right? And look, you can see the Adidas symbol right here on the Baphomet head in the middle, the devil's trident. That's micro, and the entire thing together is macro. It's the same symbol of Adidas right there, and, and that came out of hip hop. The wearing of the top hats with the trident logo is all satanic. They trying to make us into the devils that rule over us. Let me show you what a baron is. Because the god is that you're talking about is called Baron Samedi. A baron is a rank of nobility or a title of honor. And this is how a baron dresses. See the baron where the top hat this is a form of the fez and all of this good stuff if you look at modern barons they just modified it a bit for example Jewish barons who look like magicians which they are magicians you see all of these are the devils, y'all, that's pulling the strings behind the scene, creating the chaos and hell on earth, controlling the wealth, but they're hidden. You looking for the devil to be some ugly creature when it's a magician in the top hat with a wand doing magic on the asses. How do they do magic? By giving you a whole belief system that you fucking a fight and die for. 
the Jewish barons that funded hip hop made us worship money and baronism, Satanism. They made us wear top hats and look just like them. Let me go back to this shit. Hold on. Y'all don't see what happened. See, the guys in New York, they right by all the Jews. And so they selling their souls quicker than everybody else because they wake up every day right next to the wealthiest people in the world and shit, some of them. Some of the wealthiest people in the world right there in New York. Yeah, Cali got the most millionaires, but New York got the most billionaires. So we're talking about the people who can fund entire industries can start them and dismantle them such as the hip hop industry that's pocket change to them the whole purpose of them creating this hip hop out of New York was to take that Celtic uh, spiritual system that Prince Hall had and give it and make it common in black and create what's called black or hip hop culture if you grew up in New York and you was around all of these so-called black leaders and shit they taught African studies and hip hop studies in, in the colleges in America hip hop is a subject that you can actually uh, minor in yes hip hop is part of the curriculum and it, it falls under African and ethnic studies all of this is no different than you studying um, Islam or uh, Wiccanism or Satan, any kind of religious, because it's a cult or cultic. All cults are pagan. I just went broke that down to you. Our ancestors didn't have spiritual systems based upon a concept of culture. They had natural spiritual systems that was based on nature and not tradition. Cultural systems are based on tradition, not nature. So in cultural systems, you can do all kind of unnatural shit like sacrifice animals and kill each other. Remember, hip hop is our culture. And what does it teach us to do? Kill each other, rob each other, you name it. But you would do that and think it's okay because it's normal. Normal don't make it okay. It just make it tradition and systematic and part of your paradigm. But who made it part of our day-to-day -day way of thinking? The Jews who funded it in the early 70s and stuff. Hip-hop was an extension of the neo-pagan movement. These folks wanted the rebirth, chematism. Or naturism. All of your black conscious platforms are in the bed with the hip hop artists, even the Nation of Islam and all them. All of the Freemasons are connected with the rappers and the pastors. How can the devils and the angels be partying together and y'all not asking questions? How can you have most of the most influential YouTubers? either come from some kind of big religious organization or five percenters or some Masonic group Zulu Nation and now they want to tell you how to do right now after they was in the rap game or after they sold they sold and they just agents these folks try to teach y'all good but still promote the hip hop culture talking about his real topics like they happen to youth but they still promote gangsterism and idolizing gangsters they still glorifying they murders and want to let you know how they the hardest dude from their hood and stuff hip hop was born in the Bronx and the mentality of these Luciferians is prevalent there a lot of folks that's in, in influential positions promote capitalism and ego and you having on a different coat with a different hat and jewelry on every stream and 
uh, glorifying rappers and killers and murderers and big gangsters and you know they're hypocrites these folks are all part of the same brotherhood ask them what they do for a living who sent them see what I'm saying if you look at what we got out of hip hop it was another form of what they did was created a fifth degree of satanism for the average black man and black woman to be part of satanism without you even knowing it so every black person embrace hip hop as a part of our culture a foundative part of it and we just started doing it in the 70s so in essence hip hop generation is called hip hop generation cause we are a new culture all in our self there was no hip hop when your great grandfather great grandmother and them was creating big ass families their music was telling them to make families and have babies the children of those people I want y'all to listen up man this is deep stuff your forefathers had big families and they wanted to stop that we was breeding too much they had music that was telling them to make babies and start families this was before hip hop and that was because they in the occult they call that harvest time I want y'all to listen now how they how we're cattles and our fates are being controlled by social engineers and freemasons and boule listen to me it was harvest time during your forefathers generation meaning they were in the business of breeding slaves in other words we need the slaves to breed and have babies we don't because they was getting us ready for the for, for the rebirth of a new industrial revolution they was going to need more manpower in the up and coming future generations So our forefathers was a breeding generation where you had stay at home wives and big families. That was when the governments of the world was saying, we need more slaves for this future workforce because we about to change the industry. We're going to need a higher population on earth. So that generation was breeders. And all of the children that came from that they gave us a whole new music system to make us stop breeding once they got the numbers up. That was the hip hop generation that told you to glorify money over family, jewelry, cars, and clothes over family. Fuck having children, it's about being a boss. You don't want no wife, man. It's about having multiple groupies and shit, right? A music giving a message totally opposite of the previous generation's music. Which told them to make families and have babies. Once they harvested enough slaves from that generation, now they wanted to stop the breeding. Now we got to change the paradigm with a new here's neo-paganism right here in, in, in a long and this next hip hop generation had less babies smaller families social engineering through spiritual systems that's the magic that's the cabal magic you thought these rappers was giving you political ideology when they was giving you a satanic spiritual system and you didn't realize that the political ideology of a black man having less babies and pursuing economic success ain't no different than what the prosperity pastors later brought. They were the hip hop rock stars in the gospel world. Your Creflo dollars and all them. Instead of them having big chains and big cars, they got big churches and expensive suits right they pull up in the Rolls Royces they ain't your average 
revolutionary. And these guys were neater. This was the Uncle Samming, the Uncle. S Here's what I mean about this whole witchcraft thing of capitalism. You're born into a system that preys on you. And in order to keep you to stay in that system as a victim, they make you glorify the very system that you're at the bottom in. They make you subconsciously idolize the monopoly man who ruined your life with this system. Let me show you something. All of these pro-blacks is telling you the same thing. Black people got to get into politics and economics. And when they do that, they're giving you Satanism. They giving you Uncle Samism. Cause that's what the monopoly man represent. The politics that govern the hamsters, or excuse me, the politics that govern the rats that's going around the, 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 the hamster wheel or the monopoly board, right? trying to avoid jail every time they pass and go right every piece on that monopoly board is in the rat race what dictates the movement around the board is the rules of the game that we call politics that's what govern the board what keep the pieces moving is the money bag that he's holding in his hand. And the money bag that he's holding is the carrot in front of the donkey's face. And all of these Jews do that. They say, yes, we're the wealthiest people on the earth. But if you work hard enough, you can be where we are. But they didn't work hard to get where they was they simply uh indoctrinated your ancestors this is the magic the fact that the people that run the world are in the military they indoctrinate your ancestors to build armies for them but they just small families they show up with spiritual systems and ideologies and, uh, and as a result, militaries form around those ideologies. But you got to think about this. These rich Jews or royal families never come with the military. That's the fake shit that you read about in history. These royal families that rule the world don't show up with a military. They show up with a spiritual system and the people who they want to control will build a military out of their children to protect the indoctrination that keep them a slave. In other words, these guys show up and everything they need in, their, in, in that nation they want to control, they build it when they get there. The first thing that you get when these guys show up is a boom of new culture and and the rebirth of that in America was the neo-paganism movement along with that boom of new culture and ideologies and what happened was a rebirth of Egyptian religion in America let me go back to my brother Africa Bombarda real quick Because what happened in hip hop was a rebirth of Egyptian spirituality among black America. Not a rebirth, but a birth of it because we never had it before until hip hop. So along with that, it was a, a, a golden age, meaning a lot of money and luxury came to black people with the rise of hip hop. It was a new economy because it was a new uh, with all cultures come an economy a music a dress code and all that hip hop ain't no different 
we didn't realize that we were being given a new culture. We just thought we was given a new music form. Let me say that again. When hip hop came upon us, hip hop generation, we didn't quite embrace it as a culture, even though we called it one. But along with this new music, it told you how to think, how to act, how to dress, and what was important to you. So this wasn't a new music. It was a new spiritual system. And all the things that hip hop value is the same shit that they valued in Egypt. Money, clothes, jewelry, women, slaves, and that's what we value in hip hop power and if you stop valuing those things you're not fit for capitalism you become a threat to capitalism that's why I keep showing y'all Uncle Sam you wonder why I keep pulling up this image of Uncle Sam this is the god of capitalism and you start to threat him when you don't find money important when making money and all, when all that ain't important to you okay these capitalists have to do something to make it important to you again see black folk was losing faith in this capitalistic system around the late 60s and all that it was around the hippie movement time poor people were waking up of all colors and they were losing faith in money. You, do you hear me? Uncle Sam can't have the people losing faith in money. And God, we trust. They need you to trust the currency that governs this system. And when the people start losing trust in that, they got to recreate the currency. So what happened with the birth of hip hop? A new currency called credit cards. Go look it up, y'all. I did a timeline on it. All of this start to, you notice when the hippies rose up, we went to war and we had a reset with money and black people had a different, it was a reset. People of all colors was waking up saying, fuck religion and government. We worrying about our situation as poor people. Jesus been promising us wealth we ain't got and the government have to, the hippies was waking up, man. And they was, this was a group of people of all colors saying, hey, forget all religions and forget all government because it's divisive and it takes us to war and it only benefit rich people. The hippies said, look, we just going to smoke weed all day and our new value is natural spiritual systems, not cultural shit, but natural shit. A ask, answer this question. What God did the hippies worship? I'm going to wait. I'll wait. They didn't worship no deity. They, the hippie movement was about reconnecting with nature. Fuck deities and gods. And they couldn't have that. So right with the hippie movement, they came with the hippity hop movement, which was there to silence the true revolutionaries being the hippies. So what came about to silence the hippies was the hip hoppers talking about fight the power but that's what the hippies were saying don't you know that the people who came out of hip hop saying fight the power was being funded by the powers they was there to give you a culture because we was breaking free from the cultic deception remember cultural traditions what got us in trouble the hippie movement wasn't a traditional movement. It was a movement that made all of them people parents mad. The white po children was they parents was mad. What you doing out there with all them niggas out there singing kubaya, talking against America? And the white po child was telling that white daddy, look, the government don't care then about the niggas or the white folks, daddy. Why do we hate the black people when the government that promised them freedom promised us white people wealth don't you know in the 70s they added poor whites to the king Alfred plan y'all better wake the hell up 
Why did they do that? Because of the hippie movement. Poor white people was waking up. They had to do something, y'all, and they created hip hop to redivide and conquer us. And out of that hip hop movement, the hippie movement died and black and white people went back to war with each other because the fucking hip hoppers that they put out in the media rekindled the flames between the poor whites and poor blacks. In other words, the, the rappers didn't get poor people mad at rich folks because they was getting money from the, the rich Jews and the record labels. They, was, they sold a soul to these rich barons that funded the uh, rap game. The rapper's job was to make the poor people go back to war because the hippie job was to bring the poor people together. But the hip hop job was to bring them back apart and they won, they seceded. See, the hippie movement was coming up and it was a group of poor people of all colors saying fight the powers. They took that and gave it to the hip hop movement. But what the hip hop did was made us fight each other, not the powers. Ever since hip hop came to be, it's been hurtful to us, not helpful to us. It have rekindled so many beefs and so many young men died as a, look at what's happening today with it. What it morphed into the day. What, people rapping about how they shot up each other and stuff it's been it they they've been knowing what they was trying to do the hippie movement would have would have transformed into a group of people with a positive natural cause they had to stop that and come with the hip-hop movement remember the hippies was saying fuck money and fuck war it's about love and peace and when you go to talking like that you become a threat against uncle sam So the dudes in the top hats don't like it when folks start saying fuck money. Because remember now, money is how they bankrupt nations. If you don't accept their fiat currency, they ain't got no power over you. And that's what the hippies were saying. Fuck money and war and all that. The, the same families funding bo both sides of the war. And what did the hip hop come and tell you? A bunch of bullshit on to wear gold and Kangos and Adidas. While the hippie movement was telling you to create your own clothes. The hippies had was sewing their own little hippie clothes. They was they had their own clothing line as hippies. They was already talking about clothing lines before rappers. The hip hoppers didn't get clothing lines until later with Rockefeller and all that. But the hippie movement in the 60s already was making their own clothes for that cultural movement. Y'all, the hip hop movement really set us back, man. That's why these dudes started it. We had a whole music industry that was controlled by the people with the hippie movement. The hippies made their own earth-driven music, spiritual music, and they, it was valued among our own culture as hippies, meaning we didn't care about the famous goddamn artists that was in the world. We cared about the hippie artists that was singing about this spiritual shit. And because of that, you had hippies that became popular famous artists a lot of those artists uh, back in the day before hip hop that was speaking against the government came up out of the hippie movement but they became so famous because the music that a lot of those hippies was making was it was heartfelt and revolutionary and those became national hits and shit independent independent man before the fucking Jewish owned record labels started the hip hop labels and shit y'all don't see what happened a lot of black folks don't know what I'm teaching here 
because of the black narrative that's being put out there by the boule. Now check it out. I'm going to keep moving on with this so I can stay on track. Now, they added the King Afric plan is a literal government plan to exterminate black people, what we call black people over a few generations. And if we look around, we can see that they are indeed acting out this plan. So anybody think that this is a game, you in the wrong place. Go and block them if you're a moderator. This is not a game. The King Afric plan is real and the government call it Rex 84. And it is a plan to neutralize. Man, if you go read this plan, you will see I'm not making this up. But what they don't realize is in the 70s, in the late 60s or 70s, something like that, the government added Port Whites to that plan. And you know why they did it? Because of the hippie movement. Poor Whites was coming together with Poor Blacks, saying no more war. Make love and not war. Peace and love. The poor people was waking up saying, hey man, our only beef is with the rich. And what did the rich people do? They said, we got to do something about this because if we allow this hippie movement to go on for a generation, they going to overthrow us in the future. So when these folks saw the hippie movement coming to be, they started the hip hop movement, which was a fake form of fight the powers that was being funded by the powers. The sad part about it is the hip hop movement that they created to stop the hippie grassroots movement incorporated within it a new way of thinking and a new spiritual system that would secure these people's kingdom for a whole generation that they call the hip hop generation. Had they not done that, they would have had a generation of children that would have been saying fuck the government and fuck going to war all government would have crashed if that would have happened so they had to create the uh, hip hop movement to restore our faith with the government and with money and with currency and all of that with the system the rappers told you to fight the power through economic strategies getting your money right and that's the trick you can't fight the power using the system that they devised for you to be at the bottom in other words you can't out money the people who created the currency you can't fight this power right here with an economic strategy you're a damn fool if you think you can think about what I'm telling you these people who I'm showing on the screen gets power through spiritual systems. I just told you that. They show up with the Bible. Listen to me. How they take control over people's land and wealth is by giving those people foreign pagan spiritual systems that make those people willingly turn they shit over in return for blessings for this foreign God. So once you accept the God of a foreigner, everything that foreign God tell you to do is gonna benefit the goddamn foreigner, man. In other words, the, these Jews don't show up on your land telling you what to do. That's a lie. These Jews show up on your land telling you who to worship. And when they convince you who to worship, then that God tell your ass what to do. They never tell you what to do directly. They always say, God said do this. And you do it because we're spiritual people. They know that this is magic, man. They know that we don't respect the words of man. 
we only respect the commands of the creator so when man wants you to do something he just tell you God said do it that's easy that's easy that's all religion is is man telling you what to do by telling you God said it these Jews don't show up with big old armies and militaries and telling folks what to do bossing them around they show up with their small little families like pilgrims just like they show you this is the top hat that the pilgrims wore they show up to your nation in small families and next thing you know over time your children start changing and getting these new fucking music and new spiritual concepts and for you know it when it's time for your children inherit the land you die witnessing your children turn over their inheritance to the fucking foreigner and it only takes one generation it only takes one generation when the pilgrims showed up on the, on our ancestors land our ancestors couldn't be indoctrinated by the pilgrim but the children could because our children played with their children and that's when we got this whole new country the indian child started to complain and say hey why the chief got to be so hard on us the pilgrim daughter and son parents let them cuss in the house the pilgrims mama and daddy let them talk back to the parents the pilgrim mama and daddy let them do what they want to do because the pilgrim had a concept of being free and doing what thy will that's satanism no structure just chaos in the pilgrim's house and when the indian child saw that they said hey mama daddy you tripping when i go play at the pilgrim house i have more fun than when i come home to my bougie ass chief and goddesses and grandmothers y'all too strict what you think happened when that generation of indian grow up they change their ancestors rules and regulations and adopt the pilgrims freedom this is how the pilgrims work they get their children to sell their culture to your children and when your children go grow up that they become the pilgrims identity not they don't look nothing like the parents and forefathers no more they got earrings and they nose with chains hey let me show you some of these niggas watch this Watch this. Uh, what the fuck they sent me egg rolls for? <laughs> wow. Now that's that's a blooper for the show. But no, I'm just trying to give you an example of like, you know, think about this. This is a good example you can't tell the difference between a rock and roll artist or a rap artist today this dude is called post malone if you didn't know what kind of music he made you would say oh that's a heavy metal artist you would be wrong he's a very prominent trap rapper I didn't say hip-hop nigga I said trap yes this is how a trap rapper looks some of them a lot of them let me quit playing most of them okay check out what i'm telling you the the marriage between rock and roll hip-hop and devilish and satanism has been there ever since its origins that's why i'm showing you bambata with the devil horns and all that these young rappers ain't just start this satanism
So listen here now. This is what I'm saying. This dude Uzi Vert, right? Uh, if your grandmother saw him, she would have a culture shock. Why? Because she would say, well, that's kind of new. I never saw young black men dressed like rock and rollers because they from the pre-hip-hop era. When hip-hop came along, they start, that was a, a sort of reindoctrination of the pilgrim's spiritual system to a new degree for a new generation. All right? This is Christianity, people. The rock and roll culture. Remember, all of these guys throwing up the devil horn said they Christians. <laughs> but I just showed you Christ and the devil are the same. I showed you an image of Lucifer, man. Should I, do you want to see that again? These horns right here is Jesus on the cross. Let me show y'all some. Rock and roll culture is Christianity or resurrection culture, the rolling rock. This is Satanism. Check it out, right? Instead of them giving your grandmother the Baphomet to worship, what they do is they tell your grandmother she's worshiping the Lamb of God. But the Lamb of God is the Baphomet or Lucifer. And instead of them giving you the Baphomet horns, they give you Jesus' arms. Y'all get it? How does this relate to the boule? Well, let's go back to the thumbnail of the video and we'll take another commercial break. On this thumbnail that I have on the screen, I'm going to blow it up real quick. Sorry, that ain't what I'm looking for. Hold on. Go in here, here. Okay, let's move it. Wait a minute. There. Right. Now, on this thumbnail, right, the symbol of the boule is in the top left corner of this thumbnail. You can see Sigma Pi Phi on the column that is there. You say, what is that? That the, the symbol of the boule is the Sphinx of Egypt. Yes, people, that is the logo for the Sphinx of Egypt. In Samaria, their sphinxes have wings. They're called winged griffins. This is, was the concept of a new religion on earth where people started to worship the Baphomet. People started to worship the system of capitalism and money. The Baphomet is Uncle Sam. People started to worship the Jewish barons. The monopoly man, capitalism, money, the pharaohs, taxation, government. They started to believe in government officials and they stopped believing in each other. They started to believe in God and stopped believing in each other. They started to kill and turn on one another for money. And what was on the money? The face of the king. You see? The black narrative is about reselling this idea that black people's situation will be changed if we become more economic, corporate, and political. Actually, it's going to get worse. Go on and in incorporating yourself deeper into a system where got you at the bottom will never get you at the top of that system let's take a break
So like I was saying, corporatism is a religion altogether. Um, wearing a suit is for the dead man or the corpse man, if you understand fiat currency and fiat government, if you understand the concept of the straw man and the real person, you know what I'm talking about. Anything dealing with corp is dealing with dead dead something dead the corporate image is the same image of a dead man for example and why I'm bringing that up is to show y'all something when you join the church you say I'm going to put a suit on and I'm going to tide my money and hope that I get a blessing and when a person join corporate America let's just say they get into stocks they put a suit on and they put their money into different stocks hoping that one of them hit one day and they you know for example everything is a gamble in capitalism um and what we find as the people who who really become truly successful they don't gamble they cool with the people who made the slot machines if you get my example i'm gonna give you an example this way Everyone walking the casino is gambling and they hope they hit one day, right? They hope that. But what if I walked in that casino every day and won? People would be like, why are you so lucky? It's not that I'm lucky since I know the guy who owned the casino. They just let me win. It ain't what you know, it's who you know. And if I told y'all, hey man, all of this shit rigged up, I know the owner, so I'm gonna win every day, he ain't gonna let me lose. People will stop gambling at that casino because they'll say it ain't fair. You let you, all the money that we're putting into these machines, the casino owner is paying out the money to his friends and family instead of the true customers that's thinking they can get a jackpot that'll be messed up but that's what government is all of us pay into this system of Americanism that tell us if we do everything right we can be successful but when we look up you know the only people are successful uh, let me show you these kind your grandma, your aunties and uncles pay taxes into this system that tell them if they do everything the right way, they'll be successful. But then you look up and the people that do everything the wrong way got all the money and accolades. People that do everything the right way die old and broke, broke barely making it. You buy into this system of Americanism that tell you you can hit the jackpot as long as you do everything the right way. There's no reason why if you put money into it, America, you shouldn't double it or triple it and get the American dream back. So when most Americans put money into the system, but none of us get the American dream, it's like the, all of those people going into a casino, putting money into the slots, and none of them hit the jackpot. And they find out the only people that's been hitting the jackpot were the casino owners, friends, and homeboys. Yeah, the only people that's out there living the American dream are those that's cool and connected with royal families, brotherhoods, and government people. Everybody else suffering. Is who you know, not what you know. If you know the right folks, you can get them. That that's and they telling everybody, we all can achieve the dream. When they know the only people that the casino gonna pay out the jackpot to is his buddies. Y'all feeling me? The black narratives tell black people. The reason we never hit the jackpot generation after generation is because we ain't putting enough money into the slot machine. 
Where my sound effects at? I better say that one again. I'm sorry, family. I, I better say that one again with the effects, though. I said the, the black narrative and the narrative of the boule and the corporate niggas is to tell black folks the reason you're not hitting the jackpot generation out the generation is because you're not putting enough money into the slot machines. And that's one of them Homer Simpson moments, right? Cause ain't nobody put more shekels in this slot machine of America hoping to hit this American dream jackpot than the oppressed ones. We invested the most in and get the least out. While all of these rich folks, they invest nothing and get everything out of it. This system fails everyone that invests the most into it and it succeeds with everybody that invests nothing into it. And what we find is the, the people who benefit the most from this system are born into certain families and stuff like that. Bloodline. In other words, wealth is inherited, guys. You don't work for wealth. They lied to you all your life that if you work hard, you can be rich. And how hard you be you been working? I'm gonna ask you a question, are you rich yet? Some of you halfway in your life and you still working harder and you getting least richer. Cause it ain't how hard you work and what you do is who you know. It's a motherfucker out there that ain't never worked a day in their life that's a multi-millionaire just cause who they know. They show up once a week and give a speech and somebody give them five million dollars a year to do that. Just to say they got a job, really you just giving them the people money though. But since you just can't give away our tax money, they hire one of their buddies for a job where he may work one day out the week and make quadrup. That man work one day out the week and make more than what you're going to make in your whole lifetime. And you want to know what generational wealth, how it's taken from us? I'm showing you how. Your belief in this system going to inevitably keep you at the bottom. Just like your belief in Christ or Buddha will never put you on Christ or Buddha's level. Until you believe in yourself like you believe in Jesus, you will never be on Jesus' level. In other words, your belief in the God will never uh, put you on the level of that God. Likewise, your belief in government is why you have not created your own government. As long as you believe in this government, then you have no reason to create your own. The moment we stop believing in this fiat government that's ruling us is the moment we inevitably start to govern ourselves. If the people that govern you constant, constantly fails you, you got to ask yourself a question. Uh, is it by purpose and design? And then if, if we say yes to that, then are we so bent up on not governing ourselves that we will allow ourselves to be governed by people who fell us generation after generation because we too lazy to govern ourselves? Now, you won't fail yourself, but you will let somebody else fail you. Tell me where that makes sense at. See, and I'm going to tell you the psychology behind it. The psychology is if I don't fail myself, 
I don't have to live with the blame. The first thing people ask you when you tell them you don't, uh, the first thing they say to you when you tell them you don't vote, they say, well, if you don't vote, you can't blame nobody but yourself, which is the whole damn point, dog. I don't want to blame nobody else. I'm a man. Why would I want to blame anybody else but my damn self? See, and what do they tell you? They say, if you don't vote, you can't complain. News flash, I stopped voting because I was tired of complaining. Yeah. Duh. If you don't vote, you can't complain. Yeah, the people that vote, all they do is complain. Voting is your ticket to complain. You can get this ticket back. I'm tired of complaining. And then he drops the bomb. Right. If voting is my ticket to complain, you can have my votes and my complaints. See, it gives you somebody to blame. You can say, I'm not the reason that my ghetto look like shit. Trump is or Biden is. Take away the government is all your fault now. The reason we keep these people governing us, even though they fail us, is because we so pussy, we scared to fail ourselves. You scared to say, man, I'm the reason I fail. You don't mind failing. You just mind being the reason for the failure. And since you don't mind failing, you will let other people fail you just as long as you ain't the reason. So now you can say, well, yeah, we ain't got shit. And yeah, everything wrong with my life, but it's their fault. And if I take them out the picture, who can you blame then? And that right there is why black people want a government to be over them, but still complain about the shit. Y'all vote the most, but you say fuck the government the most. How does that make sense? That's a people that clearly want somebody to blame. I'm voting for the right to say it's his fault. That's why the first thing they tell you is people who don't vote can't complain. Yeah, we stopped voting because we tired of complaining. If you don't vote, you ain't got nobody to blame but yourself right like real men. We don't blame other people. So when you stop voting and playing that game, you'll grow up like the rest of us and realize that, hey, you can govern yourself. And the moment we start thinking like this on a massive level, we won't have no need to be governed by this small group of imposters who control us through the boule. Facts. All right, hold up a second. Let's get the screen prepared for the uh, next portion of the presentation. So give me a minute. I'm going to play, play a uh, little commercial break song, and I'm going to set the screen up for this last part of this uh, presentation, yo. So hold up, hold up.
let's get it. Let's wrap this thing up so I can let people call in for smoke or whatever because y'all know how I do it. I accept all callers and challenges. Why are people saying no sound? Y'all didn't hear the beats that I just played? Let me go back and check the screen. I think y'all trolling me now. Hold on. Let me do a audio check myself. See. Wow. Why wasn't y'all able to hear? The, so the whole while we took a commercial break we heard no sound huh let me see what's going on let me see what's going on we play a beat and see real quick man y'all all right so it's okay it just i missed my opportunity to showcase some of my beats that's all right. The, the next commercial break, we'll try not to let that happen again, but we ain't going to replay them and make y'all go through another break for that, so I just miss out on that one. But let's keep the keep let's wrap this on up. Hold on a second. So yeah, let's let's continue on, man, because it's still a lot of good stuff we want to go over, man. We're not we're definitely not done here yet. So I want to point out something to y'all about Luciferianism. We got to take the spookism out of it. Like all it is is the worship of money and luxury. That's what the devil worship. Excuse me. That's what the devil uh represents what they call secularism or worldly desires before we had those we had spiritual desires people people woke up every day they didn't glorify money they glorified what they were like being a human with a soul and tapping into the secrets of how awesome we are instead of tapping into the secrets on how to accumulate wealth, which is the foundation of new age religion. Did you hear what I said? What's gonna happen? You're gonna create a lot of wealthy people who are unhappy. We see that a lot of, we see a lot of wealthy people committing suicide. This mentality come from Egypt. Money is not that which will fulfill the longing of the soul. You can't replace that with material money. Money was created to try to replace that with that, but it never have. And we waking up to that now. When we try to replace money with the, the, the voids in our soul, when we try to fill the voids in our soul with money, we only feel our ego and when that happened, all it does is make us de deny the emptiness in our soul. Your soul have emptiness in it that only you can fulfill in the flesh by a relationship with the body. There is certain voids left in your soul since you was born because those can only be filled or fulfilled by the body. You're here in the flesh to manifest the will of your soul, not the will of Christ or the will of your OG 
or the will of your priest or your pastor or none or the will you know none of that and that right there is keeps us unfulfilled when you probably have millions in the bank but you ain't doing nothing you really want to do because if you want to keep your money you got to do what somebody else wants you to do See, uh, the thing about it is this, right? All gods of the world require tithing and offering in the form of currency. This is what links the gods in heaven to the governments on earth. Did y'all hear what I just said? The God, all of the gods in heaven recognizes man's currency and they accept debit or credit, nigga. <laughs> I'm literally not playing they had an ATM in one of the churches in Bama, nigga. God accepts debit and credit. And he accepts Bitcoin now too. God accepts all that, nigga. Yeah. God ain't turning down no currency. He accept the euro, the peso. God accept all shekels. God was arguing with a nigga the other day who died and went to heaven. And God told the nigga, you ain't been tithing. And the nigga said, God, I have been tithing. And God said, uh, I'm checking your receipts now You had a transaction via debit With a card ending 8864 last Sunday But what about this Sunday That nigga, that nigga said God I, pl I played in cryptocurrency And God said Nigga we ain't accepting crypto in heaven yet Send his ass to hell See what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, check this out, man. Y'all got to think about that. All gods accept earthly currency. So if the American dollar crashes and you show up and, and, and uh, think about this, right? How are folks going to tithe in the future? Digital currency, nigga. God accepts digital currency. Y'all better think about that. Heaven update its money machines with the government. I want to know what government official on earth keep the gods in heaven updated with our systems. What nigga on earth go up to heaven to let God know, hey, God, uh, we're going to be tithing in digital currency now, so you might want to set up your systems for that to receive those payments. <laughs> I'm just fucking with y'all, but it's something to think about. Think about it, man. All these gods accept all this different currency. from all they followers but none of them pay out at the rate that they followers pay out you bless the church more than it bless you and that's the rules of any casino that nigga you got to lose more times in my casino than you win or I'm gonna go out of motherfucking business do you feel me The moment you niggas show up praying and you start getting more blessings than the God you praising, then that God gonna become your enemy real quick. Because every time you tithe, you bless Christ. And the moment Christ equally blessed you, it's the moment y'all relationship gonna go south. You will never get from a God what you give. 
And the reason I'm bringing that up is to show you the the the, the whole boule religion that they got on our people that says we can gain our inheritance with a political approach. We need to get into an economic approach. We need more black businesses. Don't you know black people are so slow? We're still promoting the corporate image when corporate America is promoting the robot image. In other words, niggas in suits are not going to run corporations anymore. Robots are. Jobs in corporate America are going away like hotcakes. While niggas are telling you we need to be more corporate. We need more black men in corporate America. Well, shit, corporate America saying we need more machines and computers and AI in, in, in corporate America. I know you niggas like to walk around the, the, the downtown area with your briefcase on a mission for your, your massa, but them days are over having a corporate boss, you know, in corporate America. The corporations are replacing niggas with briefcases with robots. And boy, that's making a lot of niggas mad. You know, the whole concept, because that's what the boule is about. It's the dream is your nightmare. For them to keep the dream alive in you as a people, you got to always believe that you one step away from Jay-Z's bank account. I had that dream. I always believe, like, I know very soon I'm going to be rich because I'm a great rapper or I'm a great this or great that. And you think if I work hard enough, my greatness going to get recognized and I'm going to be where Jay-Z at. You know how many niggas who fired in Jay-Z that'll never make it out of Brooklyn? You really think the rappers that you know about are the best rappers the world got to offer? Don't, for every rapper you think is the greatest rapper dead or alive, it's a hundred rappers you never heard of that'll chop their head off in the rap battle, man. And the only reason they ain't make it because they didn't know the right people. Let's keep it real. I was in the game. Who you know matters. I saw niggas who made stupid whack songs get played on the radio every night because they goddamn label owner was some big Freemason who knew this person, knew that person. You got all of these talented groups in the hood never get radio play. And if they do, they got to get a nigga like $500 to spend their song one or two nights. And this whack ass nigga, they just got his shit on repeat. The boule controls the black narrative on YouTube or what we call black YouTube. And a lot of the arguing points that lead the community come straight from them. See, the crazy thing about it is black people do play a key role in the economy and trend setting and the hip hop culture do have some a lot of power in that area. But the, the crazy thing about it is um only a few people within this so-called culture set and control the trends. That's not true in Jewish culture. It's showing you that your culture is controlled. 
a culture that's given to you by foreigners will be remotely controlled by those said, said foreigners. It's still yours, but anything given to you that's yours can be controlled by the person that gave it to you. If they give you a culture and give you the leaders of that culture, the only thing you own is the culture, not the leaders, and that's the problem black people make because of the black narrative that's been sold. It's, it's got y'all misinformed. Did you hear what I said? They gave you a culture. You own that culture, but the trick they don't tell you is that that culture owns you. You embrace that culture, you, call, you own this black culture that's founded on hip hop, but it owns you. Because of it, you don't own yourself or your children. That culture owns them. You say you own this culture, man, hip hop own your children more than you. Your children more likely to do what their favorite rapper say than what you want them to do. Do you own this culture or do this culture own you? Because when you look at the parents, the fruit don't fall far from the tree. And the parents striving for the same shallow shit that the children striving for in a culture that puts us all on one level of thinking. Ain't no age uh, differences amongst maturity levels in, in, a, in a place like this. Because... What drives a person in a Babylonian culture is money, not wisdom, maturity, spiritual development. You don't have to develop mentally, spiritually. You don't have to mature. All you got to do is grow your money, not your maturity. You can stay a baby long as your money grow. Ain't that what we see in the world today? That people with a lot of money can act like little fucking children and get away with it. A, a celebrity with a lot of money can do something on a video and your mom and the mama or daddy will laugh and think it's cute. But if the child do it, the child will get punished. If Cardi B cuss out the lady in the store and at ghetto, the mama think it's cute. But when the daughter do it, she gets smacked. If the daughter start fucking niggas just for money, she'll face some kind of lashback from the mama, you fast hoe and all that. You gonna go live with the niggas. Y'all know I ain't lying. But the mama listen to that kind of music though that promote that. A rapper can go around the president and act like a fucking baby. A grown ass man can go around the president and act straight up like a goofy coon or a dumb ignorant just like they want you to portray yourself. And people will think it's cute. Like they will invite people like Glozell Green to the White House to do stupid corny stuff you know what I'm saying? And um, to them, they're, they're bringing our best out to show to the world. And you know that's not our best. The crazy thing about it is, if you went to the White House and started acting childish and all that in front of the president and then present yourself right, your mother would beat your ass when you got back home and y'all know I ain't lying. But an adult can do it. That's what I'm talking about. Like, this a hypocritical nation. What we sending the children mixed messages. 
We tell them we want them to grow up and be mature and upstanding and, you know, put a suit on and cover themselves with maturity. But you idolize the Cardi B's and the ratchetness too. You, the people that, that get rich in this nation, if you look around at the most successful people in, 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 in the Western world, they are in the entertainment industry and they act very childish. Like I said, in a Babylonian culture, people only respect money. So if your money is fully grown, you can be a damn baby and women will be trying to have sex with you because they don't see that you 17 years old they see you as a goddamn man with all of them racks in your pocket little nigga and trust me at 17 years old that nigga is not lying when he's rapping on that song when he said he can have sex with any of his friends mama they rap about it all the time. The little nigga tell you, if you keep playing with me, nigga, I will fuck your mama. Because he know your mama going to let him hit. It's sad, and you know your mama going to let him hit. <laughs> it's fucked up. It's not funny that we got this spiritual system of just respecting money like that, though. Y'all know I ain't lying. A 15-year-old millionaire can fuck your grandma right now. And I know folks gonna crucify me for that, but nigga, the rapper say it in the songs. And y'all bump it loud. And that's that's because and the reason it's true, it's because the we respect money more than anything. Money can cross boundaries that age would would prevent, maturity would prevent. I'm serious, man. Think about how deep this is. A dude who is ugly as hell without no money is not finna get no draws like that. But that same ugly dude with millions is now fine because you in a culture that sees money as the epitome of beauty and everything. There's no way you're ugly with money. And if you is ugly, guess what? None of the girls you have sex with going to tell you. They going to say you the most handsome man in the world. People going to lie to you with money. Your outfit can look like shit. But you think anybody around you going to tell you? Oh, nigga, that shit's the truth. See? Money only builds a heaven for a person on earth that's based on a lie a person with money think that they are respected when they're not if they lose the money they lose the respect when people respect money we don't respect people you only respect people with money I think we can probably drop a bomb there too. Now, all of this kind of thinking is the corporate capitalistic way of thinking. A people that's being told to work together cannot do so if they got to compete with each other every fucking day they wake up. Hello, can I get another bomb drop? Everything about the black narrative is hypocritical, isn't that right? See, because the only thing that some black power boule cat can come up here and say out that point that out is because you realize I got you cornered. How you going to promote unity among your people, right? When they got to compete with each other in a capitalist system. If black people want unity, we can't be capitalists. Let me drop another bomb. There's no way I'm going to help the person that I'm going to that I'm competing against get ahead. 
The idea of black unity yeah, it sounds great, don't it? But listen to black music. It's the epitome of capitalism. Every nigga competing with each other, even in your own family. Family members competing with each other. Niggas show up at the family reunion and it ain't got shit to do about the family. It's a big competition and ego fest at the family reunion. Who got the new house, new car, and a bunch of capitalistic shit that we care about because we're modern day Babylonians. I find it crazy that the root word of Babylon is baby and that's really what you are as an American. You're a baby because we never mature mentally. We don't, it's because we're not interested in growing our uh, spirit or growing our mind as interested as we are in growing the zeros in our bank account. And when you do that, you can have a bunch of rich people who act like babies. Ain't that's what we got. Just tell me when I lie now. All of these celebrities that act very immature and shit. Look at Trump, man. One of your billionaires. Prime example. You know what I'm saying? Even in the tech world. Multi-billionaire tech gurus that's up there throwing up the rock wings and talking about how gaming is going to change the world virtually and the technology we're trying to create is based on people who are at an immature spiritual level. We're creating technology that would allow us to achieve the American dream because the government couldn't do it in reality. Yes, I'm not making it up. The future technology is about creating virtual experience for humanity to where like I told you conscious uploading where you can be a famous rapper in another world remember how you used to joke with your friends and your friends say yeah man I'm gonna be rich one day and you be like yeah in another universe nigga and you be laughing like not in this world <laughs> well they actually manifesting it now to where you can live out your life in another world and you can have whatever life you want a, a millionaire, billionaire, or go back to nature or whatever. The possibilities are endless. So, a person can be whatever they want to be in the future, but that's another topic. The boule is, is priming us for this whole agenda that they getting us ready for. I'm talking about everybody is being primed for this agenda, but everyone are assigned their own overseers. And for black folks, that's who we call the boule. Um, the image of the boule is the sphinx. Let's do a little bit more uh, symbolism real quick while I'm just rambling, huh? Because the symbol for the boule is uh, the sphinx that I have up here. Let me put that back up because I'm going to show y'all something with that. Now, when you look at that sphinx, you notice I got the Baphomet down there with the five-pointed star. Check this out. The, the symbol for the boule, they sphinx got an urn right there. It's talking about the God of resurrection, the God of death, which is set or Jesus. That's what I'm telling you. That's what the urn represent. You feel me? The whole death concept surround this. The, the, the God is in all black. That's how you get the black Panther. And it's the God of death or resurrection. The Sphinx was a form of the Baphomet. That's what I'm about to teach you now. So watch this. Watch this real quick. Um, I want you to look at something. Now, this is the ancient symbol uh, of Sekhmet. The uh, Hathor. You, you find these uh, 
symbols all around Egypt and a lot of folks may wonder what they mean. And it's basically all revering the same system that the Egyptians, their spiritual system was based upon their government structure. They worship, like I said, nationalism, right? But check this out. Um, if you look at this, this symbol that we find in ancient Egypt, a lot of y'all might not know how to decode this, but it is the Baphomet, right? Here go the horns of the Baphomet. Here go the five-pointed star. And surrounding the Baphomet are the two thieves. Y'all don't really do symbolism like that, but I'm going to do something for you real quick, right? Watch this. Jesus with the two thieves around him, the whole scene makes a triangle. You see, if I draw outline Jesus on the cross, it'll be a triangle with an all seeing eye on it. Y'all don't do the sacred geometry. Jesus' cross is always taller than the two thieves. And the sacred geometry, if you draw the point, you'll get a triangle. And the sun is always above Jesus. So what you get is the all sin eye triangle. But y'all don't see how you're worshiping this capitalistic money system in a form of the Christianity, which is prosperity and tithing and blessing and all that old crap, which say seed sowing. That's the government game. That's taxation. The reason you pay taxes is because you partake in something called American dream. But what happens is you pay taxes for a better life, but you don't get the better life. Now you're getting played and that's what's happening. Because you don't understand how the system was intended to work and it's by design. People bought into the idea of government, which said everybody can be successful if we let a few people govern it we're going to tax everybody and we're going to use the money to create an equal opportunity for everybody to have this successful dream and the people who don't get it is because in this competition they weren't fit for survival that's how we get the concept of survival of the fittest Everybody put their money in and then we compete with each other to see who win the jackpot. Everybody who don't win become broke pro losers who they said not fit to survive. This is called a hunger games. Why do we buy into the hunger games? Hmm? So check this out. Why there's some people, a lot of people starving on earth? Because government is us gambling with our ancestors' inheritance. And when we lose in these hunger games, people die of starvation. This ain't a game now. It's very real. But it's a real game that affect you in real ways. Like I showed you the Monopoly man, right? Everybody put their money into the church plate. How many folks in that church gonna really get blessings that's worth a damn? People been tired and paying thousands to the church could have been putting their children through college. But they said, if I tie to Christ, that'll be better than college cause Christ will bless my child. And of course, Christ can bless my boy before Harvard can. What mama didn't know is that the money that they would have put to get the boy in Harvard would have connected him with the boule type motherfuckers that would have gave him all the blessings you get when you sell your soul to the devil. But is that what you want to do with your child? See, this is a cold world. People 
people waiting on the blessings the right way doing the right thing never get them and people who wake up and they realize damn everybody i see with money they not only belong to the church but they belong to the lodge the bible said you can't serve two masters so how is it that a lot of uh religious powerful people are also freemasons because they are not serving two masters the God of the Freemasons is the same God that your grandma worship. It's the God of money. And that's why I got this picture up here. Because in God we trust on your money. You got this same symbol of this all sin eye with the pyramid. And that's what they giving your grandma for cavalry. They said, see when your grandma see this, this where her success happens at. The resurrection made it possible for her to re for, for her to receive the blessings of Christ. Without the resurrection, the vault of heaven would never be open to pour out those blessings. But see, when your grandma see this, she think blessings. And that and when the people when the people in power see this, they think money. Because this is what's on the money. And what do your grandmother do with the money? She give it to the people in power. And empower the pastor, the bishop, the corporations. And she said Christ going to give her her blessings. But she's giving them their blessings. But it's the same God though. The same God that told your grandma to give them the money. It's the same God that told them how to take the money and how to pimp it up out of them. Ain't that a bitch? <laughs> Here go Jesus with his arms spread it and the two thieves around him. Open up your eyes, y'all. Ain't a lot of people like me that's really deciphering this shit. Jesus is the Baphomet. You see how they got the ropes of this necklace like that? For the horns of the Baphomet. Look at this shit. Baphomet horns. Look. Five pointed star with the horns, with the arms open. See, you don't know that this Baphomet got his arms just like Christ. Y'all don't see the 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 horns is the arms, and then you got a thief on each side. Look at here, this is Uncle Sam, five pointed star with the ding on goatee. Y'all don't even decipher. I'm telling you, y'all better learn how to decipher this shit. Did you hear what I just said? Then I just show you pictures of me, son, point his finger. You want to know why they point the finger like that? That's satanic. Before Uncle Sam, it was Satan wants you. Man, y'all think I'm lying. I'll show you the picture again. They all do the little point. And to be part of this shit, you got to have a beard or a goatee. We call it a goatee because of the goat wear it, man. It's the... This little point that you see them do with their hands, bro. Okay. That little point that you see them doing, man. That's what they're trying to do right here. That's what it's about. All of them. And look, I'm just telling you now, man. This Luciferian Masonic shit is prevalent out of the hip hop culture and up north. A lot of y'all don't know this stuff, man. Let's go back. I made a mistake and shut my Baphomet image. Yeah, man. These niggas ain't smart. They lean y'all straight to hell. And ain't nobody connected with the Zulu nation or Bambada mean you no good at all. I don't give a fuck who get mad. People are popular on YouTube because 
the boule control the goddamn narrative luciferans control the narrative africa bombarda still running this shit and y'all think people are really beefing with him they control the opposition folks his niggas online right now dissing the boule and the masons and bambata while working for him why because at the end of everything they say they lead you right back to this hip-hop culture and get in this capitalistic lut lut or shallow ass uh uh get your money way of thinking money over everything right and a nigga ain't gotta say it like that he can say, man, look, y'all online talking about flat earth. We need to be thinking economics. When a nigga say that, he's saying, fuck your soul, nigga, get money. That's the devil talking, dude. That's You get away from that. That's the devil, dude. You selling your soul by saying, I don't want to understand the secrets of myself, my mind, my soul. I'm going to spend my whole life chasing a dollar, ring books to show me how to increase my wealth, even though I'm already living better than most folks in the world. The average American who's saying they broke living better than the average human on earth. It's folks in the other world that go without food for days, man. Y'all be complaining saying you're broke and you eat every day. Our homeless people in America are living better than the average person in o overseas. They would fucking kill to be a homeless person in a, at a homeless shelter in America. That's how bad it is. And while we complaining, is greed is what drives the spirit of Americanism. Americans can never have enough. And it got to stop because America uses, did you know America uses 70% of all the resources in the world? Last time I checked, it was still 70% more than half one nation. How we use more resources than China and Africa? America is a beast that can't be, it's hungry and it can't be satisfied. Every nation in the world got an economy over here and they can't keep their products on the shelf long enough. Americans always want more. Everybody over here capitalizing off the American. And you think capitalism means that you supposed to be the one doing the capitalizing? You silly. You silly because you think capitalizing means you were going to be the capitalist. <laughs> let's, let's clap for that dummy who thought that, right? You thought capitalism was a system based upon you capitalizing off who? Or who? Because you ain't going to capitalize off the system of the government. you saying what? You're capitalizing off each other. And guess what? That's called self-predation. A system that predates on itself can't sustain itself. And you want to know why we're talking about sustainability issues. Go figure. Some people literally think capitalism means that, you know, that they get to be the capitalist, man. I really think that's funny, though. I, I'm not even. I just think, I just think the shit's hilarious. That, think about it, a group of capitalists came together and built the system for the people they built it for to capitalize off them? If a group of capitalists build a system of capitalism, it's for that group of capitalists to capitalize off the people they built the system for while they operate outside of said system. How many smart people in the building? 
This is what we're here for To wake our people up man Cause we don't understand We think we so smart you know But we really Americanize And that don't equate to smartness Just more indoctrination Let's uh Shit let's do this A group of capitalists built the system For a group of indigenous people In the 1700s The group of capitalists That built that system Had a plan to capitalize Off the group of people They built the system for But they had to tell the people that the system was built for them to capitalize. If the system of capitalism was built for us to be the capitalists, who would we be capitalizing off of in its conception? Come on, critical thinkers. Can you imagine George Washington who owned slaves trying to convince the slave that the system was built for the slave to capitalize. See, when this shit was first built, you was in shackles. So you didn't need a nigga like me to convince you that you weren't a capitalist. You were a victim of capitalization. Niggas got this fake illusion that they're capitalists today. While we fighting for fucking crumbs. And these folks uh, piss out millions and they do it, get, gain this shit with little effort. You niggas wake up every day and put on a suit and get a briefcase and walk around in tight shoes up and down the downtown area with corns on your feet, Dr. Shows and your Stacey Adams. And yeah, you're a six-figure nigga, which is pennies, man. Think about the average woman is striving to marry a six-figure nigga. But in the mind of the average successful uh, white man, especially in talking corporate America, six figures ain't even enough to cover the fucking utility bill at one of his businesses for the year. Like, think about what I'm telling you. The average corporate tycoon in white America pays an electric bill for just one or two of his skyscrapers. That's more than what the average successful black man makes a year. He paid his monthly so a black man in corporate America bring in six figures for the year and a white man in corporate America pay six figures a month just to keep the lights on for that nigga to have a fucking job and a fucking office. And all the black women striving to get the six figure nigga which is the brokest nigga in corporate America. We at the bottom and our Small way of thinking keeps us at the bottom. Whenever a black man think he can rise above the white man who created this system, that's when we know we're in trouble. The average black man in the corporate world ain't even earning half of what the average white man earning. This is a fact. But niggas still pushing for the corporatization of black people The belief in the system And black power Vote more and get into politics and economics The two pillars of Freemasonry that keep you trapped Politics and economics is why you ain't got generational wealth Because guess what? You can devise strategies based around politics and economics uh, 
for you to win in your enemy system. But the only thing them strategies going to manifest is a bunch of groups of sellouts. And that's what we got. Niggas who realize you can't out strategize the white man. You can only join them and work with them if you want to achieve the American dream. And when you look up at every nigga that's promising you a strategy about your struggle, the strategy didn't motherfucking work for him. He just met the right motherfuckers and sold his soul. Ain't no master or magic strategy. When you know it ain't what you know, it's who you know. If it ain't what you know, then keep all your strategies and point me to the man who cutting the check. So a little bit more symbolism. All this whole thing about Kematism, which is neo-paganism, this black culture, that ain't who we are. That's the culture that turns you into a Satanist. And the people who sell us this culture are the biggest leaders in the Luciferian church. All of your black leaders are black magicians for the Celtic people. They are working for the dudes who are magicians, y'all. All of your hip hop artists. All of your religious leaders, all of your activists out there, they all part of a Freemasonic Luciferian cabal. I'm sorry to bust your bubble. Why are they all telling you the same thing? All of your black leaders blaming you for your problems and telling you you need to get more into politics and economics. What you think the pastor been telling folks in the church? Faith without works, right? Faith without works. Meaning, the Christian is still told by the pastor, you ain't going to get your blessing if you don't work for it. Now listen, if a motherfucker told you, just say, now listen for a minute now. Just hear me out. If you went to buy a car and the dude at the car comp at the car lot said, listen, this particular car you want is $20,000. You can pay with money or you can work for us for a year and we'll give you the car. Because in that year you would make $20,000. So you're going to work for us for free. We ain't going to pay you which means you're going to have to get off one job and go to another job to pay you. You work in one job just for a car, right? Your work is equivalent to the money. They telling you, you can give us the 20,000 for the car and not work for us, or you can keep your 20,000 in your pocket and work for us for one year. And you can say, well, shit, the 20,000 I was going to spend on the car, I can use it to feed myself for a year since I'm going to be working for free. Same thing, right? The point is, if the people at the car lot told you that you got to work for the car and pay for it, you would say, hell no, that's a dang old ripoff, dude. That'll be a stupid deal. Wait a minute. I came to give you my money for a car and you telling me, yeah, nigga, give me your money and work for me for a year for free if you want this car. I'm leaving your car lot, dog. I'm going to go to the car lot that just let me buy the car and don't ask me for shit. You telling me if I give you the money, you're going to give me the car. Then when I show up to give you the money for the car, you say, wait, you got to work for me too. For free. That's slave. What the fuck? No. But that's what the church doing to you when they say faith without works. Why did they write that in there? Because a Christian is taught if they pay their tithes, they will receive their blessings. But if they tithe with faith in their hearts and have faith that the Lord is going to fulfill the promise, 
they'll receive a blessing. So it ain't enough to just tithe. If you tithing, but you don't believe Jesus going to give you the blessing, you ain't going to get the blessing, even though Jesus still get the money. That's written there because whenever you don't receive the blessing, they can just say you didn't have enough faith. But there's no tool to measure faith amounts, even though we got tools to measure money amounts. Hello, let me drop another motherfucking bomb on that when y'all don't hear me today. I'm cooking. Nigga, I'm cooking. The moment your blessing ain't there, the pastor can always say, well, you tithing. But how's your faith? Now there's no way you can see how much faith I got, but there's a way you can see how much money I'm tithing. One we can calculate, one we can't. Where's the game here? The game is if you telling me I can accomplish all things through faith. You can't also turn around and say faith without works is dead. On one hand, I can do it all with the faith of a mustard seed. But on the other hand, if I don't work with the faith, it don't happen. Wait a minute. You said faith alone would accomplish the greatest feats, just a little of faith. Now you're saying the same faith of a mustard seed that can move a mountain need labor to aid it I don't get that any God that needs the money out of my pocket and my goddamn labor for the blessing is like the car salesman that makes me pay for the car and work for it so if I'm giving you all of my money and all of my time that's why I perpetuate generational debt because both of those are what we call wealth. Time is money, money is time. You don't have time to start your own thing to free yourself and you don't have the resources to, to start it off with because you're giving it away. Those are the two things they take from you, money and time. How do they take them from you? These two pillars, money and time. Economics and politics. The politics of your religion and national value system robs you of all the free time you would need to believe in yourself. All of that time you would spend believing in yourself, you spend at a temple believing in some God to accomplish something that you could have been accomplished the moment you done it for yourself instead of waited with faith. Playing this little tithe game with Pastor Poke Chop. Well, Pastor, I've been in the church five years and I've been hoping for this and that to manifest and it ain't manifested. And pastors say, are you tithing? That's the first thing they're going to say, nigga, you giving me that money? Yeah, I'm tithing. Well, what about your faith? See, that's the game. You can't measure faith, nigga. Now, see, let me show you how fucked up it is. They're going to ask you, are you tithing? And if you say, yeah, they're going to say, are you giving 10%, which is a specific calculation on how much of your money God want. We can measure it, nigga. And if you say, yes, I'm giving God the specific amount he told me to deduct from my money. But God ain't giving me the specific amount of blessing in return. Why? And when you ask the pastor why, he say, because you ain't giving God the right amount of faith. The reason it turns into a faith talk, because we can't measure faith. Pastor can't. See, look. If you tell the pastor, I'm not tithing, he going to say, that's why you ain't getting your blessing. When really, when you start tithing, you giving your blessing away, which is your money that you need to invest in yourself. It's a damn game. You lose, lose. 
If you tell the pastor, I'm not tithing, he gonna say, that's why your blessings ain't manifesting. Now, when you start tithing, and you still ain't manifesting your blessings, he gonna say, are you tithing 10%? And if you say no, he gonna say, yeah, man, give some more money, it gotta be 10%, your blessings are manifest. So at this point, pastor is dealing with measurements and calculations, letting you specifically amount of how much it's gonna take to manifest your blessings. Ain't no argument with that, 10%, that's specific. He's telling you exactly the specific dollar amount it's going to cost you to manifest these blessings. Now, the moment you say, I'm paying that amount, but I ain't getting my blessings, you don't get your money back. You don't get a refund. You get victim blame. He say, your faith ain't strong enough. But how the fuck would he know that? The game is... Once you do everything God told you to do to get the blessing, if you don't get the blessing, we need something that we cannot calculate to make you do that indefinitely without the blessing. Put it this way. They know if you start tithing, and this ties into the whole boule and black agenda with these Luciferians. Watch this, because you got to understand the, how Satan be pimping. Check this out. Satan know the moment a Christian put their mo they money in that um, collection plate and they receive the blessing, guess what? That pastor just lost a church member. Y'all didn't listen. You, ain't, you don't get it, do you? Let me show you something. A person struggling and they going to a church where a pastor driving a Rolls Royce based upon them struggling. The reason they keep tithing is because they feel like the more they tithe, the, the more closer they get to that blessing. Now, pastor already got his blessing because they giving him the blessing, which is the money. They told that giving the money away will give them their blessing. Now, check this out. If every Christian in the church get the blessing that they tied for, that'll free them from the church, man. Because guess what? Everybody want to be a millionaire like pastor. That's what they tithing for. People think I can give God 10% and God going to give me what? Sevenfold like the Bible said. If I tithe my little 10%, eventually I'm going to be a millionaire. Now the amount of, if you, if you add up all the money that your family gave to the church, they could have been millionaires saving that, not tithing it. It's the same way a person live in Las Vegas and they say, I'm going to gamble 10% of my earnings every week in the casino because I may become a millionaire one day. Now, they can spend their whole life trying to hit the jackpot. And at the end of their life, guess what they're going to realize? They gave the casino the millions that they was trying to hit the jackpot for. Say I'm a tie, I'm a ten percent every Sunday. I'm a go gamble, and if I don't hit the jackpot, oh well, it's just ten percent. But you spend your whole life doing that, and you realize that you've been saving ten percent of your money for your whole life. You would have been a millionaire and retired quicker than most of your peers. If you add up the money that we put into the church, man, we're turning over generations of millionaires and just one pastor's family bloodline. Did you hear me? We give one pastor's bloodline, his family, one generation, 
10 years of generational wealth in just one generation. I remember certain services churches say we have a pastor say we having a $500 night. The Lord spoke to me. He said he need 50 people to donate $500 right now. I bet you 50 people cough up that 500. The Lord can't be a lie. The Lord can't be a lie. And that's the game. That's magic. They are going, people will be, they'll be like, how are we going to make the Lord right? This is a form of bullying. If the Lord told pastor for 50 people to donate 500, either pastor ain't really the man getting the word from God or God, or our God ain't real. And before we let any of them be true, Nigga, we'll just pay up the 500. Here, I got 500, man. That go one person. Yeah, hallelujah. Oh, we got another person. Now, everybody give it. We celebrate for, for them. That's going to make more people give it. You see, the Lord ain't orchestrate none of that. Pastor Greedy ass did it. Lord ain't told him shit. But see, this is what the boule do. They get these leaders out there to tell you we need this many people protesting over here, this many over there, and things going to get better for black people. It's the same thing. When you believe in these folks, it's a religion. Because your belief is garnered around social and political and economic uh, agendas. And our salvation ain't going to come from those two pillars of economics or politics. Ever since those two pillars came onto our land, the pilgrims politics and the pilgrims economy, we've been in debt. We've been slaves. So why do we keep think those two pillars gonna free us when those are the two fucking shackles of slavery? The enemy's economy and the enemy's uh, politics that, see, the economy of the goddamn pilgrim is barbaric. It ain't designed for nobody to win but the damn pilgrim. The political system of the pilgrim is what sells his barbaric economy to the willing victims, the ignorant victims who buy into the game. His political system is what scientifically and politically mathematically show you that the American dream is by numbers accessible to all people even though we know that's bullshit look at all these homeless folks right outside the White House Amer this system is not sustainable for us and that was by design now we gotta wake up and stop listening to the boule and the leaders that they put in at the forefront, the leaders are straight. And we got to control our own narrative on YouTube. They want you occupied with dating advice and man versus woman and all that while we're under a great reset and these folks about to reinvent what it means to be uh, economic, uh, successful in the economic world. Black people are always the Johnny come latelys of everything. Because while the corporate world is going into artificial intelligence, that's when niggas is having a big corporate awakening. Y'all niggas is late. The white man ain't even corporate no more. That nigga somewhere. Listen, let me tell you something. The corporate image is is go, the white man is going with a whole nother image think about this right the most powerful white men are mother think about it queen qu the most powerful white people look at how what they 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 wear religious garments the queen the prince the prime the, all of these folks wear robes and religious garb when you see the pope and the, the the king and the queen they wear robes and shit but what i'm telling you is the people who wore the suits 
were the constables of the king and queen. The masons invented the concept of the suit and tie and the top hat and all that. If you look at George Washington and all them, this was the early formation of the suit. The suit didn't exist as we know it. Let me show y'all some. The people who were wearing suits during George Washington time, if you saw that shit today, you would say them motherfuckers look like witches. Yeah, you would be right. It's warlock fashion. Watch this. Uh, hold on, I'm getting the slides ready. These, the earliest suits, you know, when you talk about corporate America, right? A corporate man in the 1700s looked it like this. But ain't this what the rappers look like? Let me show y'all something. Hold on a minute so you can see what I mean about the religion of corporatism. Hold on, let's do this real quick. Wait a minute. get the full image up there cool let's let's talk about it look at this the tight jeans and the big old jackets y'all don't see that it's the same babylonian fashion in our time let me show you some rappers dress trends you will see is tight jeans and big jackets. Long detective like jackets and shit like that. I got to show y'all this, right? So, cause we talking culture, spiritual system. People need to know that we are Satanists. We are Celtic people, for example, right? You think you're doing something new and trendy and cool. Like rappers go out and they dress like this. All of them got this feminine kind of garb. And, and guess what we're gonna do, right? All I did was put in rappers' fashion trends. Let's let's do it again. What I'm doing to my people is showing y'all the whole the, everything we do is socially engineered. These rappers ain't setting a trend. Social engineers are telling them what to go and make popular. And it's never new. It's them making us glorify their ancient uh, traditions and stuff. I'm going to show you what I mean, right? When you look at the rappers wearing like the suit coats or the long expensive jackets and shit, but with the tight jeans and all of that, that's what I'm talking about. Like, it's this same look. Y'all ain't going to tell me that I'm not hitting it on the head here, man. You just ain't open your eyes to Babylon. Check it out. Open your eyes. It's the same concept that we send all throughout the hip-hop world. To be a rock star. Think about how the pimps dress with the curly hair. Pull up a picture of a pimp. And you look at, at it, a pastor. Pastor Pope Chop always had them finger waves and uh, Jerry Curl juice dripping on that long ass suit coat. Yeah, Pastor Pope Chop suit coat go down to his knees. That was the shit in the church. The long suit coats, nigga. That's the big boy coat. See, y'all don't know nothing about that. But what I'm telling you is niggas wearing tights today and tight jeans and all what you see in hip hop. These are the founding fathers that they getting that from. 
people ain't got to uh, agree with what I'm saying, but I'm telling you, those with their eyes open see, let's see, rapper fashion trends. So you know what I mean, like tight ass jeans, but cape like coats and all that. The sacred geometry of this, guys, is what I'm telling you. This is the magic behind it of the reselling of the Celtic uh, spiritual system. Things don't change. They are renewed in generation after generation. Like we look at people in power and they all dress a certain way. They all do their hands a certain way. That's the timeless occult magic that they exercise. When I show you like me son doing certain hand gestures or certain, like why your rappers and spiritual leaders throwing up the same signs as the Masons and shit. Cause the spirituality of the world is Freemasonry. It's not a secret society. It's a secret spiritual system that we're all practicing in the form of our given religions. That's why the Masons don't care what religion you are, but you can't join if you're non-religious. Let me say that again. Did you know that? Only uh, requirement to being a Mason is that you believe in a God. Or basically if you have a religion if you and if your paradigm is in one of those circles around that G that I showed earlier you can join but if you're none religious nope you ain't gonna you gonna get blackballed and wonder why ain't nobody accepting you y'all get what I'm saying so I'm just showing y'all man like none we do is original everything we do is given to us via the boule so social engineers the whole concept of cape like jackets with the tight jeans and this is the new trend y'all ain't making it up a lot of young if you look at these young videos that's what it is now you know what i'm saying tight ass jeans but long and big cape like coats and shit though you know it's a clean look but we didn't originate it I'm showing you like it's Freemasonic we gotta get away from it but check this out though to show y'all some, some, some something else here so remember I was showing you how Jesus on, on, on the cross right it makes a triangle the sacred geometry it creates a triangle when you put them with the two thieves and all that I'm going to show y'all a picture of King James too if you open your eyes you can see like this symbolism is all around us where they said King James was a black man right watch this here's one of King James most famous pictures I'm going to see if y'all catch this Watch this. Now check this out, right? Now here go King James, right? Let let's just say we don't care if he black or white. I don't want to get into that. Or just look at the attire that they say he would have worn. Now, when they say King James was a black man, don't you know that the the that guy who they said was the black version of King James often concludes on being this dude, Papa Legba? They saying that this God represents uh one of the oldest religions in Africa, but it can't be that old because it's patriarchal it's it's the oldest patriarchal religion which means when africans stopped worshiping the goddess and they went to god-centered religions this would have been the first deity they would have had would have been this deity and the first book they would have had would have been 
uh, the uh, which Bible was that? The Septuagint Bible or something like that? The Gutenberg Bible, I know, yeah. But anyway, if you look at what I'm showing you with the garment, the top, the top hat and all black, that's Masonic. Y'all have not been opening your eyes. Look at here. Masons are witches and magicians. And they actually dress like that. The whole, the whole fact that they are magicians controlling society and you can see the stick, the, the little gavel is like the wand, right? The reason they carry that, the, the law system is how they exercise power and control. Through, remember the judge wear a long black robe, which was what King James would have wore, George Washington. This is how the old presidents dress too. It's Freemasonic. But now check this out, right? You don't see that these are magicians. That the way that, that all of them throwing up the same signs and shit with the black top hats wearing all black. And you wonder what's going on in the world. You can't quite figure it out, right? But the thing is this, like, they all dressing and revering the devil, which is here. This was the first form. And let me show you. You think I'm lying? Remember earlier I showed you a picture of Lucifer in the same pose as Jesus, and both of them call themselves the morning star. This God was called a God of the cross. And it was the first form of Christianity in Africa. And it was not a good God because today he will be more synonymous with the devil. But this show you that Christ and the devil are the same thing. That's what I'm telling you. Uh, Christ got a cross. So does this God. Look. Here's the cross of Papa Lekba. So it is a form of Jesus here in the ancient African world. But it, what it reveals to us is that a lot of people, people's version of, of Christ was who we call the devil. Remember, the devil give his followers blessings too. It don't matter. If you want blessings, you don't got to just go to Christ. You can go to the devil too. Now, if, if, if the purpose of serving these gods is for blessings and the devil will give you blessings too, then these gods are equal, one and the same damn near. They the same God to different people. Remember, Satanism use a Christian cross too. They just turn it upside down. So y'all all using the same cross. The Satan is and the Christians and they think they got a different God like a fool. Now check how deep this is, right? When you look at this God, Papa Lekba, which is the God of the black occult. Yep, Baron Semitic, that's the God of the Boule. He is the Sphinx, the, the Sphinx as well. He takes the form of, of different animals. He's a shape-shifting God, and I'm sh um, the Sphinx is one of his forms. Now listen. Here is King James, and look at the black top hat. Man, y'all ain't hearing me. Y'all don't even get it. You don't even see that the man got a devil trident on his shirt. This is Satanism. Y'all don't get it, though. You don't see that... This is devil worship with the trident on his chest. And you got to ask yourself, why ain't a king got a crown on? That's why I put the picture up because I knew a lot of y'all wasn't going to catch that. I say, I'm going to pull this picture up. They ain't going to get it, though. He's a king, folks. He represent the highest level of power a man can reach on earth. And he's not in a crown. Because true power is hidden. Kings been stopped walking around with big shiny crowns on. They let rappers do that to get robbed. 
Why this nigga here can walk right past you And he the one that got more money Than all them rappers put together Nobody will rob him This dude here Can walk through the Bronx and not get robbed A little broke rapper Gonna get robbed every time Why You got your crown on And true power is hidden Yeah the true kings Got on top hats Not crowns did I just teach you a lesson? It should have. Ignore the dude with the flashy crown and the chains on. He's a fake, fake power. The real kings ain't got on crowns, man. They got on top hats. They got on top hats. Look around for the niggas with the beards and the top hats. They all part of a cabal of Luciferians. They all worshippers of the Baphomet, Baron Semitic. That's what they call him, which Baron is a title. This guy is called a Baron, Baron Rothschild, Baron Rothschild. Okay. Papa Lekba is called Baron Samedi. That's his other name. Let me pull it up because y'all don't know what I'm talking about. This is the Monopoly man. You worship him. Look, here's the image of Baron Samedi. Don't it look like Christianity? Yes, black folks, the Masons are not lying to you when they say Christianity started in Africa with the black man and black woman. Us people in America, us colored people in America are not black people. The reason hip hop came along giving you the out of Africa theory with Africa Bambada and all the Baphomet worship with the horns and all of this shit here that they giving you with chemitism. It was to get you into Satanism. The fifth degree of Satanism is when the gods get mad. What I mean is we go back to the original form of Christ and it's this time of revelation. All of these gods are one and the same. Christ is the devil. What, see, people are cracking the code right now. They saying, listen, if God in heaven gives the devil permission to do evil, then they working together. And at that point, the devil and God don't got to hide no more. They can say, well, yeah, we are working together. And what the fuck you going to do about it now? You found it out. Now what you going to do? At that point, they don't got to fake it no more. They can openly work together and have a one world order, even though they divided us and had us choosing. Ain't that fucked up? Think about that. They got the whole world divided with good and evil. But when you get to heaven, good and evil work together. Ain't that fucked up? When you get to heaven, you're going to see the devil knocking on the door going and get permission to do evil. Then when the devil go back down to earth, the people down now divided good and evil having a war. But in heaven, good and evil is being authorized on earth. Y'all don't hear me, man. Listen, the same God in heaven that's allowing good to happen on earth is allowing bad to happen. But on the earth, there's a war between good and evil in heaven. Good and evil is working together Because the devil got to go up there To get authorization every time He want to do something bad Can you imagine Fighting a war against the devil On earth all your life Just to go to heaven And find out that all the evil You was fighting against God was permitting it Can you imagine When Job got to heaven Job saw the devil coming up there like, hold up, man, the devil here. And God was like, relax, Job. He's just coming to get permission to uh, make people sick and to rape children. 
Like you remember how he did you, Job? That'll make Job mad, right? You mean to tell me, God, all the things that went wrong in my life, you allowed the devil to do that? God going to say, yeah, I, I, evil got to come to me to get permission. God, you allowed my daughter to be raped. God going to tell that man, yeah, I allowed your son to be molested, your daughter to be raped. The devil had to get that authorized. And people going to be telling God, all that evil I was fighting on earth, God, it was because of you. And that's why the Bible said there are principalities of evil in high places and not low places. Ain't no power in, in, in hell. Remember, the devil got keys to the heavenly gates. He got to get in to go get permission to do evil. How does that tie into the boule? Because you don't understand that the black boule is supposed to be for you. Supposed to have a revolutionary agenda to free you from the powers that be. When actually they just an extension of the government. A group of niggas that's there to, say, to, to reinforce neo-paganism and the spirituality of capitalism. Let's take a look at the dress code of the boule. See because every time you pull up the boule guess what you get a bunch of niggas in corporate attire and corporate garb and what you're not realize this is the dress code of a goddamn magician the top hat and the suit why do your masons and boule members dress alike and why did goddamn King James, the devil, and all them dressed the same? Prince Hall and all them niggas. Why are your rappers dressing like that? Think about what I'm doing here. I'm showing you all of your modern rappers. These young boys don't even know why they dress like that with tight jeans and hats. These young rappers don't, they think this is their little young culture. And I'm showing y'all that this is gothic tradition. This shit is old. The young boys don't know that this is not some cool hip hop dress trend. Nigga, you ain't doing them but dressing how George Washington them dress. And the witches who control the world know that we're glorifying the image and the customs and traditions of their forefathers and don't even know it. We think we making the shit up. And they want you to think you setting the trend and you making it up like a fool. Because true power don't want the credit. True power just want the control. True power know if you think you doing it, then you more likely to do it than if you thought they were controlling you to do it. And that's why everybody act the same and everything is so trendy in Babylonian cultures. But the niggas with the top hats and the dark suits on are magicians, just like Uncle Sham. They are shams of the world. And all of these rappers, look, here go the five-pointed star right here in Kemet with the Baphomet horns. They worship, this whole spiritual system in, in Kemet was the worship of the devil, man. I ain't lying to you. I'm going to pull, pull it up for you now. Hold on. This is called a goat of Mendez. This is the image of, of basically what, what this goat of Mendez is. Let me shut this down. This is another form of the Baphomet by another name. See, they worship the Baphomet in Kemet. Now remember the dude who uh, founded the Satan church was called Anton Levi. He get his name from this right here, Levi Dale. Eliphas Levi Dale. You think it's a coincidence that the dude who founded the Satanic temple, his last name was Levi right here? Now check it out. An, 
another form of this deity was called a goat of Mendes in Egypt. You see here, they've been worshiping the Baphomet or Uncle Sam. When the Pharaoh had taxation and money, fiat currency, the spiritual system changed. The new religion was belief in the government officials and the new blessings was monetary. When, when, when the pharaohs created money, people didn't, you know, people didn't exchange things directly. They had a medium now to where if you wanted to give your friend a gift, you had to get the money first to get the gift. Where before money, you just get the gift and give it to the friend. No, I got to get the money, buy the gift and give it to the friend. It's a medium now. The thing is, what money did in Egypt, or in the world for that matter, was it put it divided the people with this medium that I'm describing. In order for us to do business with each other, we need money. And naturally, we have to do business because nature can't sustain, it, sustain itself if we don't interchange ideas and things and all of that. This natural system keep creates a, a natural economy where nobody really get rich everybody's economy just get more and more diverse meaning the more people we come in contact with the more items we're introduced to to trade with each other and there is no money that's just items we're swapping and wealth is meeting new people Because if I want something different in my economy, I got to come across a different, you know, group of people that do doing something we don't know about. This natural economy connected people together based upon them doing uh, different things. So in certain parts of the world, certain plants don't only grow there and they can only make certain spices there. And once it's rumored that there's a new spice you know, don't have in your land, it gave you a reason to travel. The same reasons we travel today, to try new food, to hear new music, and to trade different things of that nature, right? So it was no different back then, but when there was no money, there was no capitalistic motive for us to do anything other than connecting with each other. The most wealthiest places were the most diverse. If you get what I mean. In other words, nature had a natural reward system for us if you like connecting with people and being social. And they turned that to the internet today. Everyone got something to offer each other. And you can develop a natural economy on that. No one will get rich, but everyone will be helped because everybody got something the next one lacking. But if I can't give you, if, if your weakness is my strength and vice versa, and we can't interchange that to, to help empower each other because we got to get money and go to work first, that's the problem. A person say to themselves, man, okay, his weakness is my strengths. Why don't I lend my strengths to this man for his weakness? Because it didn't make me no money. And I ain't got time for that shit. You get it now? That's the capitalist mentality. Yeah, I can help all them people over there who can't read. Because I know how to read. And my strength can be their weakness. But why isn't nobody showing them how to read? Because, man, how much they paying to do that? You want me to do it for free? Really? 
You want me to help that person for free? <laughs> if ain't no money involved, I ain't helping them niggas. So once you introduce money, nobody help each other. We do the opposite. We compete with each other now. We hurt each other now, rob each other now. Because the natural economy, the only way you could have a success is you help each other and work together. All economies are based on diversity. And the only way you can achieve diversity in the natural world is if all of these different people had an economy that would unite them all. And the only economy that can do that is the natural one where ain't nobody capitalizing and getting over on another one. There's no way you're going to unite everybody in the world in a fucking economy where they all got to compete with each other. That's ass backwards. If the economy that drives the world is capitalist based, Everybody in the world going to be just what we are today. Trying to rob each other, bankrupt each other, hustle each other, get over on each other, praying off your ignorance and all that. Cutthroat. In the natural world without money, what would drive you wouldn't be a dollar. It will be a different experience. And how do we get different experiences? By traveling and going to different places where different people are doing different things other than what we were doing. And when we do that, we start to develop a natural economic system of trade. And if there's no money in between those people trading their ideologies and in, 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 in cultural tradition, traditions, then everything will be maintained in a natural spiritual system. Once you introduce money, you get rid of natural spirituality and natural economics. You introduce the corporate tycoon or what we call, what I call a Luciferian spirituality that the whole world under now. Uh, it's, it's hypocritical to teach us that the whole world can be unified in a system that makes us compete with each other. I think this symbolism in ancient Egypt is is very telling, man. Check it out. Remember the monoliths that showed up? Y'all don't understand rituals, man. Y'all don't understand that silver is dealing with the moon gods. Silver monoliths. Y'all don't understand why they call them monoliths. The root word is mon, dealing with the moon, all right? These monoliths being a triangle represent the birth of that ancient currency. The currency is changing. The silver monolith represent this great reset where they're bringing back, remember now, cometicism coming onto the scene uh, 50 years ago 60 years ago laid the foundation of black people accepting the, the new ageism of today all the black people that's in their 30s and 40s part of the hip hop generation we are so excited about alien talk and new technology and most of the people in the rap game love Elon Musk. Uh, it's something that goes hand in hand with hip hop culture and technology because in hip hop culture, you're not cool if you don't got the latest technology. And we live in a technocracy where technology rules this new age spiritual system which is based around Big Brother, the all saying I spying on you and Alexa, hip hop police. The rapper's been sold out working for them folks. 
Now you got motherfucking rappers promote Alexa and technology. A nigga that's promoting a trap house should not be promoting Alexa. You mean to tell me you got niggas in a trap house with Alexa? And she listening And you wanna know why you getting busted And the rappers are the hip They working for the hip hop police That they bitch about Niggas You know it's crazy man that Motherfuckers was screaming Fuck the police but yet it's police that's providing security off duty for your show. It's crazy, like a lot of folks saw these monoliths pop up and didn't realize the symbolism here. See, when the sun gets at a certain point in the sky, the sun gets directly above this triangle. And when the sun, for example, right? When the sun gets over this triangle and the sun gets in the middle of this triangle, y'all don't get what you looking at. Occultists know what they looking at. See, the open book represent the two pillars of Freemasonry. In the Bible, they call them the, you know, the two pillars of water that Moses, Boaz, and, and, and Joachim, the two pillars of Moses, right? Democrat, Republican, God, and devil. But you see the five-pointed star in between them. Why am I showing you that? Let's go and let's, let's do some research. This come from Egypt, y'all. Here's Egyptian symbolism, chemitism, which is neo-pagan. I'm trying to wake my people up. You think that you got the knowledge of self and that you all black powered up and that you smart, nigga, you a goddamn Satanist. You ain't practicing the spirituality of your ancestors. You're practicing the spirituality of their goddamn enemy. You can argue with me all you goddamn want to, but you can't argue with the facts I'm showing. Your ancestors didn't wear tight jeans and suit coats and top hats like magicians. Show me where they wore that. Show me where the old mechs are. Dressed like Jewish barons And if you can't show it to me Then answer this question Why the fuck most black people Worship Baron Samedi today Why are most of my black folks So influenced by hip hop culture And capitalism Politics and economics gov Are the two pillars that excite Activism in the black mind And it shouldn't be that way If the only time your music gains momentum is based around social and economic things, then none of your movements will never free you because your movements will never move you. Your movement will never move you to success from point A to point B. It's just motion. It's simply action. It doesn't get you to where you want to go, but it's motion, so it's a movement. And I got news for you. A nigga running in circles is still moving, but he ain't getting no goddamn where. And that's how your movements are orchestrated to keep you a hamster on a wheel. Activism doesn't mean success. Activists are not there to get you from point A to point B they just there to make sure you keep chasing your tail. They just there to keep you niggas in motion. It ain't there to get you from here to here. It's there to just make sure you keep moving in circles where you at. That's activism. Motion is not movement. Excuse me, I'm sorry, I said it wrong. 
Motion is not traveling. We think because we move, we went somewhere. I got news for you niggas. And move all day and turn your ass around in circles. And when you get done, you're going to sit your ass back down in the same seat you started at. And you are going to be tired as fuck. And you, you can fool yourself like you got somewhere. But all you did was go in more circles that your ancestors went in. And you became more exhausted than them because they went in 10 circles and you went in 100 because they told you you got to work 10 times harder. But your ancestors had to work 10 times harder and 10 times 10 is a nigga who turned 100 circles and ended up 10 times more exhausted than his forefathers but still ended up at the same destination. Nowhere. Let's move on. Let's move on. So you need to understand that I hope your eyes are opening up to this satanic religion that black folks been under. Because let me show you something, man. I put up this image of Run DMC. And it seems harmless, right? Adidas logos. They wearing all black. Big old chains on their neck. And black top hats. And you think, man, that's a new style that they created. You got to realize something. These were the first rappers in the game the first black people to do business with those rich white Jews. All right, let's pull up the picture of that because we want to keep it up to show you what I mean. Think about it. When hip hop first started, it was a bunch of rich white men, old white men who looked it like this guy. Think about it, right? I want y'all to try to think back with me because you went there, but I'm showing you how it went. When hip hop first started, you got to imagine a bunch of rich ass white Jewish barons dealing with poor black young men. We about to put you black niggas on, but in order for this shit to work, you got to be really down with this shit. The first hip hop artists were the first young black niggas that these Jewish barons allowed to be initiated into what they call black culture and I know what you thinking oh it's black cause it was the culture for black people that's a goddamn lie when hip hop came on the scene they didn't even call us black Americans yet check check when hip hop was conceived, there was no such thing as a black American. We were African American. And when hip hop was conceived, you had Zulu Nation, Africa, niggas going with the African theme. You know why? Prior to hip hop, the science books was priming us with the out of Africa theory. But niggas was not going to uh, turn on their grandmothers and grandfathers see they changed the science books with the with the creation of the hip hop culture they gave us the, the that new solar system and guess what else they gave us out of Africa theory our science curriculum in school didn't deal with human origins prior to a lot of like the 70s and all that shit that was something they let the church deal with cause the church tell you where everybody come from in the bible and the curriculum of the schools ain't really want to conflict with the church 
But in our generation, they started doing origins in school, conflicting with the church with Darwinism and saying how we Big Bangism and out of Africa. And people start looking for ways to see in their religion how could they find those claims that the scientists were making, these new claims of out of Africa and etc. And uh, no, lo and behold, you got the children of Israel and Egypt and all this stuff because these concepts were new. They were bringing old mythologies into modern times. You get what I'm saying? Like, what you need to realize is this. People never use the Bible to prove that we all come from out of Africa. When they gave birth to the out of Africa theory uh, with the hip hop generation and all that, that led to a new spiritual system amongst all the world religions they went to a new degree of Satanism why brother Sanchez because that led to this generation tying in the original African traditions of Satanism to the modern uh, religions that was given to your grandmothers and mothers that's why how we end up where we are today with all of these deep thinking niggas who left the church but now they giving you Baphomet shit what I'm telling you is this right here right um, all of the world religions are getting a makeover now and the makeover is just about complete this new age religion all of these religions that they use to divide people they now want to use these same religions to unite people so there's no more religious wars right now it's a pandemic when they say pandemic you're talking about the god pan who manifests during times of pandemonium because remember what who pan is pan is the baphomet and around the baphomet are all the world religions so if you think of the masonic square and compass the baphomet is that g in the middle and he controlled all of them ideologies that keep the people divided in pandemonium pan do that got them panicking and all that so when you hear the world governments talk about pandemonium they shutting the temples and all that down worldwide because now this is the time the goat god Pan is manifested during the biggest times of pandemonium. Think about it. Think about it. Without worldwide pandemic, is divide and conquer as usual. Different nations killing their poor people by sending them to war, but they fun in both sides population control kill each other right but when they want you to stop killing each other and unite the same religions they use to make you blow each other up they use them to bring you together and how do they do it everyone's government tell them that everyone come from Africa they only started doing that a few years ago and they laid the foundation for the new age religions of today y'all don't get it that's the fifth degree of satanism when all of the religions of the world has been in chaos perpetuate the chaos consciously now everybody wising up realizing gov all the governments working together that all the religions have got the same agenda and why are we realizing that they shutting the churches down why because you waking up digger why are you realizing that all the government's been working together well they just working together now right in front of your face and the excuse is well it's a pandemic we got to stop killing each other now and help each other you see so 
the same religions that kept us killing each other in war for the past 7,000 years now got us united for their agenda, which is more evil than anyone, anyone previously. So now let's just check, check this out right here. Look, see, why do all of the powerful men dress the same, throw up the same symbols, and etc. Crossing of why do all of them do the same hand signs, crossing the hands like I showed you with me, son? They dress the same, move the same, act the same. Look at this, you see. What is it? Most folks think it's just trendy, it's fashion. You don't look much into it. But people, this ain't a game. This is how the occult people communicate and when you see white people doing it black people doing it and all that this is Roland Martin at the boule party you know he's a member of the boule all of your fraternities soror and like I said these people control the black narrative consensus rule today wherever people see them the crowds at they think that whatever's being said on that platform is something they need to put vested interest in and what is it all go around YouTube y'all and you're gonna see the most popular black YouTube people in this country's community are approaching black people's salvation from a social political or economic standpoint people like Roland Martin uh, your Tariq Nasheeds, the black authorities I'm not down talking to them I'm saying that the economic and political approach is is all part of the agenda man we know that we 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 hurt ourselves when we do that them the two pillars of Freemasonry that keep us in a downward spiral of of generational debt and just suffering and struggling think about what I'm telling you you need two legs to walk and how we move as a people is we need two foundative pillars to base our movement off of. You feel me? You need two principles just to, for example, right? You say, my whole movement gonna be based around uh, Teaching people how to live comfortable lives through finance, right? Which would be economics. And you say, look, I'ma also teach them why that's important. And that's the politics part. So I'ma teach you what to do to achieve the American dream. That's the economic advice. But then I'ma also teach you why this system is best for you that's the political part so I'm going to teach you how to be a good capitalist but I'm going to also teach you why capitalism is better than everything else that's the economic and p political part of it the politics of it is to c constantly convince you that the system is good and it, it c ain't nothing better than capitalism right let a capitalist tell it but when you hear the but the people who selling that are not the majority of a capitalist nation. The majority of the people in the capitalist nation are poor folks who's bitching about the system. But the, those majority don't control the media. So every time you cut the TV on, you only going to see the small minority and the rich people saying America is great. Capitalism is great. And the rest of the world think that that's the reality here in America and everybody want to come to America. When the people in America is saying, man, we ain't saw the American dream yet and we grew up here. And y'all think y'all going to move here and get the American dream that we've been seeking for generations. And they think that because the few rich people in America is, is, is keeping that dream alive that hey all of us Americans are living like the guys you see in this room you see what I'm saying and they put this small few up there to keep the, they can't let them know that America is not a dream it's a scheme the small few people who hit the jackpot they cool with the casino owner 
but they got to convince the billions of peasants who can't seem to hit the jackpot, but they putting all their money into it. They got to con- wake up every day and convince them you ain't putting enough money into the machine. You need to get more invested into politics. Wow. Wow, man. Whew. That's cold. Can you imagine a man who who put millions into a slot machine to become a millionaire and the, the casino owner tell him, look, man, stop gambling at my casino. Oh, I'm going to show you your tab, bro. In 10 years, you gambled away a million plus dollars at my casino trying to become a millionaire overnight. When you could have became a millionaire like all the other rich people over time and years. None of them people, the Rothschilds or Rockefellers, came a millionaire overnight. It was through years of conquest strategizing and deception. And then they fool you, you can do it overnight. Or American dream, right? You feel me? So The casino owner got to get up every day and convince everybody that it's fair, man. My shit ain't rigged up. And the people that's winning in my casino, I don't know them. Them are not my friends. Everybody getting a fair shot. But it's a lie. Everybody successful in America are connected and in cahoots with the cabal. We're looking at it now. All of them are Luciferians who worship the Sphinx and the Baphomet. Everybody with money in this land worship the God of money, being that all seeing eye, that pyramid with the all seeing eye. That's what's on your money. If you want more money in your pocket, you got to worship the God that's on that money. That's the trick. And that's when you end up a boule nigga like Roland Martin, a sellout, a Satanist. Next time you look at the money, pay attention to the eye. You'll see that it's a reptilian eye. It's a dragon eye. It's the devil's eye. It got scales for skin and the money is green. Go look it up. That's King motherfucking Cooper. Now let's keep on uh, moving on along here. Yeah, these guys are magicians. Let me show you how deep it is, man. This is what y'all ought to think about. You think it's a coincidence that King James and Run DMC got the same costume on? Or did I just blow your mind? You didn't notice that till I did that to you. That's called third eye awakening. Let me cut the screen off and mind fuck you some more. You don't even realize what I just did, do you? Y'all don't even see that. You don't see what I'm showing you, do you? Let me show you again. Here is King James, y'all. Here is Run DMC, y'all. How many of your third eyes open out there? How many of y'all can see that all of the niggas I'm showing now are dressed the same? And you thought black culture was yours. Nigga, you a Celtic witch. All of you niggas that's been bit by hip-hop culture and Zulu nation and black culture... You don't know, nigga, that we became motherfucking Satanists. And we went to the fifth degree of our oppressor spiritual system. What came out of hip-hop? Niggas killing each other, robbing each other. Nigga, I wish hip-hop never was here. It, 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 hip-hop robbed me of so many years of my life when I was chasing a fucking record deal that I cannot get back. How many niggas can relate, man? Saturn is the god of time. He dare to rob you of your youth and your energy. How many black men know that, nigga, we should have a lawsuit on the hip-hop industry? Nigga, I'm telling you right now. It's niggas in their 50s still chasing a record deal. It's sad what this culture done to us.
yeah, I'm good, but it ain't about being a good rapper. It's about being a good occultist if you want a record deal. They don't sign the best rappers. They sign the best witches. Now listen to me. Y'all been looking at images like this all your life, but your third eye wasn't open, and you didn't know that you was looking at witches. You thought you were looking at MCs. But now I'm showing you, you're looking at witches who are dressed just like their forefathers. Look, y'all don't find it strange that the Jewish barons who run the world dress just like the Monopoly man who control the board and that they all dressed like King James, the man who name is written on the modern indoctrination the new age form of demonism under Christianity and Christ you don't realize that King James got on all black and King James have a devil pitchfork on his chest with a top hat and a chain on and you don't see the symbolism behind run DMC with the Adidas logo and everything. You think it's a coincidence that King James rocking a damn Adidas symbol too in the form of his necklace and his buttons on his shirt, it comes out to equal a fucking devil pitchfork or an Adidas symbol. And you don't find it strange that he rocking his damn garb the exact same way as Run DMC and I keep showing y'all these parallels of modern young rappers with the tight jeans and the long coats. And I and, and you don't realize that the whole thing about tight jeans and long coats that the young rappers into today is old Celtic garb. The Boston, the niggas who started the American colonies starting in Boston were Celtic, Boston Celtics, Celtics. It's like St. Patrick. They were magicians. Their color was green. So what color is American money? Green. It's in reverence of the Celtic tradition. Wake the fuck up. I'm trying to set you free. Money ain't green in nowhere but America. The American dollar is the only green currency. When you say money green, people referring to the U.S. dollar and no other currency. When you ever say money green, that's the U.S. dollar, man. Or the same color St. Patrick wore. So if you look at a leprechaun, a leprechaun is a short man with a top hat with a bunch of coins. What the hell do you think this is? A leprechaun. These are the warlocks that control the world and they grant the wishes. See, the leprechaun was a wish master. He can fulfill your fantasies on this world in return of your soul. That's the folklore of the leprechaun, that the leprechaun would grant your wishes, but he was a con artist because the, the soul was what he got in return and that's what these guys do. They control nations by controlling men who selling their souls. And they got us worshiping them and dressing like them and thinking like them. And we don't know it. We think it's just trendy to wear tight jeans and long coats like the, the rappers doing today. You think it look and, and who told you it looked good? Who defined what looks good? the people who control your, your, your world, your nation. So of course they gonna tell you this looks good because they're idolizing their damn masters. You see, think about this now. When hip hop came to be, you had a bunch of poor black young guys 
making uh, 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 corporate friendships and partnerships with old billionaire white men. It was a weird relationship. You got to understand that these old white Jews had to develop a system to ensure that they could trust these young niggas. And that became the whole concept of contracts and selling out. And if you ain't doing what you're told, you're going to die. It's a brotherhood now. It's, it's controlled mafioso style, so to speak. Now check it out. When these young black men in New York started to become sellouts and sign the first deals with these old white Jews who ran them labels, those old white men uh, basically told them, y'all going to be the gods of this new culture. It, these children that's born out of this generation gonna be called a hip hop generation and y'all are gonna be the fathers of hip hop which mean they are gonna be your children do y'all understand what I'm saying hip hop was a religion and the fathers of that religion are called fathers because everyone that adopted that system are the children in it so the hip hop culture was a culture to reinforce capitalism and baronism in black minds or colored people minds of America in the mind of the nigga, the naga of America. We were losing faith in this system. And what changed that was hip hop. Black folks was giving up on the American dream then came hip hop that showed them some rich niggas and that sparked it back up black people now had a rekindling of their American dream why think about it man prior to hip hop black folks was revolting rebelling protesting tearing up the ghettos and losing faith in this system Hip hop came at a very hellish time in black America when we were basically about to flip shit upside down because we weren't being treated fairly. Then come hip hop making us docile again and got us back dancing, shaking our ass and thinking now we can be ballers again. Think about it. Prior to hip hop, you didn't have a concept of a black man saying, Nigga, I'm a hustle hard and I'm a get on. Prior to hip hop, you had a black man saying, Nigga, I've tried everything and my ancestors tried everything. Now we got to be willing to die to fight to take back our land because this system ain't going to work. That's what we were saying before hip hop. When they saw us talking like that, they said, oh, man, we got to restore them niggas' faith in capitalism. So they got a few poor niggas out the ghetto, gave them a few millions in chains and jewelry, and that kept a whole other generation from flipping shit upside down. The hip-hop generation, if they wouldn't have started hip-hop, that generation was going to be the generation that was going to fuck them up. They know it. So what hip hop did was it prevented a whole generation from rebelling. And where we were about to rebel, we stopped. The fire stopped and the protesting stopped and the break dancing began. Did you hear me? That's what hip hop did. It stopped niggas from being warriors and soldiers because they now wanted to be break dancers and rappers. It, it stopped niggas from fighting the power because they now wanted to make songs that say fight the power versus actually fight the power. Y'all don't hear me. Your revolution became televised and because it was televised, it was never manifested. When your revolution became televised and corporatized, 
any hopes of it being manifested was lost. It takes soldiers and warriors to manifest revolutions. Hip hop gave birth to a generation of rappers and wannabe rappers, niggas that chased the record deal all their life. Most black men born in the hip hop era, over half of us spent years of our life invested in this shit. You put more in the hip hop culture than it gave back. It, this culture have predated on us. The hip hop culture have took more from our communities than it put in. And it has transformed us as a people. Yeah, but did it do it for the good or for the worse? I would say for the worse. Before hip hop, you had stand up black men and women who was willing to die for their oppression. After hip hop, you had the, the rise of the bad bitch and the boss nigga. You had this new spiritual system that said, nigga, if you broke, it's your fault. You ain't hustling hard enough. This bought the oppressor time. Everything that hip hoppers brought up, it favored these white old Jewish barons. Niggas was about to start going up to these old white men and putting the pressure on them. Black people had woke up and realized these deceivers who control in the world. And when that happened, these niggas came to young black men and gave them record deals and a hip hop industry. And in that industry, the oppressor basically paid you for your soul, for your cooperation, and to idolize your oppressor again. Remember, they gave us the Bible which is black people worshiping their oppressor. But the thing is, our generation wasn't having that shit. We left the church. The Bible didn't work for us. So they had to come with hip hop, which was the new religion. But it did the same thing to us that the Bible did to our grandmothers and grandfathers. It made us seek blessings and believe in the system. That's what the church did. The blessings that your grandmother and them was praying for, they weren't waiting on Christ to deliver them. They was waiting on a promotion from their boss, which was a corporate blessing. Why do Christ promise people blessings in a form of corporate shit like money which is a corporate thing did you know that nothing is natural or spiritual about currency money is corporate but when people say they want a blessing the people who control money which is a corporate instrument ain't waiting on Christ to show up with a bag of money they waiting on a corporate entity to give them that corporate blessing they waiting on a boss to promote them right they're waiting on this it's gonna be something corporate that manifests that blessing man ain't no way around it so these gods govern the corporate world and these gods exist as a corpse the corporations deal with us with the dead man law and the re corporate America is a religion by itself which is the belief of the dead man. For you to be a corporate tycoon, you have to embrace the straw man, which is the dead man. Ain't no power in that. And whenever you embracing a dead man, you're going to be a damn slave and servant. Look at the people in the church. They embrace a dead man named Christ. If you believe on dead men for success in a corporate system, you're going to always be at the bottom. The people that run the world believe in the living God. They call it the living and true God. But they indoctrinate you with the dead God. You get the death story. Think about it. If Jesus represents life, why do you wear a cross on your neck to represent death? If your God truly represent life, 
then your symbol should be an open tomb and not a cross. The cross represents Jesus' death. The open tomb represents the resurrection. So if you serving the God of the resurrection, why are you rocking a damn cross and not an open tomb? Facts. Because the people who serve in the true and living God, they symbol is the vesica Pisces or the satanic symbols, which is the open tomb. Yes, I'm not making this up. I can show it to you right now. Let me show you what I mean. Here's Jesus' open tomb. But did you know that this is like an old ass satanic symbol? They turned it into the master card today. Look, it's called a master card because it gives you access. That was the, remember, it makes you a master. In Freemasonry, they teach that going through the initiation of life and death ritual is what initiates you into mastery, right? It's your card into the brotherhood among the masters, the resurrected masters, the ascended masters. Ascended because Jesus ascended. But if you look at the MasterCard logo, the reason they call it the MasterCard because the logo represents Jesus. Jesus is, their mas is the master of this new age. Let me show you, look. Jesus is the diamond representative of that diamond in the middle. You see, the vesica Pisces is how we get the Jesus fish. Jesus is the master, and the master card is none other than the open tomb. Because the open tomb is what? That's what the master ascended out of. In Freemasonry, you ain't no ascended master. If you if you ain't go through the whole life and death, the resurrection shit. So you got to be born again to ascend to the rank of the masters. So. In, in hip hop, what happens is. They start off. Like, like, think about what I'm telling you, right? When young black poor kids in the Bronx started selling their soul to old white leprechauns and warlocks, hip hop was born. And what the old white Jewish barons did was create a spiritual system that made uh, that generation worship them because we was losing faith in these in the capitalist system of monopoly and think about it this whole capitalist system was created by Jewish barons they created these systems all around the world and they bankrupt people with these systems but you may say well how do people allow them to do that because people accept the, the spiritual system that they offer but people don't understand how accepting the spiritual system will once put it this way when the pilgrims show up to your land with the top hat on your forefathers adopt a spiritual system and because of that in one generation the children of those forefathers inherit the economy of those folks y'all don't get what I'm saying like this is how they give us their spiritual system and we give them our land and all of that because what happens is once we start adopting the pilgrim spiritual system we want to fully assimilate into the pilgrim's culture think about it 
the Indians may have had their own currency. But when they adopted the pilgrim spiritual system, you know what the pilgrims told them? My God don't accept y'all money because your money got the face of your chief on it. Our money got our God's face on it. How do the pilgrim get the Indian to work for him? Remember, the Indian got his own money and economy. Why would he give it up to be a slave in the pilgrim's economy? Because the pilgrim told the Indian, my God don't recognize your money. If you want, see, once they indoctrinate you with the spiritual system, everything you own is going to be given up in a generation. Because your forefather is going to be told, in order for you to please our God, you have to earn our currency because our God requires tithes and offerings. And our God don't accept foreign currency. So the Indian abandoned his own native currency and abandoned any work or labor he was doing to build his own kingdom. And that's why you see these ancient temples all around the world ruined and abandoned because those people children went to go work for the pilgrims money we abandoned our money our banking systems our natural systems for a pagan or foreign system and they God don't accept your money they God only accept their money and the only way you can get their money is to work for them which is another way of saying nigga be my slave So why did the Indians stop working for themselves and start working for the pilgrim? Because they had to earn the pilgrim's money. This placed more value on the pilgrim's money than anybody else's money in the world, y'all. And you want to know how these folks go around bankrupting nations? It start with the religion. We give the money value. And what you don't know is their money is their God. And once they get you to value their God, you will value their money above your ancestors' currency or whatever trade systems or economic systems your ancestors had. You will abandon that for capitalism. And we see this colonialism going on even today. Even today. People are abandoning systems that have not failed them. I'm going to give you a prime example. The pygmy people have been practicing a natural system of governing their trade and their people for millions of years. And it has served them well. But in the past couple of years, the pygmy people have been trading their system to be capitalists and Muslims now and now they becoming in debt just like us I'm not making it up the pick me today are becoming Muslims who are in debt to governments and we're watching it happen in our generation we seeing how it happened why because everyone want to try something new and when you think the grass is greener, you're getting into the worship of St. Patrick. Green grass is a four-leaf clover of the leprechaun. The grass ain't greener on the other side. You thought the grass was greener and you started worshiping that Celtic god of the green leprechaun and his dang on four-leaf clover his paper dollar you had a system that served you well why did you trade it people like to try new things but whenever people like to try new things remember the new world order is a new thing yep when niggas wanted to try something new they gave you something new nigga it's called a new world order are you happy yeah you like new shit though 
if the old shit still work, why trade it? Well, cause it's new. This one was new. That's your only reason. Cause it's new. You want to know why we don't serve our ancestors and we don't practice our old spiritual systems? Because it ain't new, nigga. And they got you brainwashed with niggas like new shit. They even got a new car scent you can spray on, nigga. Niggas like new shoes, new this, new that. We got the biggest motherfucking divorce rate in the world because we got a culture that tells us the grass is always greener. A culture of Anubis, newness, which is a false ass reality. Niggas always want a new woman. You can't fucking keep a family because new, 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 new. Ain't nothing wrong with the woman you got, man. I just want a new one. She getting old. I'm tired of looking at her. And a culture like that will never be sustainable because you're going to always think the grass is greener. Somebody can sway you anyway. And that's what the boule do. So look at here, man. This guy right here. These people who run the world, these Jewish barons, created the hip-hop and black narrative to keep you a slave and you accepted it. You don't know how dangerous hip-hop was to us spiritually, economically, you name it, man. It stopped us, man. We were waking up and we were starting to be soldiers that was going to rebel. And they stopped the... Uh, think about it if it wasn't for hip hop you would have had a soldier generation not a hip hop generation the hip hop generation is a whole generation of niggas who were seeking motherfucking record deals I'm not making it up or being dope dealers you know quick economic success and pros like the past the prosperity pastors so this blessing tonight and you're going to get a million dollars next year. The whole concept of not only thinking you're going to achieve the American dream, but with this new way of thinking, you can achieve it quicker. That's true, but only a few people going to achieve it. Look, they selling you this image of a Jay-Z who sold dope he had to do what he had to do, but he got rich quick and look at him today. And your children look at that. This system don't tell you it's a wrong or a right way. They just say get rich or die trying. Most people going to die trying. But why do most of the world die trying? Because the few people that get rich keep selling us the dream. Just like the few people that hit the jackpot in the casino Gonna always tell the billions of people who didn't hit It ain't the casino fault Keep on gambling and you can hit like me But what if you find out the people who's selling you that dream Are only hitting the jackpot Because they cool with the casino That is your sellout boule niggas Black people ain't winning because we ain't doing right. We ain't educated. We don't we don't invest enough. We ain't economic savvy enough. We ain't political enough. Black men ain't winning because look at how they dress. They don't wear suits and they don't do all that is bullshit. You ain't winning because the system you born in was designed for you to be a loser. And a few niggas, and see, look at here. When the whole thing about the hip hop culture is there, to, is there to prevent. See, what came out of the hip hop culture was the gangster culture. The gangs that were born out of the hip hop era would have been the killers and warriors fighting against these Jewish barons. They saw that. They're ahead of us. 
they studied DNA. They knew that the generation, that this generation was their biggest threat and it was the messianic generation that would have been fearless, willing to bust their guns and die to live a better life. That's what hip hop represent. Hip hop culture is a bunch of young black niggas that's willing to kill and do anything to live a better life. But with hip hop culture, you only willing to kill each other though. You seeking a better life, but you only willing to kill the next black man and take his shit to make your life better. Prior to hip hop, you was willing to take this shit right to the oppressor's throat, right to this Jewish baron. After hip hop, you just robbing another nigga who broke it in you. You don't see now what happened? Hip hop culture represent warrior culture, a generation of black men who they knew the babies of this generation was gonna be some gangsters. They knew that before Crip Blood and Trap Music, nigga, they study DNA. The hippies represent the beginning of that warriorhood. The hippies was saying, we ain't going to war for these rich Jews no more. But the hippies never said we wasn't going to go to war for each other, though. Don't think a hippie was some bitch nigga who was singing nature songs. The hippies was willing to go to war for nature, not the government. The hippies caught on to the game and then you... What they did, see the hippies was recruiting for young minds. So these Jews had to start the hip hop industry and take all them young poets and bright minds and make them use their talent to re-promote capitalism to a people who was turning their back on the system. You don't realize that hip hop culture made us believe in the European system more Look at here, man. Look at how these white dudes who run the world, look at how they dress. Now, they started the hip hop industry and they told the young black men, basically, we all gods. Look, the, these old white Jews are the image of God, man. The white dude with the beard, Look at what I'm telling you. His long coat is his cape. He's your hero. What they done was the young black rappers who started off, they made them dress like their God, like their master, which is why I keep showing you this. The all black and the top hat is Jewish tradition. This was the beginning of black Judaism, but they didn't call it black Judaism. They call it hip hop. But all of the principles of hip hop were the same principles that the Jews promote. Money, colonialism, ego, war, violence you name it you can't tell me one thing that hip-hop promote right that this guy spiritual system don't promote all the way down to the worship of the devil man and we see the rappers throwing up the devil horns and wearing the devil horns like bambata so we talking about the same spiritual system chocolate coated and instead of niggas walking around with a suit on and a top hat the black man's version that they gave you was a Kango and of course Adidas cause to try to enter the devil but it's the same basically 
the Jewish barons go around the world promoting their culture and their spirituality. And once you accept their spirituality, you accept the values and beliefs that come with it. So once we accepted hip hop, what else did we accept? Money over bitches. What else did we accept? Money over everything. What else did we accept? Treating women wrong. We accepted a lot of things that didn't mean us no good just by accepting hip hop culture. And we didn't realize it at the time. We didn't think we were being given a new culture. We thought we were just being given a new music. We thought they were just giving us a new music. But we don't understand how culture is given to a people through rhythm and poetry or what they call rap, rhythm and poetry. Now check this out. Your poet, poets and musicians are those people that lead your spiritual and political renaissance. So if you want to go back to the time of the renaissance, who led it? Your artists led the renaissance. Now who led the modern black neo-paganism renaissance? Your artists your MCs, the spray paint was, listen, y'all don't see that these folks been doing the same shit for thousands of years. What led the first renaissance? Motherfucking painters, dancers, and singers. What led the hip hop renaissance? Painters, dancers, and singers, nigga. During the first renaissance, niggas was painting on walls, the Sistine Chapel and all that. During the neo-pagan renaissance among black people in America, what do we see? Graffiti, niggas painting on walls, spray painting on walls. They don't change it, man. Open up your eyes. Why do all renaissance is synonymous with niggas carving and painting on the walls? Hmm? See what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? Think about this shit. What were the different things that founded hip hop culture? Graffiti, dancing, music, politics, and economics are the two pillars of it. Hip hop is about money and power. Money and power is economics and, excuse me, money and power are the two pillars of Freemasonry. Money and power equals out to economics and politics. Money is economics. Power is politics. Politics is the language we use to determine who gets what amount of power and why. What justify that they get this amount and others don't. That's the language that you agree to that keeps you at the bottom. So if you believe in this American political system, by default, you believe in slavery. And if you're a goddamn slave who, guess what? You perpetuate your own servitude. You glorify it by embracing the system that allow for it. Because that system told all the slaves if you work hard one day, you can own slaves. And right there, the slave is agreeing to slavery. He'll never own a goddamn slave. He just going to be a slave with dreams of enslaving another motherfucker, which is evil. That's so evil. Since the slave got dreams to be a slave master, he gonna always be a slave 
saying ain't nothing wrong with slavery and if I keep picking cotton then I can own me some slaves one day mm, 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 what a fucked up system man that's, that is just wrong so the slave would be a happy slave and he'll die a slave saying well I didn't live to own slaves but my children may own slaves why do you want to own a slave don't you see how fucked up it is that you are a slave but your dream is to be a slave master which that dream is creating your nightmare because what happens is you now a slave condoning slavery with the hope that one day you can be on slaves but it never come to fruition generation after generation you just got slaves condoning slavery saying well ain't nothing wrong with slavery man if you keep working hard you can own slaves so quit bitching master ain't doing nothing wrong if you work hard you can be a master and you never become a master you just remain a slave with the false ass dream that one day man you can be a master and when you don't achieve it in your life you say well my slave children can be a slave on a one day when the dream of owning slaves is the, re is the dream that's perpetuating your slavery cause now you a slave a grin to your servitude under the false pretenses that hey if you work hard enough you can be a slave you can you can own slaves but the people that own slaves didn't work hard they fought hard the people that own slaves didn't work hard they killed hard they weren't the best workers they was the best murderers nigga and they told you if you work hard you can achieve what the slave master got when it wasn't hard work. It was murder. Death. The, 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 the people in power take what's yours by force and tell you you can get it back if you work hard enough. That's the message of the boule. That's the black narrative. A bunch of wanna be smart niggas with their suits and ties on. Saying, this is the image of a black man. Okay, we need more black men in corporate America when they shutting corporate America down as I speak. Nigga, they packing corporate America up in the briefcase that it came in. Nigga, let me show you what they doing to corporate America. No bullshit. This is corporate America. You know what? This is corporate America, and this is what they doing to it. In order for me to throw that piece of paper, I got to fold it up first and consolidate it. Can you imagine me trying to throw this sheet of paper across the room without balling it up? It won't get far with it. Let's try. Didn't go nowhere. You got to ball it up first if you want to cast it away. You want to know what's happening to the economy in corporate America? Nigga, the same thing happened to the first sheet of paper. In order for that motherfucker to be flung across the ring, I had to crumble it up first. They balling it up. All of a sudden, when they getting rid of the goddamn American dollar, that's when you want to put Harriet Tubman on it. A whole new currency is coming. And that's when you niggas get a picture on the old one. 
when they're no longer using the American dollar no more, that's when niggas can get on it. And when they're lo no longer using a corporate strategy anymore, that's when niggas want to be corporate. Niggas is always Johnny come lately. Yeah, when, when the white man ain't using the dollar no more, that's when niggas get on it. And when the white man don't even, the white man don't even have a corporate strategy anymore. And that's when niggas want to be corporate talk. Niggas want to be corporate niggas now. Now black men want to be corporate niggas when the white man have abandoned corporate America. Nigga, corporate America was folded up and packed up and went overseas years ago. Only thing over here is niggas in suits with briefcases with no businesses. It's a fashion trend. Niggas, most niggas who wear suits and all that in America don't wear them to a corporation. They wear them to go do stand-up comedy to a concert. Your entertainers dress like corporate niggas because the corporations left and the only thing we got is a big playground, niggas who really entertainers in corporate garb. That's why I'm showing y'all these images. The entertainers always dress like the corporate motherfuckers. Armani suits and all that. That's corporate shit in America. But beyond that, it's gangsterism. The mob wore the same shit. Versace suits, uh, Armani suits. So you, all of that stuff, you know, got your Michael Forbes glasses, your Dimitri shades and shit. Hip hoppers and drug dealers ain't the only ones on that. That's mafia. That's gangster shit. The niggas on Wall Street, don't you know when you ask what happened to the mob, they became the politicians, nigga. And they never stopped wearing the suits either. The mob was a bunch of niggas in suits running the motherfucking nation. Let's keep it real. When the mob was on the scene, no one respected the damn government, nigga. You respected the mob that control your area. Anybody that know what I'm that grew up in Chicago, no I ain't lying. Same shit going on today. Don't nobody respect the police. They respect the gang that control their damn city or their area. They rather stay with a good relationship with that gang than the police most niggas growing up in the hood don't care if the police harass them they'll cuss them out every day long as they keep the respect of the gang that control they fucking block the moment you lose respect with the mob that control your, your hood that's the moment you move out the hood they run you up out of there I know I live on the west the police ain't running niggas up out the hood. Niggas running niggas out the hood. The police don't control shit on the West Coast. The gangs do. And that's the same thing in Chicago and, and for New York and Baltimore as well. A nigga growing up in the hood is trying to do right by the gangs, not the fucking police. He'd rather do jail time and, and spit in the police face than disrespect that damn OG who run the block. So listen what I'm telling you. The government never ran nothing. All of the areas of the world as dominated by gangs is where the millionaires and billionaires at. Chicago, California, New York. Follow the money and you will follow the mobs and all the gangs, nigga. Follow the money and the industries, the tech gurus, the entertainers. Follow the money. Follow the melting pots in your nation. And you will see that's where all the gangsters is concentrated. In the tri-state area, west coast, 
everywhere the money is piled up, that's where the gangs and shit at. California, New York. Everybody else, they call you a wannabe. Why? Because there's no big mafia-driven economy in your city to even require for a gang. You don't even know why the gangs even were originated to control the economic flow of money that started to be pumped through these ghettos because of the hip-hop culture. That's why gang culture rose out of hip-hop culture. Once you start putting millions and billions of dollars into the hood and the ghetto, it got to be controlled. So it makes so now it should make sense to you why the gangs control the hip hop industry and the street blocks. And why they all got a relationship with the feds and the police. You may say, well, that's contradictory. No, it's not. The, the kingpin at the top of every drug ring is a fucking FBI agent. Y'all better wake the fuck up. Rick Ross told you that. Rick Ross said that the top dope dealers of his time, all them young black boys, was getting their dope from the CIA. Y'all niggas don't be listening. I, you know what I don't like? Niggas who try to act like they with this street culture and shit, but you pick and choose. Niggas don't want to tell y'all the truth to perpetuate the fuckery. We ignore shit that we should zoom in on. Rick Ross admitted in the goddamn interview, the biggest dope dealers of his time was getting it from the military and CIA. American Gangster showed you in the movie that they was getting it from the army and the military soldiers. Then Rick Ross came out and confirmed it. To, why you think he, he, he's free right now? If they lock him up, he can implement a lot of people in government and in the fucking FBI. He's on a gag order. He can go make documentaries and all that, but what he cannot do is give up the names of those FBI and CIA officers that was giving them the dope. Check. Let me drop my motherfucking bomb right now. Y'all ain't listening right what I'm saying? Where my bomb at? You know we got to drop a bomb on that. I can't wait to get my panel so I can just hit the button. That's going to be a late bomb, but we going to drop that motherfucker nevertheless. God damn it. <laughs> it was late, but God damn it, we got to drop that one. Shit, man. Shit. All of these niggas say we was getting our dope from the CIA. The military was giving us the dope. But that's all the information you going to get. Niggas ain't going to go to calling names and telling you which captains, which sergeants, which agents was giving it. See, the crazy thing about it is the government don't care if y'all know that the government put dope on the street. They just want to protect the identity of the agents who do it. So these rappers will come out and tell y'all the truth. That niggas wasn't making their own fucking flights and relationships overseas getting his work, meeting these kingpins. The government been controlling the drug gang ever since it was conceived. Why? Because the government is the mob, nigga. And the mob been controlling the drugs. The mob, uh, the whole prohibition shit was to make the privatization of alcohol illegal. When the mob became the government, they made selling beer and all that legal long as the government can do it. If you try to make your own beer and sell it right now, you're going to go to jail. That's because of prohibition. You thought prohibition was against the mob when it was for the mob. 
America had a power change and y'all don't even realize it. When the mob became the government, remember the mob was the on the mob outlawed the booze industry. In other words, the mob got a rule. Whatever we do, can't nobody else do it or we going to kill them. So when the mob became the government, they had to do something about the alcohol industry. The government don't control the alcohol industry before prohibition. The gangsters do. But when the gangsters become the government, what do we see out the prohibition? Now the government controls the alcohol industry. Don't you find it hypocritical that they outlaw alcohol because it's supposed to be health, uh, uh, not good for your health, but after they banned it with the mob and stopped it with the mob, the government started doing selling alcohol legally? Y'all don't see what happened? The mob became the government, and they had to transition their black market regulations into the legal aspect in other words when the mob controlled the booze industry they controlled it by force anybody trying to sell beer they just shot your ass up and blowed up your brewery ain't nobody gonna regulate this industry but us ain't no new people gonna get part in this that's how the mob have monopolies but when the mob became the government, they had to stop any other new mobs from coming up with another black market booze industry. And the old mob industry became the new booze industry of today. Budweiser, Bud Light, all of these are the same families that was controlling the damn liquor during when the mob controlled it. Look it up. What y'all niggas thought? That the government shut down the mob and then the government just started making breweries? Y'all funny. The same old breweries that the mob been using to make they goddamn beer with, they make them in the same locations. They just do it legally now because the mob is the government, nigga. Back in the day, it was a federal crime to, to fucking gamble. That was a federal crime, meaning when no gambling allowed nowhere in America. The only form of gambling you can do was in these brothels that was owned by the mob. But when the mob became the government, gambling is now legal in a lot of places. You see what I'm saying? Y'all see what I'm saying? The government ain't number one mob that's trying to prevent the rise of another mob. But when the new mob come and usurp the government, we can see the hypocrisy of that government that was in power saying that, hey, what those gangsters are doing is wrong. When they stop those gangsters, uh, when, 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 see, check this out, right? The government said the alcohol industry was evil. And it was because the people in power really was the opposition of the mob who was trying to get power. Your new government was funded with the booze of the old mobs and shit. And what I'm saying is, so you say, well, okay. The old mob controlled the booze industry and the government said that industry was evil. But the reason the government was saying that, not because it was evil, but because they was going to war with the mob. The mob was trying to infiltrate the government, which was a whole nother family and mob of itself going to war with another force trying to usurp it. 
It was an economic war going on. There was a new force in America trying to usurp the government. We called it the, the mob, the gangsters, right? And the economic warfare boiled out in the form of a booze industry. This new, these new families that was trying to usurp the American government funded their war with the alcohol industry, which were being condemned by the government that would later be overthrown by the money from that alcohol industry. You see what I'm saying? So check it out now. The people that run the government today were those early mobs that they they won, they usurped the government. That's why when the mob usurped the government, alcohol became legal. With the legalization of alcohol in America was the beginning of a whole new government power and we didn't even know that the power had changed. One mob usurped another one. It was an economic warfare. The new mob's booze industry was bankrupting the economy of the current mob that was ruling America through that old government. After the prohibition period, the old mob assumed the government seat and brought in the alcohol industry with them. You don't see that? Why would the same government legalize something that they was calling evil and condemning? It wasn't the same government. The government had been usurped and it was legalized by the people who usurped it. That's what y'all don't know. So check this out though. Um, so check this out, right? Cause it was somewhere I was trying to go with that. Now, the thing about, cause let me see where we at on time. How long we been streaming? I've been streaming seven hours. I got to wrap it up. I don't want to really go too longer than that. So if I have to do a part two, I'll do that. I set up here having fun and lost track of time, man. So let me go ahead and get into the symbolism so I can wrap it up. But it's amazing how most folks don't realize the culture we was given as black people was given to us by our enemy. And everything about the culture we embrace today is us glorifying our oppressor. Look at here. Even since the first hip hoppers, you know, the, the fact that all of them are dressed alike with the Adidas symbol, the King, look, this is King James. And then Run DMC. Like that blew me away. That ought to blow you away. Nothing has changed. We're still glorifying the oppressor. This is deep stuff I'm giving you, man. This whole dress code is come from the devil. All black with the top hat and all that. It's a demonic spiritual system that was extended to black people. See, the first time we were given this was Papa Lekba, Baron Semedi. It started in Africa. In other words, the pilgrim colonialists, the Luciferian pilgrims who created Uncle Sam and this system that we under, this Baphomet system, they gave this system to ancient Africans first. And they had ancient Africans worshiping old white men. How did they do it? Here is the deity right here. All throughout ancient African people worshipped a god called Baron Semedi. He was a baron, y'all. A baron is just a title of a noble man of Jewish, Jewish background. So this was this god represent the like kind of the first concept of a black Jew. And they said Jesus is a black man who was the king of the Jews, but they ain't telling you Jesus was a God called Jesus. 
and another form of him was this God, Baron Samedi. This would have been the black Christ. Don't you see him with his cross on his head? Look at the cross. That's the black Jesus right there. Here's the symbol of Baron Samedi. Right? This the God of the dead. But this is a new God to Africans that come along about 7,000 years ago. But if I give you a timeline, guess what else came along 7,000 years ago? Watch this. Watch this. See, what y'all don't realize, let me pull up some in closing. We got a little time left. Let me show you something. Hold on a minute. Let me pull out these slides, man. See, what y'all don't realize. Hold up one minute. I forgot. I need to find my images, right? It's showing you. The fraternity shit. Hold on, let me see here. Here it go, I got it. Here it go. There we go. You see that? All of this come from Egypt. Santa Claus with the candy cane is the first pharaoh, man, with the shepherd staff. Remember, Santa Claus is a form of Zeus, which is Jesus. Jesus is the good shepherd. Why does the Pharaoh carry a shepherd's staff if he don't have sheeple? The Pharaoh was none but a damn, another damn president leading his sheeple with that shepherd's staff. Can't nobody argue with me because he carrying the shepherd's staff. That's how we get the candy cane. All right, that's who lead the sheeple. And then and the flailing rod. So check this out. The whole symbolism of George Washington with the rod to get struck by the lightning, that's a dumbass story that never happened. See, George Washington was the first president, and he was like one of the most high ranking Masons of all times. George Washington always dressed in Masonic garb. What they tried to do with George Washington, right, was idolize him with the same mythology of Thor. So you got this dumbass story, right, of George Washington with the lightning rod. People believe that. People believe that. See, George Washington with the lightning rod, what they said, which was a key, is them idolizing him with the Jesus myth. Remember now, they did the same artwork for Christ when Christ became an ascended master. They gave Christ the key of the new world. He was the God that led the old world. He was the God of Pisces. And America, Pisces started off with George Washington. Resurrecting that Celtic culture over here being the first president. When you see Jesus with the key, it goes into the whole thing, what they tried to do with George Washington. It's symbolic. It ain't a real story. It's no different than Thor holding up the hammer and the lightning striking it. Y'all believe in fairy tales. Thor's hammer shaped like what? A key. It, do you find it ironic that Thor's hammer shaped like a key with the lightning striking it? 
Jesus got the same damn shit. The key shaped like what? A hammer. A long top and a slim bottom. This Jesus key shapes like the hammer of Thor. The key is the hammer. And in and, and the artwork, you will see light coming from it or lightning strike it, some of that nature. And that's what they done with George Washington, which was one of the, he's a, a, one of the high ranking fathers in Freemasonry. So he's bestowed that artwork in the mythos. They respect him in Freemasonry. Is, is, certain uh, figures get, image and artwork that others don't the whole thing about George Washington controlling the lightning holding the rod right is them putting him above all the other ascended masters that stands out that's a they they get to live forever in the mythos most children going remember George Washington from that story right but let me move on. This is very revealing. Ancient comedic uh, carvings of what I've been telling you, the worship of the Baphomet with the five-pointed star, right? It shapes like a triangle, right? Keep that in mind because that's what we're dealing with with these monoliths here. The monoliths, when the sun get in the middle, it look like the all-seeing eye. And you can see all the rays of the sun in the middle of this thing beaming all across it. This is a cult ritual, but who else breaking it down like me? That's the question. See, they know what I'm saying is right. The silver monoliths dealing with the moon gods of Saturn. Monolith, moon, monolith, right? Remember now the Hershey's Kisses or the Silver Bell. These people been giving you this same damn symbolism. Open up your eyes, man. What is the Silver Bell? Symbolic of the moon or the god Saturn. This is no different than this. Open up your third eye, people. All right, if you want to see how that relates to Saturn, I'll show you as we wrap up. Now, hold on a minute. Let me grab some. Talk about the god Saturn. What they call L, how he relate to the silver bell concept. There you go. If you look at the sacred geometry of the god L, it forms a triangle, which is your all seeing eye. But that triangle represents the point of singularity for creation. What the ancestors called Mount Maru was replaced with. Mount Calvary and on Mount Maru they said it Mount Maru was a spiritual mountain which represent the center of the universe and the ancestors taught us that at the top of Mount Maru was you in other words the ancestors taught us we're at the center of our own universe Christ on the cross you in the middle of a compass Wherever you are, the universe is around you. Everyone is their own center or, or North Pole projecting this reality outward. It's created by the mind. This goes deep, though, so I don't want to get too deep. But when you look at this collage, it shows you how these symbols tie into the god L of Saturn, the god of the rings, he who separates the time with splits, just like the rings of a classroom, separate the classes with ring, ring, ring. When the bell ring, you leave the class. In other words, Saturn represent the rings. 
when the trumpets are sounding off, Saturn is returning to make things new, new world order, a reset. That's what we're in now. Saturn is Christ on the cross returning. Remember, Christ controlled time, AC, BC, AD. Because of Christ, there was a split in time. And the God that was said to split time and control it was Kronos. And that's why I'm showing you Saturn, Kronos, in relation to Christ. They're all the devil. The people that control time do it with technology, hypnotization, and indoctrination. Gregorian actually played a key role in the time matrix that we're in now. But that's a whole nother topic. I wanted to pull this up to show you how the times are separated in ages by these controllers of this underworld that we're in. Every time an age, a new age began, we know it because pandemonium, chaos, and you name it, what we're going through now. Those are the trumpets of the apocalypse. They don't make a sound, but they, they presence are felt in a form of pandemic. Pan is the God that releases these gods of pandemonium. Pan is the God we're looking at now, control the time via chaos or the the releasing of the four horsemen of the apocalypse now the apocalypse is the epoch's eclipse a epoch is a method of time every epoch there's a paradigm shift and every epoch there are eclipses in the sky to let us know the time is changing so every epoch is sim symbolized by an eclipse Every time we see certain eclipses, we know Armageddon or chaos is going to happen on earth because we're entering a spiritual reset. To, to ignore, now nature is trying to make humanity rise to its good potential. And when nature come with these resets, these folks have to reset too. See, these folks create a system of government based upon a paradigm that we under. Nature comes and reset that paradigm, which forces them to have to reset the government system that they created to control us under that paradigm. Once nature change our paradigm, the system of government that they tailored to that paradigm becomes obsolete. So every time nature wakes us up, they have to reset government. And they have to build a new system of government based upon the new paradigm nature bringing us to to free us from the old one. And they've been keeping us sleep for generations doing that. So here you go, man. I'm showing you the symbolism here. You see how this forms a triangle and you can see the five-pointed star which is the rays of Ra bursted from this triangle. See, in a lot of images you would have a triangle, right, with a bunch of rays coming from it. But like I showed you, what it, what, how did they make your grandmother worship the all-seeing eye? Jesus on the cross, man, look at here. If you look at this symbolism of Jesus on the cross, what are you seeing? It forms a triangle with the light around it. That's all I'm showing you. We see that in the Freemasonic world, right? This is a good example. Jesus on cavalry forms this triangle with the light bursting. That is nothing but this same religion that they have in the occult. Jesus promising everybody monetary blessings. This symbol is on your money and in your church. And you praying to God for money, which is corporate. 
when you finally get the money, it's going to be from a corporate tycoon who's playing God. You don't get it. The dude wearing the top hat print the money. When the money gets in your hand, you're going to thank God. And you're not realizing that the God you thinking is the corporate, the, the Jewish baron who print the money. The symbol of your God is the symbol that you want your God to bless you with on the money. And you think that your God and money is separate and that the rich man can't enter the kingdom of God when the rich man can't be rich without God. It's crazy. The kingdom of God is built on earth. But see, niggas in the boule don't want y'all to know this. Look at here. Here's the Freemasonic Boaz and Yaquin, or the two pillars, which is Democrat, Republican. Economics and politics, y'all. You see the five-pointed star in the middle of it? That's Uncle Sam. That's what he represents. This all-seeing eye is forming a triangle with the light bursting, and there go your two pillars. This is Jesus and the two thieves. Okay. Y'all think that this shit is, is something. Oh, uh, this something new. Freemasons have a religious system, a spiritual system. You're looking at it right here. How did they convince our grandmothers to partake in this same evil capitalist spiritual system? They called it Christianity and they replaced the I with Jesus and the two pillars with two thieves. This religion been going on in Kemet. This thing go all the way back and I'm just trying to wake y'all up, man. See the triangulation? You got to get into sacred geometry. You can see that it's the same thing. Now I got to get out of here, but just one more thing. Pull up images of King James or any king in the occult you will see one thing that when the king sits in his throne, the king in his throne is the symbol of Saturn. What do you mean, Brother Sanchez? The king in his throne is the all-seeing eye. Let me see if I can find it. I don't got to put King James I can just put King and throne And what you Will see right The concept Of a king and a throne Produces the same Sacred geometry Of Christ on Calvary Of Freemasonry Men ruling the world Is the Freemasonic agenda Instead of the world ruling the world. Look at the sacred geometry here. Look at the king on the throne. The two pillars are the two armrests here. In order for the king, when the king sit in his throne, both of his arms are bent at a 90 degree angle. You see? And that's the symbol of Saturn. See how Saturn arms is resting at the 90 degrees is all symbolic of the king. All kings on earth is said to get their earthly power from the gods in heaven. You can't become a king on earth if, if the gods didn't appoint you in that position. And the gods are those secret rulers that operate behind closed doors. Now look at this symbol in Egypt, how it makes that house, that house outline. And look at the king in the throne. This is the concept of the white house or a house divided. Or if you, for example, if you pull up the Baphomet, what you will notice all of these images got the same sacred geometry and triangulation. This house-like geometry. 
the Baphomet geometry is symbolic of a king on the throne, which is why I tell you all kings are the Baphomet. The Baphomet represent all earthly kings that ever ruled as one deity. It represent their female counterpart too. But when you put all of that in one deity, you get a she-male, which is what we get here. But that's another topic. So here, boom. Sacred geometry of a king and a throne and of the Baphomet are identical. Same thing we have with the two pillars of Freemasonry. Because for a king to rise to power, the two pillars that creates the king power is divide and conquer. You have to create duality in order to rule. You got to separate uh, people in order to take their land. In order to make them powerless, you got to understand that their power is in their numbers. And so you have to divide their numbers in order to take their power, which is simple Freemasonry. Uh, it's easier said than done because to do that, people are very connected. So to divide us, it takes trillions of dollars, y'all. It takes social engineers and scientists and people studying our brain and all of that shit. It's not easy to divide and conquer because na nature created us to work together and want to be together. They made their work easy with religion. They created a system to divide us on spiritual arguments. And since we are spiritual, the job of dividing us have never been more easier. You know? So the mat, there's a method to the magic. Uh, you look at these symbols, they all triangulate with what I'm showing you here, all right, with sacred geometry, all right? Now, I do got to get out of here, so at this time, I'm going to cut my camera on. We're going to call out some donations, if I got any. Hopefully y'all sent in some donations. I, I mean, all I did was give you eight hours of nothing but fire and facts. No celebrity gossip. This ain't celebrity gossip, man. This is the motherfucking secret that the celebrities are hiding from you while they got you caught up with celebrity gossip. You got niggas online talking about they giving you real talks and they come from out the Zulu nation and shit talking about real topics and it's all about rappers and it's promoting money and capitalism and hip hop these niggas are agents they was once with Bambada and the Zulu nation and they still with them they controlling the opposition if a motherfucker was with the Zulu nation which is a satanic cult who do all kind of rituals and satanic shit and they're hiding a secret from the regular society if a person was with that kind of organization and they say that they turned on it and they're against it now but they don't tell everybody the secret that was going on they lying and they secretly still with it when you turn on an organization you expose it you tell everybody what was going on as like for example right everybody already know in these secret organizations that they do gay shit and pedophilia so if a person come out and say I'm exposing that organization and they tell you something you already know they ain't really turning on it you're not a whistleblower if you telling us something about the government we already know if a government whistleblower come out saying hey Politicians be doing gay shit I'ma say nigga you ain't no whistleblower We already know that them niggas is fruity Telling us nothing new You know tell us the real secrets nigga People out here time out there Exposing the, the Zulu nation And all these satanic organizations And they was once in it Now I'm exposing it They're lying bro how am I teaching you more about the Baphomet than an ex-Zulu Nation member? Think about it. How you used to be in the Zulu Nation, 
but you still promote Islam, capitalism, and all of the values of Satanism. But you turn it on it though. How is it I was never in a satanic organization or cult, but I can decipher and break down all of the shit they do? In other words, right? If a nigga said that Africa Bombada, if a nigga said he used to be with Africa Bombada, and now he's against the man and exposing the Zulu nation, he's not if he ain't teaching you what I'm teaching you. If a nigga ain't telling you, why did Bambada glorify Egypt? Ask him that. And why did they call him the father of hip hop for glorifying Africa and Egypt? The nigga will have to do a seven hour lecture and tell you the secrets that I'm giving you now. That ain't nobody woke y'all. You in a fake culture that, that's giving you the same devil that you trying to escape from. They'll have to tell you the truth, man. You see what I'm saying? If 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 if, 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 if see a nigga who said he is exposing Satanism in the Zulu nation, watch this. By now he would have to been and told you why did Africa Bambada wear horns everywhere? Everybody know Bambada was known for these wearing these horns and throwing up the devil horns. Any nigga who had a relationship with Bambada, whether it was sexual, I don't care what it was, you wasn't this close to this damn Luciferian and you didn't know the rituals, you didn't know the symbols, you don't know this, this shit that I'm teaching with the Freemasons. Why is a nigga who never knew Bambada and never had a relationship with him can tell you more information on why Bambada wearing horns than a nigga who actually had a relationship with him? Why is there as a nigga online getting clout for exposing Bambada, but the only thing he telling us about Bambada is shit we already know that the nigga, all of these rappers gay dog, we know that. If Bambada is in a secret society, it ain't no secret that them niggas be doing gay shit. That's not the secret. Y'all are dumb. We know secret societies run the world and niggas say, I'm exposed to secret. Guess what the secret is? They fucking each other. That's when I start laughing, man. I be like, did you figure that out all by yourself? Niggas be like, I joined the secret society and I got fucked and I learned the secret. The secret is they'll fuck you in the ass. Like, bro, you got fucked for that. You was in an organization that did some gay shit to you. And later you thought that you was going to go expose that organization for doing gay shit. You didn't expose them, dude. News flash, every person already know in these organizations that homosexuality is, is there. That ain't the secret, nigga. Try again. The secret of the secret societies is not that they're gay. The secret is that they're fucking devil worshippers who's convincing you to be a devil worshipper convincing you to have the same values in mind they got there's no way that I was never in the Zulu nation but I can teach you more about the symbolism and ritual aspect of it than a nigga who was and it shouldn't be that way that I'm teaching you more about Bambada than any nigga online but I ain't getting the credit for exposing him If the only thing a nigga can teach you about Bambada is that he gay, he ain't exposing the man. 
He's telling you what we already know. In fact, they're helping Bambada by coming out with the gay shit. Because what that do, it makes everything about these damn occultists only centered around gay shit. And it's deeper than that, bro. It's a ritual and satanic and niggas who, shatan shit, niggas who like to say niggas is satanists and they doing the work of the devil do the most work of the devil. Niggas who coming out now talking about all these niggas doing the work of shaitan had a sexual relationship with the devil himself. Can y'all imagine that? The closest thing you going to get to the devil in the flesh is Bambada, nigga. If that man did anything to you sexually, it is something you, you got to look at that, man. Like, yo, you will be scared of this nigga walking in a room with them horns on. What type of shit is this? Y'all better open up your eyes. The people that's popular on YouTube are put there for a reason. What are you learning about Bambada? That if you can make your way into the Zulu nation to have a sexual relationship with that man, you going to hit the money bag. All, one thing about all of Bambada's ex-lovers, they ain't, ain't none of them hurting for money. That's the capitalistic side that they selling you and you don't know it. You think a nigga is exposing Bambada by telling black men, hey, if you do some gay shit with Bambada, he'll give you money. Nigga, you're fucking promoting that shit. That's a commercial. You know how many black niggas went and joined the Zulu nation? Out the members came out exposing Bambada. Do you know how many desperate young black men heard that story and said, damn, all I gotta do is get thighed or get head one time from this man and I can have all his money and never work again? Ask yourself this, what do Zulu nation members do for a living? Right, nigga, suck dick. Have sex with men. And promote Egyptian shit and satanic shit. What are your requirements in the Zulu nation? To promote hip hop, to promote the devil, to promote motherfucking uh, the Celtic pig, neo paganism, chematism, and to have sex with Bambada. Last time I checked, that's what cults do. Worship the devil and gay shit. Make you think the Zulu nation in a different. You do every nigga that that's anywhere near the Zulu nation, you better look at them suspect. Everybody know Africa Bombada have sets with little boys and all this, and you got niggas still put them on a pedestal for the hip hop and follow. You better get away from all them niggas. Because a nigga lost any kind of street value when he called a gay man father. And I'm telling you. There's no such thing as joining this, these damn cults and getting out. Let me let me let me share something with y'all. Everybody online right now that's talking about I used to be with that shit, but now I'm not. They're lying, bro. It's blood in, blood out, man. These Masonic organizations are more are more serious than the gangs and shit meaning when you join Crip or Blood 
you don't just say I'm out. It's blood in, blood out, man. You don't just say I got out the Zulu Nation and then now I'm exposing them? Fuck out of here. No nigga gets out of the Gambino family and then turn on it and keep living to do it and he be popular getting motherfucking money doing it. Y'all better wake up. You don't get out of these things like that and let alone turn on it and make it a fucking business. But what we do know is that a lot of these occult organizations see genuine leaders rising up against them and making money. Nations like the Zulus and the NOI and all these satanic Masonic organizations they see real niggas making millions of dollars going after them so what do they do they control the opposition they send their own members to go and go after them cause why if niggas is making millions exposing the damn Zulu nation and hip hop we gonna control the opposition if it's like this the cigarette companies saw anti-cigarette companies rising up patch companies bubble gum companies chew the gum you quit smoking ain't no way you can win once that happened the only thing the cigarette companies can do is start their own quit smoking companies so guess what the same people who sell you cigarettes they own all of the companies to get you off the cigarettes. It's called control opposition. Why would I let my opposition put me out of business by selling something contrary to my product? If I sell it, I can never be out of business because if a person want to start smoking, I make money. And if a person want to stop smoking, I make money. So if I control them both, I can never lose money. That's the beauty of controlling your opposition. That's what the occult organization started doing a while back. They started sending members of their own organizations out there in the public to go against their organization. But you can tell the agents from the real ones because guess what? The real ones, when they go after a particular organization, they don't show no mercy and they tell it all. The fake ones who secretly work for that organization, they don't tell y'all the secrets of it. They just say, well, it's gay. We know it's gay. Reveal the secrets. Go into the symbolism. Get into the Luciferian shit. Why Bambada wear horns on his head? Let's get deeper. They can't go to doing that. That's an agent. Because when you go to talking like that, that actually destroys the organization which uh, uh, lives off of indoctrinating young members. And if I come out telling the young people how the indoctrination work and the spiritual side of how Satan going to get your soul, it'll prevent it'll kill that organization in other words when you start proving to people that Christ ain't really exists it kills the church if you you know listen I'm gonna give you a good example I used to be part of the church but I left the church and I turned on the church you know I'm genuine cause guess what I go in on the church, nigga. I tell all the secrets. There's not a pastor in America that like me. I tell all the secrets of that shit. I'm a real whistleblower to the Christian church. I tell you things as a whistleblower that I wouldn't dare tell you when I was in the church. I would try to hide all the bad shit about that church when I was in it. Now that I'm out, nigga, I'm telling all. And the damage that I'm doing to the church 
stop so many people from being Christians. A lot of them in the chat room right now, let them know if, if Brother Sanchez woke you up. That's a real threat. I ain't take it easy on the church. I ain't show no mercy when I turned on them. Now, if I was secretly working for the church, I would be telling you I left the church. But if somebody else choose to do it, then good for them. I don't have a problem with it. If my life got better for leaving the church, why would I keep somebody else in it? If I'm a damn agent. A person can't be against the Zulu nation and part of a religion. In other words, you can't practice Islam and be against the Zulu nation. Impossible. You know why? The same spiritual system of Islam is the same spiritual system of the Zulu nation. It's one and the same. It's the same spiritual system of the five percenters, nation of gods and earth. All that shit. All of them is under Islam. The Zulu nation practice Islam. How are you going to go against the Zulu nation but promote Islam? What you call Islam is nothing but the worship of the devil in the form of Allah. What you call Satanism is the worship of the devil in the form of Satan himself. Y'all ain't getting this. Satan's and Satanists and Luciferians worship uh, the devil in his true form in his Lucifer form or satanic form in his horned form people who are not Luciferians or Satanists they still worship the devil but in a uh, uh, form of a deity like Christ the Lion of Judah you know Pan Allah, Buddha, all of these are different forms of Satan. And a person worshiping Christ think they worshiping the opposite of the devil, but yet they both call the morning star and they both incorporate money into their spiritual system. Mm. The same money God wants you to tie it with it's the same money he tell you Satan controls on earth. He tells you Satan is a beast that rules the earth and controls rich men on the earth get their money from the devil. But yet blessed people on earth said they get their money from Christ. But yet Christ don't print money. Jews do. And they worship the devil. If Christians and Satan is both get their blessings in the form of money that come from corporate people then the blessings that come from above don't come from the devil or God it actually come from the banks that run the world who are funding both sides of everything they got you they, 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 they control both the devil and God and no matter which one you choose they both promising you the same thing worldly money Christians hoping for blessings in the form of what money Satan is, 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 is serving Satan for money but money is, is the point where you see that Satan and God got a conflict of interest the fact that the money they told you the devil control on earth God require it for tithes and offerings and your government require percentage for taxation I think I'm going to have to do a part two on this remember 
They are the rise of a lot of fake messiahs on YouTube talking about they exposing the order when they really reselling it to you. They giving you capitalism, fashion, celebrity gossip, and they ain't really exposing the secret of the secret societies. You listen to them niggas, it make you want to join the Zulu nation. Think about what I'm telling you. All of these young black men are willing to go up there to Hollywood, the hip hop world, and they willing to sell themselves to these old white men who looking at them like a model, want to know how much you weigh, your ass size, and all that. You think I'm lying, nigga? When you sign a record deal, the white the, the, the label looking at you like I wonder how he's gonna look in Fendi jeans yeah he sound good but his image gotta be right yeah he's a chunky nigga so we gonna make him dress like this can you imagine a young goon in the office with an old white man and an old white man say yeah we like your raps man but stand up take your shirt off can you make your chest muscle And the old white man said, oh, he, he has a beautiful six-pack, so he'll look good with his shirt off in the video. The white man looking at you, nigga, in a gay way. The white man tell the young black boy, stand up, turn around, let's see your butt muscles. Can you walk a little bit? No, bust a sag and walk. We want to see how your butt move when you sag. Nigga, they doing that when you sign. I don't give a fuck what niggas say. They doing all that, nigga. These labels want to change everything about you. And part of being a rapper is a model. It's some gay shit. Trust me. Yeah, they looking at you little niggas like meat, that old white man. Yeah, oh, this little black nigga sexy. You wonder why certain of them get to high places than other ones. You wonder why all these rappers and entertainers put on a dress. They auditioning for a promotion, nigga. They know what to do to please that old white man. The same thing you need to do to please Bambara. Who you think they learn the gay shit from? You think niggas just started being gay. Them niggas really look at that gay shit as a form of power, though. And one of the and Bambada victims came out and told y'all that. That Bambada look at this shit like power and shit. But don't let them fool you. The niggas gay, too, now. You got to be able to be aroused, too. Don't let them hit you with that old bullshit, now. Well, that's just for magical powers. Nah, nigga. That's for gratification, too. He gets off to that. And any nigga doing it with him is gay. Two people got to be aroused. I don't care what nobody say. You are bisexual if you had any relationships with this man. And there's no way you used to be bisexual and now I'm stopping it and I'm exposing the gay shit. I used to suck dick, but now I don't suck it no more. And I'm going to let everybody, I'm going to tell on every other nigga that's still sucking dick. That make you a hater and suspect. I used to be gay, but now I ain't gay no more. And I'm exposing the other gay niggas who was gay with me. <laughs> I used to be gay But I ain't gay no more I'm now the nigga exposed In the gay cabals Man y'all crazy if you think I used to get on hard Having sex with another man But now I no longer get Turned on and on hard with it no more It disgusts me now Yeah right People are so fucking gullible and, and I ain't calling no names, niggas. I'm doing this on purpose. I'm tired of people in the way of your awakening. 
in a way because they in a position like they exposed in these uh, evil folks, but they ain't really exposing them. They ain't coming with the knowledge of the occult. It's celebrity gossip and, and fucking porno. When you sit up and listen to celebrity gossip and, and gay people reminiscing on their gay relationships in the past, what did you learn? How did it change your spirit? How did it bring you closer to saying, fuck hip hop and fuck capitalism? That's why I don't really rap no more. I just do the instrumentals and make the beats. And the people who buy my beats, they turn that trap sound into positive music. They take all of that music, the instrumental, and they put this, the lyrics on there that we need to hear, man. And if they don't, then hey, that's on them. Thank you for the money for the beat. I ain't telling you what to rap on it, but I prefer you be positive. I'm keeping it real. Now look at here. People ain't gonna like a lot of what I'm saying in this stream, but I don't give a damn. I'm telling the truth. Go fuck yourself. I ain't lied one time. It's real shit. You can't used to be bisexual. And you ain't exposing the Zulu nation if you don't expose why they call themselves the Zulu. Zoo come from the word zoo, Z-O-O, -O, dealing with bestiality and anim animal anthropomorphism. Well, people personifying humans as animals and animals as humans. That gave birth to the Baphomet. Humans mixed with animals, all that is started in Kemet they had zoo tights the concept of the zodiac or the zodiac personifying animals with humans and shit paganism bro that's paganism it makes you fall to an animal instinct instead of spiritual intuition yeah man it's crazy this is called naturism so the crazy thing about it is the Egyptians worshipped a lot of animals but so, so did the Greeks the Greeks worshipped beings that would have man and have animal so did the Egyptians the Egyptians worshipped the same deities as the Greeks minotaurs and Half horse, half man, half fish, half man, you name it. Half monkey, half male penis, you name it. All of this is bestiality. So, there was a god called Zoro. And the word Zo or Zo, Zo is dealing with this whole concept I'm showing you. So, the Zulu nation is a nation that is based upon this animal spiritual system. That's why he got the horns on. Zoo, Lou, Beast Man. The zoo, the animals, right? The man that uses instinct and not intuition. Hip hop is based on survival and instinct, not intuition. But let me get on up out of here. It's time to call up don donations. I'm supposed to bend left and I'm still talking. See how much people appreciate what I'm... Ooh, we. Whoa, I just checked the ding on Cash App and look like I'm about to be getting a lot of equipment because damn, boy, we made a lot of money. This may be the most money that I've made in a single night. And I want to thank you all so much. Like really And for that I'm going to continue this And do a part two I'm not even capping man I'm, I'm still looking up at the cash up I cannot tell y'all how much is in there Cause the pocket watchers Ain't going to do nothing but hate more It ain't none of your business Only thing I'm going to say Is this the best night I ever had on YouTube As far as donations go And I'm surprised cause 
uh, I don't think we got a lot of viewers. We didn't have but like 600 and some viewers. And we normally have about a thousand viewers. We, when we do these type of topics, we normally get up to 800, 900, well up to a thousand. We didn't get over 700 at no point this show, but we still broke a record in donations, which is crazy. And I will continue this and exhaust this uh, since y'all showing me love. And the likes are amazing. We got over 800 likes. That's amazing. I really want to thank y'all, man. I really do. Because uh, I'm very impressed with y'all, man. Like, the donations and the likes are just you got a smile on my face i can do eight hours and and, and feel like hey i i you know i've been taken care of by the people for my time i want to thank y'all let's call out these donations man I'm, I'm i'm pretty happy here today you know all right let me see We have cash app donations from the following individuals. And I'm going to read every one of them. Soul P, thank you. He said, thank you for the knowledge, bro. We had one from Karen Fleury. Thank you, sister. We had one from Nick who says, for an amazing episode tonight, I will be giving more. Thank you, Nick. And from Kwatiek Harrell. Kwatiek Harrell, am I pronouncing that right? Kwatiek Harrell from Staten Island. Flat Power, Staten Island, New York. Shout out to my Flat Power brothers on the East Coast up there. Let me tell you something real quick, guys, before we call out anymore. We really have to put our Flat Power people on the East Coast in the tri-state area on a pedestal. Being a member of this community in that area is dangerous than anywhere else. I know this. I know this. Anybody living in New York in the Northeast area screaming flat power, we got to give them more respect than other folks. We got to show some favoritism. Why? Bro, the whole agenda that we promote most of our ops is in the northeast there are more masonic lodges in the tri-state than in the world the, the enemy that we're fighting against is headquarters is in the northeast the people up there are the most colonized most metro minded more they're the, the spirit of capitalism is very strong in the Northeast, in the Patriot area, in the Tri-State area. The spirit of corporate America is very strong in the Northeast, in Gotham, in all the Tri-State areas. To be about what we're about in those areas where the corporations are so strong and the big buildings and the suit wearers and the capitalists and for you to be out there talking about the great mother flat power in that environment, my hats go off to you. This is the front line of this community. These would be the Marine Corps for the community. Every nigga in the Northeast of America that screaming flat power, you are our front lines. You should know that. We value you. They got the most ops, man. Real talk. They got all of the black satanic schools, the Moors, the Five Percenters, the Boule, the Prince Halls. Oh, nigga, the hip hop. Oh, my God. To niggas up north screaming flat power, just know that I love you. Y'all niggas are brave. I wouldn't even be as open as I am with this shit living in New York. <laughs> I'm sorry. If Brother Sanchez lived in Harlem, nigga, oh no, now I got David shit now. Hey, but you got niggas living and they're they're fucking doing the work, bro. Like, real talk, like. Real talk, man. 
Shout out to y'all, Staten Island, man. Shout out to the brother J Herbal. Shout out to the brother Jones. Shout out to Kamala R. Chun. Hope I'm pronouncing it right. Shout out to Sir Charles. Hey, man. Shout out to my moderator, Sister Bethy. She said, for an amazing lecturer. Sister, the reason I'm so good at these presentations, because I'm passionate about it. The stuff that I'm teaching, I learned in the darkness, staying up at night. Nobody in my family really want to hear it from it. I can go on and talk about this stuff for hours. It'll keep you entertained and informed. I've collected so much information, information you ain't going to get from the popular platforms that's maintaining the status quo. People who follow me don't follow nobody. Let me say that again. People who follow me don't follow nobody. That's the thing. I'm only going to lead you to the mirror to where you become your own leader. Not down my path to serve my agenda. I'm only pointing you to your own path, and I don't know what that is. I'm telling you to figure it out. Other folks want you to serve their agenda. Now, check this here. Check, check this out, right? Sister Bethy is a person I really uh, respect. And if you haven't subscribed to her, make sure you do so. She go live a lot. And she sends me emails all the time, and I can never catch the damn stream when she's live. Sister Betty, you should email me, and maybe we should arrange something to where we schedule it, and I can come over on your show. You can, We can have a one-on-one -on -one about whatever you would like. But nothing to rush. You're running things over there. She's doing a good job keeping the content going. I was actually, a, I, I check out a lot of the replays and try to stay up to date with what she's doing over there. And I was able to come across an older stream where she had one of my favorite YouTubers on there, the brother Dane Calloway. And that's when I said, um, you know, you got to respect the brother Dane Calloway. For him to be so big on YouTube, he will come to the smaller channels and, and show love and, and um, build with us. He ain't a bougie brother. Dane Calloway has been on my platform two times. And I should go back and find those and, and cut, cut them out. So he's very approachable. Shout out to him. And any platform that Dane Calloway goes on, trust me, it says a lot about that platform. All right? He don't go on anybody's stuff. Um, For what I know dealing with the brother, he don't care if your channel is big or small long as it's fair. Okay? And I know that brother don't do a lot of debating he rather have discussions, which is the future of, 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 of awakening. Debates serve their time, but now it's time for discussions. I tell guys all the time, Brother Sanchez, I want to debate you on flat earth. Like, bro, can we just sit down and talk about this shit? Not that I'm running from a debate. I'm going to slay your dumb ass in a debate, nigga. But I want you to understand the shit you trying to debate against. We ain't learning from each other when we just try to prove each other wrong. But, hey, shout out to Sister Betty, man. I look forward to collabing with her, man. She has a very uh, professional platform. I would love to be a part of it. And, uh, you know, she's been supporting me a while, so another shout out to her for that donation. And a shout out to Ro Charlins Joseph. Hope I'm pronouncing it right. Shout out to Anthony Mitchell. And shout out to Janu Simone Jackson. Thank you for the donation, she says, for a great lecture. Shout out to Wiggleworks, who says, thanks, I'm going to get my channel State of Being going. He have a channel called State of, State of Being that he's trying to get going. If I can help you in any way, brother, let me know. Shout out to Drew Doggett, Flat Power, brother. And shout out to Melinda. Thanks for the donations. She said, I appreciate your work. You blow my mind. 
Thank you, my sister Melinda. That just made me blush. Shout out to the brother Ryan. Says, love the setup. Keep going, man. Thank y'all for, for, for compliments on the setup. Man, we really doing our thing in this new studio, right? It make me not want to shut down the streams because I don't want to leave this space. I got... I'm going to shut down. I'm going to get on my piano. We're going to do some music. I'm not going to be going live. When I go live and do music, I don't get the beats finished. I just make more and more, but I don't finish them. Tonight, we'll be mixing and mastering, getting a lot of beats into the store. People have been asking me about them. But be on the lookout for more live beat cookups. We have more donations, guys. We got... A donation from Sterling Patterson and from Robert Cardassi yesterday. The brother Peabody Grind sent in a donation today and said, stay 10 toes down. The OG Leonardo sent in a donation today, said, much love and respect, my brother. Same to you. Shout out to everyone that hit up my cash app at any time. We appreciate all donations. Uh that you've given us here I will be putting it to use To continue to upgrade the space And the equipment So I appreciate that Y'all made my night tonight I don't want to go Can't you tell Books, Because y'all done me so good With the likes and the donations tonight We will be live again tomorrow With part two for this Bring a friend Let's, let's see if we can get a thousand people watching That'll make the Masons really mad. Once your numbers get up into consistent thousands, you, they now looking at you like, oh, we got to do something. Yeah, let's share this stuff. And when you tune in, let's call up your friends, tell them about Bro Sanchez. Let's grow this shit together. Each stream, man, if I can see my numbers and likes getting higher and higher, it's going to let me know, yo, the people really pushing this movement, yo. They ain't hoarding the knowledge. They sharing this shit. We're growing. You want to know how big channels get big? They don't grow it by themselves. They subscribers help them grow it. So if you've been slipping on that, let me just say thank you for, for, for subscribing. But if you will, help me grow the channel by sharing, liking, and putting the word out. Ain't nobody dropping the knowledge like me, family. And, and you know. But let me get out of here. I already kept y'all too long, man. Y'all been so awesome, it's hard for me to go. But I got to. Peace and much love. Enjoy the outro music, guys. Yeah.